All right, hello, hello, everybody. How are you all doing tonight? How's everything sound? Trey, the queue is open currently. I will be closing it off right around 8 p.m., so right before we get started. Uh, full disclosure, I am exhausted tonight. I was here for 17 hours yesterday. Got home at about 6 o'clock in the morning and slept for like maybe 3 hours, so definitely not the most energetic tonight, but I'll try my best to have great break session for you all and still be entertaining. Do have some pretty fun products tonight. Brand new Weiss Schwartz, The Seven Deadly Sins. Several booster boxes of those. Also, today, new additions to the queue do have some Magic Gathering Adventures in the Forgotten Realms set boosters. That actually surprised me a lot. Actually, it was the last three that we had in stock as well. We did put in for another case, so that should be back in stock next week, but currently sold out of that. And we also have, haven't checked this out in a while, but starting off tonight, breaks number one and two are 2020 Tops Formula One Chrome. So we haven't checked out in a while. It was definitely super fun when we did closer to release. I remember we did find about an autograph every other box or so. No guaranteed auto per box, but it did seem like every other box we were finding an auto. We saw, I remember, a red wave refractor, saw a lot of golds. So definitely some really cool stuff in those Formula One boxes. Excited to check out some more here tonight. Well, yes, how's everybody doing? Ziggy says hello. Scott says hi, Allie. So glad to finally catch you live. Been binging your YouTube channel. Hey, thank you so much, Scott. Appreciate it. Cades is going for a shorter stream tonight. Not intentionally, although, like I said, definitely don't mind since I am very, very tired. Chicago says, all those long videos on the Trove, understood why you're dead tired, yes. And then yesterday did have a lot of long videos here as well. Of course, that two and a half hour or so, full case of Seven Deadly Sins, the supply set, and the trial deck, checking out all those new Weiss products. And we did do that big playmat unboxing, new Final Fantasy, Opus 14 as well, and a personal break. So yesterday was a lot of content on my personal channel, on the main channel, and just a lot to take care of this week. Definitely been really busy. Riz says, hello, Ali. Hi, chat. Always great. 2021 is just tiring in general. Can definitely agree with that as well. Definitely agree with that. Juan says, greetings from Mexico. Glad to be here. Hey, thank you for joining us, Juan. Michael says, hi there, Ali. Hopefully tonight goes fast so you can get some sleep afterwards. Yeah, that's why I was figuring may as well just go ahead and cap at eight. Uh, I believe until about midday, the queue is only up to five or so. So I'm having a, right now at 10... 10 different break cues, some shorter stuff, some longer stuff. Should still have a decent length stream, nothing crazy, probably four or five hours. Ooh, we do have another order coming through. Let me go ahead and check that out. That is a Strixhaven set booster for the can, I believe, Ian S. So let me go ahead and update the queue with that real quick. And then, right around eight o'clock, go ahead and close up the queue, go grab whatever boxes I need to grab, and then we'll get started with our first Formula One Chrome of the night for Siam. So let me go ahead and write this down. All right. Take Flight says good interview. Thank you. If you guys missed it, earlier this week we didn't have too many videos on the channel, just didn't have our deliveries come in on time. But I did actually have a new interview slash podcast. Did link that in the community tab if you guys missed it. Definitely worth listening to. I had a great time and a lot of people seem to have enjoyed it. Oh, we have a Zenica Ryzen collector booster as well. All right, so we're getting up to 12 breaks tonight. The queue is quickly growing. Bubba says, hi, Alien Chats. Hey, Bubba, welcome. Acorn says, Opus 14 box yesterday was amazing. And Brizzy Gaming says, hello from England. Bought any cards this week? I actually did go ahead and pick up another Upper Deck Marvel Black Diamond card I needed for my collection. I managed to find the, the gem relics out of five. Uh, I did actually get this one in the mail. I got that one a couple, I think maybe a week or two ago. That one's number one of five. Then I did find the other Loki, the Thor the Dark World version, number 5 of 5. I got that one for about the same price, so uh, definitely, I think, really good deals on those. 
So I did get that, although it won't arrive for quite some time. Comsi is pretty behind on shipping. I was surprised this one came as quickly as it did. But that's because I got it off eBay instead of actually having it sent from like EPAC or whatever. All right, let me go ahead and update our inventory while we're just hanging out here. We have a set booster, a collector booster. Where's all the Strixhaven? Uh, the website's showing that we're out of Strixhaven, although I do think we have, I think we have some of the shop I can go kidnap to put on the website. Then let's look for Zendikar Rising. Been opening up a lot of Zendikar Rising collector boosters here recently during the live streams. Definitely really fun. Looking for, of course, those expedition fetch lands. Would love to pull Cavern of Souls. I've been trying to pull a Cavern of Souls for two weeks now for Will. Maybe we'll get one tonight for Robert. Trim Paws says, how much sleep were you able to get? Uh, between, I think, by the time I fell asleep and when I woke up, like maybe three hours... I did sleep through my alarm, so it might have been closer to like three and a half, but definitely not enough. It's weird. When I woke up this morning, I actually felt energized, and as the day has uh, the day has gone by, definitely been feeling it. But I'm very excited. Lots of fun openings tonight. Just like I said, we'll just go ahead and cap at eight o'clock. Then I'll go grab those boxes, and we'll get started on tonight's queue. RLBB Sports Card just subscribed. Thank you. And Greg subscribed a few minutes ago as well. Thank you so much. Chicago says, do we have National Baseball Card Day today? I mean, we do have the packs. We only got allocated one box of the packs. But I don't know. I haven't been in the sh I haven't been in the shop today. So I don't know how many people have been coming. Bucky, I was here. Bucky, I was here yesterday from noon to 5 a.m. Christopher says, hi, Allie. Planning on going to the Collectors Con show in Tampa, Labor Day weekend. How close is Titan time-wise from the convention center? I'd love to stop by and drop off a gift for you. Uh, how close are we to the convention center? That is a good question. So it's like from right past the I-4 interchange to the exit. I want to say maybe about 30 minutes down 275. Probably about a 30-minute drive, Christopher. If you want to stop by, that'd be wonderful. And then Matt asks if this shop got any gold standard football. We got one box. I believe that did sell when it was supposed to be here on Wednesday. I think it arrived on Thursday. Was, uh, although, for some reason, the uh, the stuff that was supposed to ship out on Monday didn't ship until Tuesday. So instead of arriving on Wednesday, the stuff didn't arrive until Thursday. So gold standard, we had one box. All right, let's see if there's any other orders popping up. Of course, no pressure, everybody. Just want to make sure everybody who is wanting to get something does get it before I close up the queue. Oh, look at that. We have another Onyx Vintage Baseball. Those boxes are really fun. I've seen some really cool names out of those as well. We've seen Adley Rushman, Robert Paulson. Some really cool stuff. We got a Heston Kierstad as well for Christopher. Christopher M. All right, so 13 breaks. So it looks like I did actually, earlier the, the pinned comment on YouTube said capping at 15 max. So we're at 13, so we're probably gonna end up around that amount anyways. We do have a decent amount of Ys tonight. It's looking like Seven Deadly Sins does just have two SPs per case. Which I'd, I would have liked it to have more, but the SPs seem to have really good value in them in general. So, excited and hoping that we do find one tonight. At least one. We do have five boxes. Five boxes of Seven Deadly Sins in the queue. So, pretty good odds, I would think. You know, five of 16. About a one in three chance that we should be able to find an SP tonight. Hey, Mile High with the $5 Super Chat says, just a little something for you. Appreciate what you do for us. Hey, I thank, that, I thank you for that very, mu very much, Mile High. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Acorn says, Convention Center in Titan is almost 20 miles, so it's 25 minutes. You can take 275 the whole way. Yeah, you get, you get, it's a little weird. It's a little weird to get on 275 south from the Convention Center. 
you gotta go past like the University of Tampa or something. And then you take it to, you just get off at the Gandhi exit. Well, actually that's closed. Well, 4th Street's closed. No, Gandhi, yeah, you get off at Gandhi, Gandhi turns into Park Boulevard, and then you turn left on 49th. But it's not super hard. Chicago, the queue isn't closed yet. Once the queue's closed, I'll take care of it. But right now, I'm not, I'm not for every single one that I type out on my sheet, I'm not going to update it. I'll just update it when we're all finished. Tibley says, I'm calling it now. You're going to find a hawk. The hawk SP. That's the little pig character. Brent says, Ali, I'm in Ohio this week. I have to get used to this three-hour time change. Bucky asks if I've ever been to the Midwest. I have not. Hey, Sofrito. Welcome. <laughs> Polar Bear says, hi, Ali. I know it's a great Saturday when we can hang out with you and your questionable choice of hockey teams. Wink face. Hey, polar bears, welcome. Acorn says, I watched most of the two-hour wife's video. I was surprised to see a whole case. Most have missed it, but his two SPs normal. Some sets have two, some have three. Uh, the mo I, Both of you was really surprising having four. I'm used to it being three, but sometimes it is just two per case. I feel like we've been spoiled a lot recently. It depends on the print run, I think, in terms of distribution per case. The larger... The print run, you know, the more people order it, Seven Deadly Sins is a really popular show. So if it was ordered more of it, uh, it makes sense that there's less SPs per case. Just because they're spread throughout more boxes. But would have liked more. I mean, I'm very curious to see if that is normal. I honestly have no idea because it was, the case was really, really odd. Exact perfect collation. Eight of every double R and one of every single SR and triple R. No duplicates whatsoever on the foils. And I found that very, very odd. Never had a case like that before, so I, I'm i assuming it's two SPs per case, but be pleasantly surprised if it isn't. That could have just been a really weird case. I've never seen that happen in Weiss before, so never really know. But all right, 758. So I'm going to go ahead and do one last refresh here. See if there's any new orders. We do have two new orders. All right, but let me go ahead and close off our queue for the moment. It looks like we actually did end up capping at 15. Do have another box of Seven Deadly Sins for Sean T. Sean T has a box up in spot number three as well. There we go, 14 Sean T, Seven Deadly Sins. And then Moses B has Oh, two Legendary Duelist Blasters. Those are fun. Hopefully we can find a Kyber Corp die, actually. Now, we've opened up a lot of blasters here recently and have not found one. I think in total we've only ever found one out of, I feel like, multiple cases. So hopefully we got some boxes for John and for Moses here. Hopefully we can find one of those secret rare Kyber Corp ones with the Casey logo. And I also have the request there to... Let me see... Sign a card. Sign. All right. So now, as a Chicago, let me know. I was planning on it, but I do appreciate the reminder. Let me go ahead and copy everything and update our descriptions. That way you guys could follow along with those new additions to our queue. Need to copy 11 through 15. And then I'll go grab those boxes and we'll get started here for Sayem With the Formula One Chrome. All right, Strixhaven set, Zendikar Rising, Onyx, Blasters, and another Weiss box. Need to get my correct tabs open. Here we go. All right, everybody, let me go grab those, and then when I come back, Trim Boss says, so I didn't make tonight's break. I When I hit a refresh, I did not see your order, Trim Boss. Where is it? Do, 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 do. It's technically 8 o'clock now, so... If I, if I refresh, there it is. Yeah, 7.58. I clicked on the different order. Hold on. 7.58 is when it came through. Ooh, King's Court. King's Court's, King's Court's fun. So maybe we'll end off tonight finding a secret rare Pharaoh's rare. We'll, we'll see. All right, YGO King, King's Court booster box.
16 breaks tonight. And because we're kind of low on King's Court, do actually have to update the inventory right away. We've had people buying King's Court in store as well. So we're tearing through this last case. Why is it bold? I accidentally made it bold. All right. All right, so 16 tonight. Q is closed. You're welcome, a trim boss. I hit refresh two minutes early, and then I was like, oh, why didn't I see it? <laughs> no. That's usually how Day Spring Summers is usually the SPs have the highest uh, pull. But the thing is, a lot of usually with Y sets, play sets of the cards, like so four of each common, uncommon, double R, and triple R, and then the climax, common, climax rares, usually play sets of general Weiss releases are usually between 250 and 350 a piece. So people usually just buy those for convenience. And like we saw in the case, you get two of those per case. So let's say the play sets, you know, that's just 600 bucks for just the no foils, no SPs. So definitely Weiss, if you open, you know, sometimes you'll get like the full foil set like we saw off your collector. And then if you just want for you a play set, then you have an extra play set to sell. Yeah. You definitely, it de Weiss is definitely one of those things where some of the cards are a lot more popular than others, but usually there's pretty good return, especially if you make play sets. We don't, we don't make the play sets. I know a lot of people do. That's what they do. So they just sell a bunch of play sets and they just want the foils for themselves and they keep the foils. But anyways, let me go grab those boxes and then we'll get started with some Formula One Chrome. So hang tight, everybody. I'll be back shortly. Acorn says, by the way, Allie got my kit in the mail today. Thank you for shipping it so well. Hey, no worries at all, Acorn. Glad it arrived. All safe and sound. Yeah, this eight, this uh, it's weird. It's not actually chrome. He's just silver. He's not actually chrome. He looks more shiny on camera, but it's actually just the reflection of the inner plastic. I just like Bulbasaur. I don't actually like these silver ones too much, but I have the regular, like the regular size one. He used to be up here, but uh, now he's on the top shelf out of view. And then I was at Target and I saw this and I was like, he's big. I just like Bulbasaur a lot. I don't have any of the other silver ones. I'm not a chrome person in general. Like I like chrome cards, but like chrome figures. I'm not crazy about it's not like I said it's not chrome itself it's not it's not shiny which is weird but it's Bulbasaur so it's like if they made whoopers even if I didn't love the whooper pose 100% I'd have to buy like 12 of them anyways you know so no I don't like a lot of the uh I don't like a lot of the Pokemon Funko Pops for some reason some of them look really good some of them don't like the Pikachus to me look super weird I don't like the Pikachus but I have a Mew I have the Cubone. The Cubone actually looks really cute. I have a couple of the big ones. I missed out on the sparkly Bulbasaur from Target this weekend. I woke up like five minutes late and it was sold out. 
And I have the fuzzy one from a, a Comic Con, I think either last year or the year before. I have a flocked Bulbasaur. I have the regular big Bulbasaur. And I have a, I think I have the big ones of all the, the Kanto starters, like true starters, not Pikachu. I actually had the Pikachu and I got rid of it because I didn't like it. But BK Ents is now following and Rabble Rabbles is now following as well. Thank you so much. Dan says, if you're in almost any fandom, you might as well just hand your wallet over to Funko. That's true. I was I was able to not buy a ton of them for a while because they're just I wasn't in love with them. And now I feel like there's a ton. They keep coming out with a ton that I love. And it's like, oh, man. Like, there's more Yu-Gi-Oh! ones coming for the Funko Pops. There's... I'm now, now I like Naruto, so you guys see, like, new Naruto ones pop on the shelf. It feels like every other week. <laughs> drinking is now following. Thank you, Drinking. The can says, dude, where'd you get that Bulbasaur? Didn't know Pop was making such big Funko Pops. I, I got it at Target. For some reason, a lot of the 10-inch Pokemon have been Target exclusives. I don't know why they're big, but it's cute. <laughs> Phoenix says, favorite Naruto character, and why is it not Sasuke? Because Sasuke is horrible. Not Sasuke. Ugh. The thing is, is I know if I had watched Naruto, like, when I was, like, early teenager, I would have been like, oh, Sasuke is so trouble. Oh no, poor Sasuke. But like as an adult, I'm like, Sasuke, this is your own problems because you just literally don't listen to people. It's annoying. <laughs> no, but Sasuke's definitely had a lot of life issues and I, I feel for him, but he continuously makes the wrong decision like 99% of the time. Actively chooses to make the worst decision possible. Proppa is now falling. Thank you, Proppa. And then Chicago with the five dollar super chat says, "Not sure if you have the energy, but smack that like button, smack it." Thank you, Chicago. Polar Bear says, "Kakashi is my bay." Same. Drinking says, "Bonzu, bonzu drinking." Welcome. Uh, Digimon, we don't know. Actually, we're supposed to be getting we're supposed to be getting in even more seven deadly sins from GTS two. They just didn't ship, so that's who has our Digimon. So I wonder if maybe the Digimon hadn't arrived. I because I don't know how many is coming. Bossman's actually been out all week sick. So I've I've been doing a lot this week on top of what I normally do. But Bossman deals with GTS, so I really don't know. Uh, the Digimon took off the website because no one was wanting it and they put it in the shop because you know people I figured with the new release people might be asking for Digimon and be like, we don't have that, but we have this. So I think we do still have those other boxes of Digimon. I did just put them in the shop though on Friday. Yesterday. So I, I put them, I, I brought some stuff. That's why some of the King's Court, because we ran out of King's Court in, in the shop. So I took some King's Court over. I took some Magic over. I took Digimon. So. Christopher Bossman is actually just my boss. I call him Bossman because the first week that we had the stream, he came with his actual name, John, in chat. But there are five different Johns, so it got confusing. So I just started referring to him as Bossman. Yep, drinking. These are from Sam's Club, which is basically Costco. These are nice shelves. That's what we use for in the shop. That's what we have in like my area and things like that. Uh, Mongo asks if we have any wrestling. We have some women's division left in stock. Fully loaded went up for order. We put in for a case or two of that. Don't know when that's coming out, but we should be getting NXT when it releases Undisputed and Finest. But right now we only have a few boxes of women's division. Q is closed currently, but... Yeah, Savicta, Niv is chewing on the uh, Formula 1 Chrome. With Savicta, we are waiting. We are supposed to be getting in two more cases of 7 Deadly Sins from GTS, but they did not ship. So Bossman wants to wait and make sure that those aren't getting canceled before we continue talking to you about the cases. Because if we get more, then it's fine. But we are already, we sold through a lot already, so we want to make sure that we have enough. Yeah, just 16 breaks tonight. I was here for 17 hours yesterday. I'm 16, I think, still a lot, but not too short. Yeah, we'll let you know, Sinvicta, when we find out. Hopefully, you should find out on Monday. Mini Disc says, quick nights. We do have a lot of set boosters, though, so it might be deceptively slow. If I had to guess, we'll finish probably around midnight. Hey, Kira, welcome. Chicago says, Allie, can you pin my comments? 
Not sure if that's the one you're referring to, but that's what you're getting. That's what you're getting, Chicago. Pat Terrific says, do you make a quarter mil a year yet? I'm hoping to make 35K. That's my goal. <laughs> we'll see. Trimpa says, you can ship my cards the same as last time. Sure thing. Sure thing. And Dayspring Summer says, what's the difference between both Seven Deadly Sins boxes? I know one is a booster. And then the other one is a supply set. It comes with a pack of sleeves, a deck box, and five packs. So it's like if you just want to, you know, get a few packs, you know, collect some cards and have like a, you know, cool deck box and some sleeves. I actually did check that out in that case opening. I first looked at the trial deck. We looked at the cards in the trial deck, see if we could find an SP. Did not find an SP. But we still looked at that. Looked at that. And then we checked out the supply set so you guys could see what the sleeves look like, the box... In you know, the deck box, what those look like in the supply set. Open up those five packs, and then we open up the full case. So that's why that video is super long from yesterday. But yeah, one the supply set is a couple packs, and then a bunch of supplies. And those usually only come out for the English exclusives. Like Card Captor Soccer had it. Uh, we didn't have, we didn't order the Adventure Time when it released because no one locally asked for it. But I would assume Adventure Time had it. Um, Ruby, when that goes up for order, it should have it as well. Usually Bushi Road makes the supply sets for the English products. And like Mob Cycle has a supply set as well. And none of them are listed on the website, but we do have some in store. And that's why I'm saying Acorn. I even I feel like I mentioned in the video, it's like the deck box seems kind of cheap, but I mean if you're just using it for storage, it looks cool. You know, the sleeves look nice though. I haven't played with the actual Y sleeves, but usually Japanese sleeves are like fancier than like your your printed Ultra Pro and whatnot. So don't know how nice they are, but I feel like the sleeves are probably a lot better quality than the deck box, but I haven't played with them, so can't can't go to that, you know, give information on that, but they look very nice. They look very nice. But anyways, we are about to get started here with break number one. As I mentioned, when we first started the stream, very pleasantly surprised to be kicking off our breaks tonight with not one, but two back-to-back -back breaks of Formula One Chrome. So first up we have for Siam. And then afterwards, we have a box for Ryan. That box is there on the shelf. And these did come. Uh, I thought we had some loose boxes, but apparently when we went through the Formula One Chrome the first time, we sold through that. These are from, the, I cracked open a sealed case. So these are the top two boxes from a fresh case. So very excited to see what we find. Uh, we just do personals here. East occasionally will run drafts, things like Star Wars Stellar. So if we are able to get in a couple cases of Stellar later this year, we'll have those on the website. But in general, just, just personal breaks. Just personal breaks. Long glasses and anime cards. Yes, Why Schwartz is pretty much just straight up anime cards. So we'll be checking out the Seven Deadly Sin set. Several personals of that tonight. If you want to see what those look like, they look pretty cool. It's a trading card game, so you can play with them. But of course, it does have different scenes from the anime, character pictures, and things like that. And then Trimposs asks how many MTG breaks today. We have one, two, three, four. Four separate MTG breaks. One, two, three, four, five total boxes. Three set boosters of the Dungeons & Dragons set, a Zendikar Rising Collector, and one Strixhaven set booster. English. English. But all right. Let's go ahead and get started here. Break number one for Siam. Bye. First, going into my settings and re-putting on my hotkeys. I knew there was for something I forgot because on Alley Play's takeover, the Switch version of the Great Ace Attorney needs both the Q and Z keys, Z keys for stuff, and I don't know why. So I have to take off my hotkeys so I don't accidentally switch frames every time I'm playing the game. But all right, so let's get back into snap position and get on into break one here. Bye. Snapping us into the corner. I'm glad that I remembered before I actually snapped because that would have been embarrassing. Still embarrassing regardless. It's like, man, Allie, you do this every week. How do you forget to have your snap ready? You know. Not feeling like dealing with weird comments, so I'll just get rid of them today. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. See what we can find. Maybe our first Lewis Hamilton auto. That'd be cool. The can says, Siam is going to pull a $5,000 auto, baby. We've seen some pretty cool stuff. I know when Bossman opened up, like, a case for him, pulled, I believe, a Verstappen auto. So, like, we've seen some pretty cool stuff come out of these boxes. And like I said, although there's no guaranteed auto per box, it did seem when we opened up those initial personal breaks, it seemed about every other. Every other box did have an auto. 
let's go ahead and get started here. Pack number one, I have my sleeves ready. And instead of putting them in the loose 100 points, now that we have 75 points in stock, that should be more sturdy. Should be more sturdy. Sarah says, Allie, you need a vacation. Would be nice, would be nice. Trim Paw says, if I was you, I wouldn't do the jury voices. Yeah, I think I'm going to drop the jury voices in the playthrough. Man, I forgot how clean these cards were. Look at that reflection. So everyone say hi to the, uh, the card cam. Do you have a Hamilton base there? And we have maximum attack. Inserts, Max Verstappen. Track tags, number five. You have a future to stars here, Roy. Remember, I was setting the future stars in their own piles when we were first opening it on up. These cards are so gorgeous. I remember just being impressed by how not scratched they were, which is, I feel weird to say. You have the rising star here, Charles Leclerc. But in terms of like Topps Chrome Baseball, you guys know there's a lot of quality control issues with that product. The chrome is gorgeous, but a lot of the base will have like different print lines and stuff. But these are super clean. Definitely set my expectations high for this year's other chrome products. In August, we're in August this month. But the 20th, now I haven't checked to see if anything changed, but as of last week, August 20th is the release date of Topps Chrome Baseball. We have Albin, Formula One's freshest rookie card here. Botas. And we do have a Hamilton little car insert here. Refractor. All these inserts are refractors, but I will go ahead and sleeve it on up because it's a Hamilton. Drinking just subscribe. Thank you, drinking. I'm assuming that's drinking from Twitch. Welcome, welcome. Raiden says, sadly, the numbered hits in this have some surface issues on the back. Did notice that a couple cards. And I noticed that as well, actually, with Finest Soccer, the uh, Champions League. I noticed on the back, those two were printed in uh, or Chrome. One of the soccer products recently that was also printed in Italy, I know some of them had like little dents in the back. When we did have our, initially when I listed our Formula One singles on eBay from the couple boxes that Bossman opened, uh, some of them unfortunately did have the marks like you were saying. I did try to like circle them in Microsoft Paint for people to make sure they paid attention to it. Orin is now following. Thank you, Orin. Pat Terrific says Merlin is riddled with errors. We did get cut to zero on that product, so I didn't check it out. But I think I feel like it was Champions League Finest that had some issues on the back. We have F2 Dams team here. Just the regular refractor, card number one hundred and one. Rain says, same issue with Champions League Chrome. That sounds right, too. That sounds right. Champions League Chrome sounds... Yeah, we've had, we opened a box of Champions League Chrome here on the channel. Matt just subscribed. Thank you, Matt. Hey, Pope. Welcome. Hey, thank you, Drinking. Appreciate it. Do you have another refractor here, Formula One team. That is card number 100. So cards number 100 and then 101 for our first two refractors of the box. We have a future stars, Samaya. We do have Esteban here, Refractor. And then I did get this little sneak preview in the back. We do have a Samaya autograph. So we did actually find an auto in this box here for Sayem. That is number 124 out of 373. Odd numbering there. But always nice to find a numbered autograph. Samaya, 
as we just saw, is a future stars. So not a rookie this year, but a new driver, I'm assuming, based on that information with the future stars. The can asks, do you know when we'll be getting Allen and Ginter? If it hasn't been delayed in the past week or so, Allen and Ginter actually should be coming on Wednesday. Huh. Soon. Well, I'll know for sure on Monday if it ships out. But Allen and Ginter, as of last week, was on the calendar for this upcoming Wednesday. Same thing with uh, Opeachy Platinum. Now that will be an interesting day. Lots of hockey and then lots of Ginter. Rhino says this one is a variation. That's cool. And in full attack as well. Oh, okay. And it's card number 10. Ah, it doesn't say refractor. Ooh. Ooh, that's a good way to know. Image variation. Sweet. So image variation and a refractor auto in the same box here for Sayem. We're stopping base. We have a Hamilton Botas card. We do have another car, Haas VF20. Like I said, all of those inserts are refractors of the cars. We do have a purple refractor here, Matsushita Future Stars, purple, 352 out of 399, card number 49, Nobuharu Matsushita. That's our first numbered refractor of the box, you know, of course, excluding that autograph. Raiden says, best way to tell variation is them in a sitting pose. Good to know. Thank you. And then Acorn says, you can tell on the bottom code as well. Last three digits. 028 is the base and 062 is the variation. All right. Thank you for the information, both of you. And lastly, future stars. We have a Hamilton base. And Refractor, F2 MP Motorsport. Hey, Derek, welcome. It's card number 105. Cito asks, what is the most expensive card that I have? Me, personally, most expensive card is most likely my Carrie Fisher printing plate autograph from 2015 Star Wars Chrome Perspectives. That should be the most expensive card that I personally have. There's like an extra card in this pack or something, right? Is it supposed to be four? Yeah, four cards. There's five cards in this pack. We have a bonus. Interesting, interesting. Callum, Future Stars. Daruvala, Future Stars. An Alfa Romeo car. Chris asked if I'm from New York originally. I am not. For stop and base. You have a Formula One's freshest George Russell rookie. And a Russian time. Track tags inserts. And of course, if you guys see anything where you're like, Allie, what are you doing? Why haven't you sleeved that card up? Definitely let me know and I can go ahead and do so. I guess see Pat Turf is excited about that George rookie, George Russell. Do a refractor here at the back. Samaya. Number 84. I 
Right, terrific. Says sleeve the George. Why not? Sure thing. Scorecard says the racing rookie card logo is so cute. I like it with the little flags. You're right. It is adorable. Do you have a Lando Norris rookie? Remember, Norris was very popular when the set first released. Djokovic, Future Stars. We do have Carlos Sainz here, a little car insert. All right, down to our last quarter of the box here for Sayem. I love the logo cards, especially in refractors. Now, of course, you guys can see the camera, but in refractor, you can't see the reflection. Rhino says sleeve Lando. Will do. Will do. Let me finish this pack first, and I'll get them all sleeved up. Lungard base. I remember we did find an orange out of 25 Lando of that true rookie. In some of our first few openings, we have a Future Stars Refractor, Callum. So I'll sleep that on up. Sleeve up the Norris. Pure Profit Plays is now following. Thank you, Pure Profit. Derek asks, what's my most favorite card that I have? That is quite a difficult question. Ooh, we do have that number one card was Hamilton. I remember initially this card, just the regular base card was like, what, like $200 or something crazy? So I'll go ahead and get him sleeved on up. Like I said, first card in the set. And then this does have some... That's not on the surface. That's actually in the card under the foiling, it appears. Jack Aiken insert. Huh. Very odd. So I'll actually top load the Hamilton as well. Pat Terrific saying 300, maybe 250. Can you imagine we find a refractor of that? That'd be nuts. Super. Let's aim for a super. We did actually find some printing plates too initially. I forgot about that. Chrome sets sometimes have plates, sometimes don't. There are printing plates in this product. Drinking, I do stream out of a second location for the shop. I used to stream in the back of the shop. I do eventually want to have like a streaming like studio or something like and we'll get my own place and then have a room. So that way when a video is exporting for three hours at two o'clock in the morning, like it was last night, I could just go take a nap and then set my alarm, wake up and upload it instead of sitting here until 5 a.m. Just staring at the computer screen because there's no point going home and then coming back. 17 out of 399 here for this purple Hamilton refractor. Gorgeous card. Trimpaw says, what are the odds of pulling a printing plate? I feel like we found two plates in a case, which seems way too high odds, but not complaining. So we may find one tonight. Drinking says, just set up a bed under the desk like George and Seinfeld. I was actually looking on Amazon for like foldable reclining chairs. So that way I can like fold one up and then undo it like right here. Cause this doesn't have, this doesn't recline or anything and it doesn't have arms. So like, even if like I put my feet up on the table, I'd be worried. I roll around a lot when I sleep, so I was worried. My mom's like, just put your feet up and then just take a nap in the chair. And I was like, I will fall out of the chair. <laughs> so, Sly Demon is now following. Another logo card. I like the little car cards. We do have a refractor here, Marcus Armstrong. Number 67. The can says, does it have odds on card packs? I can take a look. And Acorn says, if you knew how many were printed, you could figure out the odds. I'm just saying, I believe we did find two in a case last time. But 
Wow, base card image variation is 1 in 228 packs. Printing plate 1 in 838, so not supposed to be two per case. We just ended up ended up having it work out very well for us. No, this is that's just the background of the track. That's not a refractor, purple acorn, it's just the background of the track. And all right, last pack. Looks like we're finishing off with an orange. We'll have to see if that's one of these 70th anniversary ones or an actual true orange. Hey, we have a Max Verstappen car. We'll sleeve that up. It is a 70th anniversary orange, Sergio Perez. So this is an unnumbered orange refractor. There's unnumbered oranges and unnumbered golds that do have the 70th logo. But there's also regular oranges and regular golds. All right, I said I'd sleeve up the Verstappen car, so let me do that. The real deal says, Allie, you're so pretty. Thank you. I was too lazy to put on makeup tonight. But I usually try to look my best on Saturdays. Today I was like, eh, outfit's cute. That's good enough. But all right. Yeah, finished off our first box of the night, but we still need to, of course, get on into our recap. Didn't have this pile here of future stars. Not too many rookies in this box, but we did have the true rookie here of Lando Norris, card number seven. We had a George Russell Formula One freshest rookie, card number 200. And I'll sleeve him up so he's not the lone one out, but we also had... Alexander Albin, Formula One freshest rookie. Number 198. And for our unnumbered refractors, we did have this Perez Orange 70th anniversary that we did find in that final pack, card number 13. And for our regular refractors, we had Marcus Armstrong, Callum, Future Stars, Samaya, MP Motorsports, Formula One team and the f2 doms we also had this purple here matsushita future stars number 352 of 399 and our other purple of the box was lewis hamilton 17 of 399 card number one number 197 also had the first image variation that we've spotted like i said pack odds say one in 228 packs esteban here card number 10 Sleeve up the variation, why not? We also did have an autograph, Refractor Auto here, Samaya. Number 124 out of 373. And then we also had that Lewis Hamilton base. Card number one. And I also sleeve up these two car inserts. We had Hamilton and Verstappen. And with that... That finishes off our first box of the night. Thank you so much, Sayem, for letting me open up some Formula One for you. I know you said this was your first time, so I really hope you enjoyed the opening, had a blast, and love all of these new additions to your collection. Now, let me go ahead and get this mat cleaned on off. Actually, let me let me sandwich the future stars as well. Let me get this mat cleaned off, and when I come back, we'll be getting into another box of Formula One Chrome. Up next for Rhino, who is Mr. Ryan H., down in the description. If you guys ever want to see where the queue is, I know on the Alley's Q page, I do have it up until the live stream actual event is set up, and then I just put the YouTube link. But always, I try to update as often as I can the YouTube description as well as new orders come in. Uh, I can't do it when I'm at home because I can't log into the, the YouTube, but... Now, when I'm in the shop, I do get that updated as the first thing I do when I come in on Saturdays. But with that, let's finish off our first break of the night. So let's go ahead and snap ourselves. I'll move this out of the way and I'll re be right back with Ryan's box. So hang tight, everybody. Be back with more Formula One Chrome.
Chris says, I'm not a huge racing fan, but these are really nice clean cards. Uh, Pat Terrific, the pack ons is how many out of packs? So there are, what, 24 packs per box, 18 packs per box. So one out of 838 packs. So then do the math here. I'll actually just break out. Too lazy to do real math. Let me just grab my calculator. How many boxes does it take? So 838 divided by 18. So plates are about one in every 46 and a half boxes. All right, all right. 838, all right, or did I? Eight thirty eight divided by 18. Yeah, so one in every 46 and a half boxes so divided by 12. So one in every almost four cases, and we found two plates. <laughs> so definitely beat the odds there. Go ahead and grab some drink. Ryan says, I hope my box is as good. Well, I guess we've seen some really nice chrome boxes. Definitely not worried here. We've even seen back to back to back boxes with autographs, even though the odds do come out to usually one every other box or so. So let's go ahead and update that queue number. Moving on into our second break of the night. Like I said, do have another Formula One Chrome here for Ryan H. Rhino and chat. Everybody wish Rhino good luck since I know that he's here. Let's go ahead and jump on into this box. Bye snapping us into the corner. Let's get started. Drinking asks, is there such a thing as rally racing cards? That's not something I'm familiar with. Perhaps if anybody else knows, go ahead and let me know so I can pass that information along to drinking. Bonnie Honor says, kind of how my Gypsy Queen box had three autos, but it was only guaranteed two. Sometimes that does happen as well. Sometimes you do get bonuses. Like, actually, we opened up a box for MT as well of Gypsy Queen that had three autos in it, which was really nice. The can says, printing plate incoming. Good luck, Rhino. Uh, the real deal, yes, they did. Panini does make NASCAR cards. We actually checked out some Chronicles boxes here on the channel, I want to say a couple weeks ago, maybe two or three weeks ago. Had a lot of really cool cards. Did find actually Jimmy Johnson autograph. Jeff Gordon is in the product too. Chronicles 2021 racing. You can get Jeff Gordon autograph. So some pretty cool stuff in Chronicles. I really liked it. No new racing products have gone up for order yet for NASCAR, for Panini NASCAR. Uh, but Formula One, there is actually a Topps flagship Formula One coming. Should be getting, I think, at least four cases of that, surprisingly. Surprisingly. And hope that we will be able to get hope that we can get in dynasty we're not sure yet if we're getting allocated in e formula in dynasty this year but i hope so hope so product seems really cool bounty hunter says nt should be next for nascar i haven't seen it pop up but that sounds about right it goes what chronicles national treasures donruss in that order and it circles around all right here we go pack one for rhino I really like how this set has a bunch of, you know, yes, there's a lot of player, well, drivers, not players in this instance, drivers have a lot of different base cards, but I like how some of them are in the car. Some of them are like, you know, post celebration, you know, pre-race, post race. Some of them just straight up just looks like product shots of the play, the drivers. I love all the different imagery used in the set. We have a gold coming up. We do have, oh, huh. Two refractors in this pack. We do have an F2 Carlin. This is a base refractor, number 110. And we do have a 70th anniversary gold, Alfa Romero, or Romeo, Alfa Romeo racing. Can anyone give me some clarification on that, please? I feel like I've been reading it as Alpha Romeo the entire time, but is it Alpha Romeo? But unnumbered gold refractor there is the anniversary refractor. It's 
Steven says Romeo. Okay. So I was right initially, and then I started getting paranoid. All right. Thank you, Steven and Scott. Appreciate it. And Fomatex is Romeo. I like the spelling there. Do you have a Verstappen maze? Looking happy. We have a Haas logo card. Leclerc car. Refractor insert. Like I said, these are all refractors. We do have a Lando Norris rookie in the car. Make a little rookie card pile. We have a refractor here, Zafnauer. Card number 92. Now the gold was unnumbered, the can. It does have that 70th anniversary logo. So there are two different types of gold and two different types of orange parallels in this product. Odell asks, is the box 2020 Formula One season? Yes, it is a 2020 product. However, it did release in 2021, which when it first released, I thought it was 2021 Formula One for that reason, but it is 2020 technically Formula One Chrome. We have a maze pin future stars. Botas. And then we have a purple refractor here, Latifi. That's number 109 out of 399, Nicholas Latifi, card number 193. And Fomatex says, Gasly won last race, he needs a sleeve. Sure thing, thank you for letting me know. Appreciate the info, Infomatech. Alex says, you still have boxes? If so, what's the price? Now, uh, we've never actually adjusted the price. They've just been chilling on the website at, I believe, $5.99. Campos logo. Do you have Hamilton on a fence? That's cool. Then Delatraz, refractor car inserts. Leclerc. Oh, we do have another Lando rookie here. With the drink. Number 180. And then we have a Roy Future Stars Refractor. Car number 55. Verstappen Base, Lundgaard, Future Stars, Luca, Future Stars, and four time world champion track tags inserts. Number three. All right, last pack here on the right side of the box here for Rhino. Rhino says, sleeve Lando, please. We'll do. I'll sleeve both these up after this pack here. You have Schwartzman, Future Stars. Galel, Future Stars. We have a George Russell, regular rookie. This car number 19. And then Perez, Refractor. Number 186. Yep, the true rookie, Pat Terrific. 
So I'll go ahead and get that sleeved on up as well. Sleeving up some rookies here. All right, so half the box down, half to go here. Next pack. I have Acid Reflux is now following. Thank you for the follow, appreciate it. To have Latifi car insert here oh reflux is now hosting my stream thank you so much appreciate it i have an albin rookie botas grand prix winner and then Sultan Iam, track tags here for Galel. Welcome, Peter. Looks like we do have another refractor in the back. Right, Conan, refractor. Number 35. PK, Future Stars. We have another Hamilton base here, Grand Prix winner Bahrain. And then Alpha Tari car insert here. Mayor of Canada asks, how did the new card smell? And I'm not smelling anything in particular. Chrome cards typically don't have like that, that, that paper smell, because, you know, they're not the same type of material. But not smelling anything from these cards. Trim Paw says, at least you should be able to get out of here a decent time and get something to eat. Most likely just going to go straight home and go to bed. That's my plan for the evening. We have an Albin rookie. I'm finding a lot of rookie cards here in this box for Ryan. Ooh, we have an orange Future Stars. So this is a true orange refractor. There is no logo. Delatraz Future Stars should be to 25. Five of 25 here, card number 47. Reflux asks if we found any Mario Andretti or car, his cars yet. I don't believe that Andretti's in this set. Don't think I've seen any. It is a name that I recognize, but not sure if that's Formula One or not. The name does sound familiar. Perhaps just not in the set. Pat Turfix is negative. Yeah, so no Andretti cards here in Formula One Chrome. Do have another Hamilton base. The thumbs up. And then Gasly, car insert. Any football tonight? We do have a box of Onyx vintage football. We do have something nice. Wow, okay. All right. Right now. I know you're like, man, I want my box to be just as nice as Sam's box. Back, back, pa back card here in this pack. You're going to like it. You're going to like it. I declare it now. You're going to like it. You're going to like this top card too. Look at that. Formula One's freshest. Lando Norris. Rookie. I like the glasses frame. I love this. I love the more rectangular shape.
You guys see, you guys see purple? You guys see purple? You see the top of that head? Whose head is that? Whose head is that? Oh, look at that. That's that base card number one, Lewis Hamilton. Purple. The three ninety nine. Look at that. Two sixty seven out of three ninety nine. Card number one. Nice. All right, nice purple refractor Hamilton. 267 of 399. Thank you for the subscription. Not going to read the name, but I appreciate the subscription. Sleeve up this other Lando for you. It's the drink, it's the pinky. The pinky out. You got to keep the pinkies out. Ray Skywalker says, Allie, the Hamilton Whisperer confirmed. Mayor of Canada says, surprised you're not wearing gloves. I'm not someone that would, I don't, I, I think I'd feel less confidence in my, my ability to touch the cards with gloves on. Just having that extra, I don't know, I, I'm very confident in my tactile abilities. Gloves aren't for me. If people prefer to open cards with gloves, more power to you. I'm not I'm not with it. But you know, people could do whatever they want. Not for me. The glove life isn't for me. We have a Sebastian Vettel here, refractor. Card number twenty three. And all right, last pack here for Ryan. You have another Albin rookie. Lots of rookie cards in this box. Lots of rookies. Virtuosi. Logo card. Love the logo cards. And ending off, they Vettel car insert. And with that... That finishes off this box here, Formula 1 Chrome. This is weird. The actual little styrofoam in the bottom of the box is damaged, but very cool. Acorn says the purple Hamilton is 16 to 1750 for out of 399. That's crazy. I was like, okay, the base seems to be like. You know, upwards of 200 that's a lot for a base card. That's got to be really sweet, but almost $2,000 for a purple refractor out of 400 Are you kidding me? What? Man, how much... How much... That's crazy. That's a lot. Killer Gorillas is graded 7,000. That's, that's crazy. That, that's crazy. Congrats, Rhino. That's amazing. That sounds like we have a see it to believe it on Monday. Wow. Our Acorn says latest auction was only around 900, but that has been prices on eBay before. If it seems soft right now, but it has sold closer to seventeen hundred, I just, I just hold on to it. That's sick. Ethan says I pulled a one on one worth three grand. We've seen some crazy stuff out of here. We've even pulled. I remember actually. I think the uh, one of the autos that Bossman had pulled was a gold, but it had like a giant dent on the back. It was still like a couple hundred bucks for a giant dent. I was like, that's crazy. Sue Ann says, definitely pays the box anywhere from the 800 range on up. That's that's nuts. Acorn says, looks like now we're seeing high fives to 700s, but it was 16 to 1700 in May. That's crazy. That is crazy. Sarah, actually, a lot of people do not like putting 
chrome cards and magnetics because the top of the the magnetic can scratch the surface i personally keep my chrome cards in magnetics but i don't you know i wouldn't feel comfortable mailing one in a magnetic uh not to mention that we actually don't have magnetics <laughs> we have like 130s i think that's all we have at the moment but i wouldn't i wouldn't feel comfortable putting it in a magnetic any in uh, in general but that's that's crazy. That's crazy. It's not signed, Peter. It's a refractor numbered out of three hundred and ninety nine. Yeah, no worries, Sarah. No worries. That that is one thing. People often just don't even like storing chrome and magnetics. I know some people don't even like storing sketch cards and magnetics because they're worried about like paint peeling. Uh, some people do just go a touch up in terms of size. That's crazy. Congratulations, Ryan. That's nuts. But yes, that does it here for this box. Let's go ahead and get on into our recap. Did have a ton of rookies. These poor Albans that aren't sleeved. But we did have a ton of rookies. Three Albin rookies. And then we also had this Nor Norris Formula One Freshest. Norris Car. Norris with the straw. And then the true rookie, George Russell. Portrait. We also had this gold 70th anniversary unnumbered refractor. Alfa Romeo logo. We also had this Gasly base sleeved on up per request. And purple refractor Latifi, number 109 out of 399. Our big purple of the box, big, big, big purple here, Lewis Hamilton, 267 out of 399, card number one. Sweet purple refractor. We also had a true orange refractor, Delatraz Future Stars. So this is numbered 5 of 25. And then for our base refractors, we'll just pan through all of these here. All right, with that F2 Carlin, that does it here for this box for Ryan. Thank you so much, Ryan, Mr. Rhino in chat for letting me open up some Formula One for you here on the channel. Really hope you enjoyed the opening and love these new additions to your collection. Definitely some really sweet cards in both of the Formula One boxes tonight. Very awesome here with that purple Hamilton. Hope you enjoyed it all and love these new additions to your collection. But as fun as that was, that actually does it for our Formula One openings tonight. Rest of tonight will be a smidgen of baseball, a single box of football, lots of voice, lots of magic, and also some Yu-Gi-Oh! And one box of Final Fantasy there in the middle. But with that, that does it here for this box for Ryan. Thank you so much, Ryan, like I said, for letting me open this on up for you. Really hope you enjoyed it and love these new additions to your collection. Let me go ahead and unsnap myself here. Move this on out of the way, and when I come back, we'll be getting into Sean's first box of Seven Deadly Sins of the Night. Now, I do take orders as they come in. If you order back-to-back -back in separate orders and there's no one else, like, in between, I do combine them together. But just so that, you know, it comes in first in, first out, I do have Sean's second box of Seven Deadly Sins that was ordered not too long ago is in break number 14. So they will ship in the same package, Sean, if you're watching. I just won't be opening them up at the same time. A little bit of an appetizer, then you can have your dessert at the end of the stream. But anyways, let me go ahead and move this on out of the way. I'll be back with our first Seven Deadly Sins of the Night. Welcome back, Tiffany. Be right back. Yep, exactly that drinking. People order boxes, personal breaks, so they get the whole box, and then I ship everything. Some people don't want, like, certain base cards, like, you know, some Yu-Gi-Oh! or Magic base cards, things like that sometimes. Um, don't ship those per request, but just default to sending everything. We do have some different international shipping to Canada. It's much more expensive than in the U.S. for international shipping, so we do have different options there, and no base, and then a whole base included. But in general, it's just in the U.S., everybody gets everything. But be right back, everybody. Be right back. Sean says it's okay. Oh, Sean, is this you? Very cool. 
But we did actually open up a full case as well as a supply set and a trial deck to check out all of the new products for this Weiss release of the Seven Deadly Sins. Now, something I emphasized in that video yesterday is this is an English edition exclusive, so there is no Japanese print of the set. Now, you guys might be like, that's a little odd. Why would they do that? Well, as it happens, there's a lot of sets that aren't Japanese exclusive. However, don't get brought over. So they're functionally Japanese exclusives. Uh, but of course, you can use a lot of tournaments do accept English and Japanese cards. Paper City Gamer Chaff with the 499 Super Chat says, what's the most expensive card you have ever pulled? Ooh, that is a, that's a tough question because last year we did have, last year we did have that Harrison Ford Silver Frame number to five from Masterwork. But also we did open up a total of four cases of Star Wars Stellar Signatures. And in one of those cases did get a one of one dual autograph of Daisy Ridley and Adam Driver. Now, at the time, at the time, our number one pull from last year was one of the sketch cards from Stellar, just because we couldn't get a good approximation of the price of that silver frame. We actually did, for the one-year channel anniversary, I did actually make a compilation video with top ten pulls. Um, some of it was weird. Like, there was one box, it was Immaculate Basketball. It was a letter patch of, like, like Kyrie Irving or something. I don't know, but there's a letter patch, just number to seven. And we just went over it. I was like, oh, that's cool. And it was like a $2,000 card. So the, that one, had, that was a not very exciting reaction in that countdown. But there, there's so many, so many cool cards last year from Star Wars, particularly that Star Wars is off the chain. Like we actually, they had fallen off eBay. Then we went to relist them. And the Ewan McGregor autographs have really jumped up in the past six months. We do have a one of one Ewan. We have the matching color, one of one Hayden Christensen that we pulled out of seller here. So... I don't actually know what the most expensive card has been. I don't know. I don't know. Sean says, my first time ordering anything online like this. Well, I hope it's a great experience, Sean. Acorn says, even going up for the Obi-Wan series, I'm guessing. I think it's a lot of people getting very excited for that. Um, Pat Terfix says, the Game of Thrones Daenerys, the highest card right now. We never actually pulled one, although Amelia Clark is signing for this year's Stellar Signatures. So I'm certain... If we're able to get any Stellar, we did put in pre-orders for a decent amount of cases. We'll see. We haven't gotten our allocations yet. But, you know, so we should be getting... If we never find in any of these Game of Thrones boxes, if we never find Amelia, we will 100% find Amelia and Stellar because she will be in every box. So, so that'll be exciting to pull. I'd like to add one of her Kira autos to my collection, but I don't think I'll be able to afford it. It's going to be expensive. going to be expensive. She also has silver frames, at least in Masterwork this year. I'm excited for that. Again, don't think I'll be able to afford it. But it's a sick looking card. But let's go ahead and update our queue number to three here for Sean. So actually in the case, another fun fact that I discovered is not only in a sealed case, which I thought was very strange, we did find one copy of every single non-SP foil. So all four triple R's and all 18 SR's in the case, we got perfect numbering exactly one of each of those. Exactly two play sets, perfect collation, all the double R's. And also, we had eight single foil boxes and eight double foil boxes. So it does seem to be a 50-50 shot, whether you're getting a one foil or two foil box. Let's go ahead and jump on into this one here for Sean and see what we'll find by snapping us into the corner. Let's get started. Please break into the Kylo Sign Super Fractor. That's also a really great card as well. Now, at the time, Adam Driver Autos were down a bit. But again, Adam Driver Autos have really rebounded. I remember when the first sign, I think, actually was the 2016 Masterwork. Several thousand dollars. And then I know with last year's Stellar, he got as low as like a couple hundred. But Adam Driver stuff is up again. That Super Fractor from Chrome was amazing. That was actually... The longest stream that I've had, I think 13 and a half hours. I remember I pulled that card at 9.30 in the morning, and I even said, I'm too tired for this. But it was it was super exciting. I was, I was like, exhausted. As soon as the camera was off, lights out. But that was a great time as well. Our promo of the box is SD Diane. Very cute little chibi there. Riz says, watching breaks is my version of ASMR. Also, just watching collectible chat, super calming. I enjoy talking about it, so I hope you're having a blast. Soren says, good day from Sydney, Australia. Hey, welcome, Soren. 
Peter says, Sally, I like the outfit today. Thank you. Appreciate it. We do have a regular rare here. Meliodas, hypnotized. Oh yeah, Peter, that was, I'm never doing it again. I'm never doing it again. That was the longest stream. The most amount of boxes I've done in a single night was not that night though. Most amount of boxes I've opened up in one sitting is 94. That was when we had the double case draft of Star Wars Signature Series and a bunch of personals. So they were very quick openings, but that was the highest count. Space Goes Dave says, I got a box of this on the way. Never opened Weiss before, so I'm interested in seeing how the pulls are. We have a double R here. Hendrickson, no longer human. Welcome, Timberwolf. Welcome, Marzi, to the Twitch stream. We have Rare, Gil Thunder, Smile of Relief. Chicago says, Ali, at 50k subs, will you be doing a 24-hour stream? Chicago really wants me to do a 24-hour stream. To be fair, I could probably, in all earnest, actually legitimately prepare for it. But I'd rather not do that. I'd really rather not do that. Sarah says, love the illustrations on these cards. Weiss is super fun, especially because, of course, majority of sets are all different shows, so you get to see all different kinds of styles. Now, actually, later this year, we do have a lot of Volume 2s coming, including in a couple weeks, we do have Fate Stay Night Heaven's Feel Volume 2. Should also be having that time I got reincarnated as a Slime Volume 2, Sword Art Elysization Volume 2. But usually it's like single single serve sets but when it's the same show that does have a second set you can combine the cards between the sets but you can't for example like on the shelf there i have a data live box you can't make a deck to play the game with data live and seven deadly sins cards they have to be self-contained within the same show oh nice good luck timberwolf Elaine, guarding the spring. Rare. Drinking says, are you a coffee or tea person? If needed to do a 24-hour stream. I'm more of a coffee person, although I don't like regular coffee. I like the Starbucks version of coffee. Like, I have a Keurig here, but all I can really use it for is hot chocolate because I can never make coffee taste good. Just no matter what I do to it, I put cream, I put sugar, I put milk. It just, I don't know. It just, I can't get it to taste good to my, to me. I don't know what it is. We have Gil Thunder, Magic Words, double R. So Ian says, don't do a 24-hour stream unless it's for charity or something like that. Not worth the adrenal stress it puts on your body. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dreaming about a 24-hour stream like Chicago is. Chicago, you wouldn't even be able to watch a 24-hour stream. We have Hawk, Passion for Scraps, rare. Double R, Diane, cheerful. Do you have rare Hauser switching sides? for a special someone rare Merlin 
and superior skills. Rare, Arthur, confident. Chicago says you could do a 12 hour Titan and then a 12 hour Trove stream. Well, Chicago, I know that at least if I ever do it, we're stuck in this, this pit of tiredness together. Because Chicago said he would stay up if I did a 24 hour stream. We have Merlin joining the party, rare. We do have our first foil of the box. We have an SR, Hendrickson, no longer human. One thing that I did really appreciate about this release here from Bushiroad is every single foil does have at least slightly different art than the regular card. A lot of them are like 100% completely different. There's a few that are somewhat similar. Then there's one where the only difference is Elizabeth has her mouth slightly open instead of closed. But they are all different arts than the regular card. So I do appreciate that. Minidisc says, I've fallen asleep to a few streams. Not that you're boring, just they go so late sometimes. I mean, I, don't force your, guys, don't force yourselves to stay up. I don't know how I do it. Doesn't mean that you guys have to do it just because I do it. But I appreciate those that of you that, like, really try. I know Bounty Hunter was excited last week was the first time he's able to, like, go through a whole stream since he has to get up so early every day. Mighty Merck says, just saw your shop location, was excited to see it was in Florida. Then I looked it up, but I'm still two hours away. Road trip, Mighty Merck, road trip. We have King and Oslo, away from the, the bustle. Rare. Fountain of Youth. Hey, Elser. Sean says, all these cards are awesome. I'm glad you're enjoying them, Sean. Elizabeth breaking the spell. Gother, true identity. Rare. Full counter. Double our bond for a special someone. All right, getting close to the end of this first box here for Sean. Later on, there's another box, but for this opening, just this one box. Just one foil so far. Can, of course, find up to two per box. Double R, Meliodas, important things. Last pack here, we have Rare, Gother holding his head up. So just one foil in this first box, although like I said, it is about seeming to be a 50-50 shot based on that one case we opened. Eight single foil boxes, eight dual foil boxes. But I believe the foil we found here was actually a double R, so that's pretty good. SR foil parallel of a double R. We'll start off our recap checking out this card. Do have Hendrickson, no longer human. Let's go ahead and compare that side by side so you guys can see. Different art there, same card. Same thing if you were to play either version of this card, it does the exact same thing. But for collectors, like myself, I like having the regular than the foil. Like how they have different arts. Buttface Jones says, just join. No idea what I'm looking at. Hope some of these are good hits. Welcome. Welcome. 
We did look at our one foil of the box. Let's go ahead and take a look at our double R's as well. Did have Meliodas, important things. Bon for a special someone. Diane, cheerful. Gil Thunder, magic words. And of course, the regular version of that. Hendrickson, no longer human. Then our promo of the box. There are five different promos for the set. Then have SD Diane. And with that, that finishes off this first box here for Sean. Thank you so much, Sean, for letting me open up some Seven Deadly Sins for you here on the channel. Really hope you enjoyed the opening and love these new additions to your collection. Like I said, later tonight, your other box is in break number 14, so close to the end. Although I don't think tonight will be a super long stream, so hopefully you won't have to wait too long to see your other box. Nuclear asks, what's the highest card rarity? For this set in particular, there are the SP, which stands for Special Rare, I believe. Uh, we did see in our full case of 16 boxes, we only did see two. So sometimes in Weiss, there's two per case, sometimes there's three, sometimes it's a mix of different rarities, sometimes there's SPs and then SSPs, which are even harder to pull, or sometimes even secret rares. But for this set, not to be confusing, highest rarity, rarity you can go is the SP. And there's actually a Diane SP out there. Maybe we can find that one for you later, Sean. Sean says his favorite is Diane. But that does it here for break number three. Again, thank you so much, Sean, for letting me open up some Seven Deadly Sins for you. That second box coming up later tonight. Now, up next, we do have some more of this product to check out. That will be for Caleb S. Timmy the Carrot in chat, if I remember correctly. Let me go ahead and unsnap myself first, move this on out of the way, and I'll be back with more Seven Deadly Sins. Acorn says Weiss is a bit confusing. You have rare, double rare, triple R, secret, super rare, SP, etc. Yeah, but then some sets have set themed triple R's. Like JoJo doesn't have triple R's, it has JoJo rares. Some of the Bang Dream sets have high rares, which are, I feel like, about as common as the double R's. Like, I feel like you find a lot of those foils per box, but it's still considered a foil parallel. Like, there's a lot of rarities in Weiss, and it changes set per set. So that's why I was like, just to stop being confusing, in this set in particular, highest you can go is the SPs. So let me go ahead and move this on out of the way, and I'll be back with those two boxes for Caleb. All right, I've returned. Jincola asks, is that thing real? I'm assuming you're asking about uh, this bottom corner here on the screen. Uh, this is just a play mat, but this is my pet lizard. So the answer to your question is yes and no at the same time. And it's actually a little baby Yoda charm. I got this for my birthday last year and I've worn it, I think almost every day. I've only missed a few days of wearing it. But yeah, it's a little Pandora fancy. Baby Yoda charm. Super cute, super cute. Would recommend it if you're looking for somebody you want to give them a fancy gift, would recommend it. The necklace, I think, was just, it's not Pandora. It's just like off Amazon. You don't need to buy a fancy chain. But definitely very cute charm. Would recommend. Drinking Canada says, Komodo dragons are real. She's not that large. Uh, once she's full, grain, uh, full grown, Niv here is a, an Argentine black and white tegu. Niv is a she, so she should cap out at... Like three and a half feet long, but she could get close to four. You know, who needs a dog where you can have an attack lizard, right? You know, just, just asking. <laughs> Chicago asks, Allie, is your birthday in October? Yes, my birthday is the same birthday as Seto Kaiba. That makes me cool. That makes me certified cool. But all right. Let me scoot back in. Mighty Mark says, love that tag. You've got one named Falcor, and he's the best. Ooh, sounds cool. But all right. Let me go ahead and update our queue number two, four here. Paging Timmy the Carrot. 
All right, two boxes, seven deadly sins. Two blazes, cool with a K, and K is for Kaiba. <laughs> Mark says three and a half feet is definitely so pretty sizable. You know, I, I, I like monitor lizards too, but their temperaments. But I really like, there's one at the, the reptile shore, uh, store down on Olmerton. It's called Pinellas County Reptiles. It's not for sale, but they have a black dragon monitor. And he looks so cool, though. They have, like, a couple different. There's, like, a mangrove monitor in there. They have some regular monitors. Sometimes they have, like, Aki monitors. I'm like, maybe I could do an Aki monitor because they don't get too big. So even, it's, even if they're rude, you know, they're not too large. But black throat monitors are dope. Like, that, that's an attack lizard. Like, there's actually a YouTube channel. This guy has, his, like, this pet black throat monitor that just cuddles up with him on the couch. And this lizard's, like, six and a half feet long, by the way. Huge. Might need to get one if I end up ever streaming from, like, my own house. Just, you know, just to be safe. You know, attack, attack lizard. It's fine. Timberwolf says, Allie needs a Komodo dragon. <laughs> Now, I'm not willing to risk that. Highest that will go is some sort of monitor. I'm not going any anything beyond that. That's that. That's like my danger level is monitor. And then Mark says, what's the lifespan look like for Niv? 15 to 25. Usually around 20 for captivity, I believe, is what I read. Of course, all depends on how well you take care of your lizard. Try to make sure Niv lives a very healthy, happy lifestyle. She's being a little, being a little bit of an edgy teenager. She is around that age. Could be a couple months of her just not wanting to hang out with me. But, you know, do do still, of course, clean up, feed, bathe, put her out in the sun. But she's doing this thing. Like, I know I've mentioned it to, to you guys before about Niv. She doesn't like you watching her do stuff. And she's been, like, really about that, like, the past week and a half. Like, if she's crawling onto her basking spot and I hear a noise and I look, and I'm like, what are you doing in there? She's like, nothing. Like, just to spite me, she'll make herself. Like, I wanted to be warm, but I'm not going to be warm, so you don't have to see me be warm. Like, it, Niv, just just get on the rock. It's fine. It's fine. We, I know you're going to be on the rock when I leave the room and come back. You don't have to, like, I wasn't doing that, Mom. Mm. Like, Niv's getting a little little teenager -y, but that's that's just lizards. But all right, the queue is updated. That's enough Niv talk. I have my tiny knife, handy-dandy scissors. We are ready to get started here. Break number four for Caleb by... Snapping us into the corner. Let's get started. Timberwolf says, my buddy had a lizard. His tail whip hurts. Lizard was kind of a kind of rude. He would hit you and if you try to touch him. Some lizards just, especially if you don't handle them a lot when they're younger, they get very set in their ways. Which is why I also... Monitor lizards, especially, especially you get something like a savannah monitor. That's why they're so cheap. This is they require a lot of work. They could be very, they could be nice, but most mon savannah monitors, it's like that's why they're twenty dollars because they will hate you. So, a promo of the box here is SD Bun. And forgot the pickles. Says Allie, would you ever dye your hair again? I know your hair used to be green. Actually, currently it's blue at the end. This time I had blue put in. I know it doesn't, like, on the face cam, you don't really see it. I know I have to, like, actually drag my hair under the camera, but it shows up on Instagram pictures, but it doesn't really show up, like, here for you guys. I don't know why. But, yeah, my hair currently has some dark blue at the end. I'm not, well, one, I'm too cheap, and two, I can't commit to, like, like if I were to just dye my, bleach my whole head of hair and then dye my whole hair blue. Like, I'm okay with, like, bits and pieces because it doesn't feel like a large commitment. <laughs> but I do like the color. I do like doing fun colors. I was thinking about going green again, but I just, I really felt like doing blue. Timmy says, thanks, Allie. Let's get an SP. Hockey and Metal says, hello. Hope you're doing well. How many breaks do you have this evening? Just 16 this evening, Hockey and Metal. A little bit of a shorter night, but we did start off with some very fun products. First two breaks were two boxes of Formula One Chrome. So definitely a lot of really fun cards earlier tonight. Do have Elizabeth sacrificing herself rare. Drinking says it does show up as very nice purple hue on camera. It's just I notice, unless I'm wearing white, 
Like, again, and my hair is down. You can't really see it. It's like, if I were to put it down, you guys would be able to tell it's blue. It just kind of blends in. Uh, just because my hair is so dark, too. Peter asks if Niv and I sleep together. No, she likes going to bed super early. When she is larger, I mean, Niv is large now, but she's nowhere close to her full size. But once Niv is larger, probably let her free range a bit more in the house. At least while I'm supervising. But right now, yeah. Ooh, we do have a foil already. We have Gauther, Mind Manipulator, SR. But... Nah, I don't sleep with Niv. I have taken a nap with her on me, but, like, I don't put her in the bed. That, that seems just, like, danger. Acorn says, the sideways cards look like a completely different shell. Yeah, the sideways cards seem to me more, those are the Climax Rares and Climax Commons, seem to be more of, like, fight scenes rather than just close-up of a pig. Character reads a book, you know? I, I, I see what you're saying, Acorn. I see what you're saying. Chicago asks, my hair is black or dark brown? My hair is black when wet, but dark brown normally. I do also have bits and pieces of red on my scalp. And my eyebrows are black, though, so which is why when I get my hair cut, when I go, like, every, what, 10 weeks or so, you guys always see that I come back darker because I have the lady put in darker to match my eyebrows, and then it just fades back to my natural color. Steven says there's a bit of lag. Is anybody else having any issues? Hey, Kenny, welcome. Polar Bear says there's lag. Oh, I just saw my hand skip around the screen. We have a rare Diane Childhood. YouTube is still giving me the green for good slash excellent connection. Is it skipping? Is it, like, actually slow? Can you guys still hear me well? Iggy over on YouTube says they're seeing some there. Chicago says there are a few frames dropped. And Timberwolf says only the video skips. Audio is fine. Phoenix isn't having any lag. And then some other are saying that it's fine. Michael says he's having lag. Huh. Interesting. I'll keep an eye on it. I'll definitely keep an eye on it. Steven says it's good now. Chicago says it's fine now. All right, so I'll continue, definitely. If you guys see anything, please let me know. That way I can uh, make sure you guys are getting the best quality. We have Rare Elizabeth breaking the spell. Juan says, all okay from here. Thank you, Juan. Kenny says, you're good on my end. Thank you, Kenny. Hey, Kevin, welcome. Bon, ready to kill. Rare. Ginkola asks, how do you run a card shop and do these long streams? Well, that's why I only stream on the weekends. As Timberwolf says, dedication. You know, during the week, that's when I do the recorded videos because it's easier to do the recordings. And do a lot of mail, a lot of online listings. Thankfully, I'm very rarely ever in the physical shop anymore. It's mainly dealing with, like, all the online sales. But I only stream the one day a week. Unless there's like a specific new product we're opening a lot of. I was heavily considering doing the Seven Deadly Sins live. But I just didn't feel like doing a live stream yesterday. So I made that into a video. Definitely a long video. But I feel like it would have actually been longer as a stream. Because of course, I'm, I'm more prone to talking with you guys. Stopping and chatting about different things. We had that whole expose on Niv like prior to the start of this break. For no reason other than just why not. So with videos, it's more streamlined. So I was like, in the sake of time, I was like, let me just not do a stream yesterday. But if OPG Platinum is still coming out on Wednesday, should be having a stream for that. I think we're literally just going to open all of it since we can't sell it.
chat says, Ali, what was the Game of Thrones break? Seven cases? Yes. We opened five cases for us. And then we did one personal case, two personal cases. Might have just been six, Pat. Terrific. Gil Thunder, Magic Words, double R. Mando, I think, we opened th uh, five cases. Masterwork, I know, last year. Masterwork was seven cases. I think that was the most amount of cases. Hey, Surfer, welcome. Hey, Richard, welcome. Peter asks if I've ever had Niv as a guest on one of these streams. Actually, the day that I opened up the Game of Thrones in my, mail in my uh, Daenerys cosplay... It did actually bring Niv. Niv was on camera at the start. She wasn't very pleased with being on camera. You know, she just wanted to explore. So, I just had her up for like the first few minutes and then I, I let her do what she wanted to do. But Niv, so Niv has had a, Niv has had a live stream debut and Niv is also on that, that one little bonus video that I made where I tried to get her to deface the box of National Treasures. And I titled it Niv Channel Treasures, but she just didn't care. You can call ask if she was Drogo. No, I had Niv. I gave her little wings so she could be Drogon, because Niv is black and white. Meliodas, hypnotized. Gother, wielder of harlots. Also, for those of you who have watched the anime, now initially during the case opening, the way I read this character's name was Gother, like cow with a G, Gother. And then I was like, what if it's Gother? Oh, well, let me know which one is correct, so that way I can stop feeling weird about it. So if anybody has seen these show is present, would really appreciate that. Tibble says, I think it's Gother, but I can't remember. Because I was thinking about it. The way I read it was Gal, like Cal, because there's a W. But then I was thinking, sometimes when they do the, the romanization of names, when it's G-O-U, sometimes they just put, like, the dash on top. And I was like, maybe they put a W there because it's G-O-U instead of, I don't know. So I wasn't sure. Serpent says it is Go. So Gother. AC Kayla says Gother is wrong. The first is correct. Sean says I believe the W is silent. Andon says Gother. James says no seven deadly to open, but I did open some bow footy and hit an SP. Oh, nice. And James says Gother is how they say it. All right. So Gother holding his head up. And it says, at least in the English dub, it's Gother. Kayla, everybody else is saying Gother. I don't know. We have King and Oslo away from the bustle. We have Diane twirling her hair. Kayla says in the sub is Gouther. Interesting. Maybe that is just a, a dub issue. I don't know. Meliodas, important things, double R. Oh, I see the lag on the Diane card. I saw that. I'm going to run a speed test just to see what's up. Not sure why we'd be having any issues. The upload is fine.
the upload is good. I know we were having some slight pockets of lag last week on both YouTube and Twitch. But, not sure what's up with that. I know there is another UFC card tonight, but we survived McGregor Poirier 3, so... That shouldn't be affecting anything. Hopefully it's just just because of the time of night here locally. A lot of people are using the internet, and that's why there's some issues, and that just fades. But definitely if you guys see stuff egregious, let me know so I could take a little break. Elaine, guarding the spring. Tibley says, looked it up on YouTube. English dub says Gother. And then in sub, apparently it's Galther. All right. Interesting. GG Funimation, I'm assuming. Bond for a special someone. Hauser switching sides. Here, ask who's my favorite UFC fighter is. I don't, I must admit, I don't follow the UFC very closely, but I do remember when I think I was in high school. My dad showed me the super cool highlights of a submission by the Korean zombie, and I thought it was sick. So I'll just go with the Korean zombie. Why not? Hey, poor boy swag. Welcome. Says, hi, hi Allie. Love the live streams. Hey, I'm glad to hear it. Well, this is our last pack of our first box here for Caleb. Just one foil so far. And this is another one foil box as we finish off with a rare Merlin joining the party. All right, so we'll do a recap at the end of box number two. We should be due for a two foil box, so hopefully this next one is one such box, box here for Caleb. So another 20 packs and of course a promo. Let's see what we'll find. We do have SD Elizabeth. So two different promos. There are five different types of promos. All right, pack one, box two. King for a special someone. Double R Merlin surprise reveal. Oh yeah, I saw that, Acorn. It's cool, because by the time you mention Acorn, I can finish up and then look at the YouTube replay, because their YouTube is about... Recently, YouTube has been about 15 to 25 seconds behind, so then I can look and see how bad it is. Oh yeah, I did see that just there while I was setting down that Climax Rare. Steven's again. Ah, quite frustrating. We have a double arm, Meliodas to the rescue. Oh yeah, that looks bad. I'm not sh I wonder why these things happen. Like, what causes lag? Especially when the upload speed is fine. Chicago says, Allie, you have Taco Bell for dinner tonight? I actually had Subway. The Subway down the street was closed for a week. It's getting remodeled. But it's open again. Marzi, it's directly... It's wired. It's wired. So Ethernet... 
Steven says network management. So you think it's just, just because there's a lot of people? I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, in general, the upload's good, and then, like, it'll just, like, boop for a little bit. Interesting. Bad Keith Gaming says, I had Taco Bell last week and regretted it. Yeah, whenever I eat Taco Bell, like, my whole week is, like, shot. I don't know what it is, but it's just, I feel off the entire week. All right, let's see how this pack looks. We have Rare, Arthur, Confident. Do have Double R, Elizabeth, Druid Priestess. We do have our first foil here, SR, Arthur, Confident. First foil of box two. Again, let's look at the different arts there. Rare, Gother, Mind Manipulator. Elizabeth sacrificing herself. Gil Thunder, Smile of Relief, Rare. Hey Trey, welcome back. Thank you for the compliments. Very rare, Gila, switching signs. Marzi is looking forward to the upcoming Star Wars Masterworks. Definitely should be a very fun set to open. Still haven't gotten our full allocation numbers. Not looking super great at the moment, but I am very excited for that set nonetheless. We have Gother, Wielder of Harlots, rare. We have Lane facing a demon, double R. Mini disc with the quotes. We ordered 10 cases and got three boxes. Um, we got cut from... GTS is telling us we put in for 25 cases. They're telling us zero. We put in for 25 with Southern. And they're telling us 13. And we won't hear from all sports probably till like two weeks before release. So it's looking like potentially 75 cases to 13. So we didn't expect to get close to the full 75, but still hoping maybe get like somewhere in the 30s. Continue here. Looks like we had a lag spike, but it's looking all right on my end now. Next up, we have rare Diane Childhood. Ah, 
Another lag spike. I see that as I'm opening the pack. Ooh, that, that's actually really bad there. Bork Laser asks, is there weather in the area? It did look like it was going to rain earlier today, but I haven't heard anything. It has been storming here at night recently, but I'm not hearing anything. Let me actually check if it's stormy. According to the weather report, say it should be clear skies right now. Acorn says, looks like Tampa's clear. Definitely frustrating when this happens, though, just because, you know, tonight's a scheduled shorter stream, just not too many breaks, and yet the lag does string it out for you all anyways. You can only imagine how frustrating it must be for Timmy here. Mike asks if we have Fios. Verizon doesn't service this building with anything besides dial-up, so we have Spectrum. Because that's the best we can get. I think there's some parts of Pinellas Park over there putting in fiber. So maybe, hopefully the building can get fiber. We actually had out about a month or two ago. I don't remember the last time we were having severe issues. But we actually had a tech come out and they replaced the entire line in the building because it was having a lot of interference. It's a pretty old line. So the, the, the one in the building is fresh right now. And then also they were replacing the line underground nearby as well. So it should be good. So really don't know what the problem is. Just about, Sarah. Yeah, just about. Acorn says, I mean, it is peak hours on a Saturday, so there's a lot of usage right now. I know, but there's a lot of weeks that we don't have this issue. Just not sure. I wish I had a solution, but like I said, Spectrum, where it like caps out. The highest I think I've seen us ever get upload is like 38. It's like, that's not great. It's not great at all, but still. Yeah, I'm seeing on that pack there. Minidisc says running malware by its CC Cleaner and Windows Update helps a ton. The computer updated recently. Perhaps I'll try that this week. I haven't checked. I've been checking because it's been a little bit uh, tough on storage just because of those long videos. But I've, I've been clearing out stuff. I do have space just because those Ace Attorney video files are super large. But so it shouldn't be storage reasons. It shouldn't be shouldn't be actual the line, anything like that. Definitely frustrating. Though. Sarah says there's no lag with us. So we'll go through another pack here. See how this goes. I did see a little jump there while I was talking. We do have here, hopefully this didn't jump. Hold this up just in case. We did hit a second foil here for Caleb. Did have an SB here, Meliodas, important things. So very nice, our first signed of the night, do have that SP Meliodas. Very nice pull here for Caleb. Sounds about right, Acorn. That is our second foil here of box two. Nice. So just a handful of packs remaining here in this second box. Did find two foils already, so that's the most we can find. 
Mighty Mark says, our foils SB is taxed. Jared never pulled one. Uh, a lot of them are. Some foils are just like this where you can see the foil there, but there are bits and pieces of texture. This one, just because the character takes up so much of the card, there's not much texture on it. This Gother here does have a bit more texture. You can see behind the, the matte foiling on the face. has some texture there, but it, it varies on the design of the card itself. Yeah, the Elizabeth, the reason that one Elizabeth SP is so expensive because it's a trial deck SP and those are very, very hard to pull. Oop. I put some commons in the uncommon pile, no. We do have rare Hendrickson, Grandmaster. Ah, Steven says lag again. Yeah, it's because the one Elizabeth SP acorns from the trial deck. seems okay now, so I'll continue. The rest of these packs won't have any more foils to reveal. So even if there is a bit of lag, it's not the worst possible moment for it to happen. We do have rare Elaine guarding the spring. We have a double R King, wielder of chastity full. We have Diane, wielder of Gideon, rare. And the last pack here for Caleb. You have a rare bond ready to kill. That finishes off both of these boxes here for Caleb. So we go ahead and straighten up these piles a bit, and then hopefully we can get through a nice recap without any issue. Did find two SRs and one SP here for Caleb. Box one had one foil. Box two had that second SR and the SP. Let's go ahead and start off our recap with those SRs. We did have Arthur Confidence and Gother Mind Manipulator. Then our SP did find Meliodas, Important Things. For our two promos, two different ones, we did have SD Bond and SD Elizabeth. And then for our double R's, we did find King, Wielder of Chastifold, Elaine Facing a Demon, Elizabeth, Druid Priestess, Meliodas to the Rescue, Merlin, Surprise Reveal, Bond for a Special Someone, Meliodas, Important Things, Diane, Cheerful, Gil Thunder, Magic Words, and Hendrickson, No Longer Human. And with that, that does it here for these two boxes for Caleb. Thank you so much, Timmy, for letting me open up some more Ys for you. Really hope you enjoyed the opening and love these new additions to your collection. Congrats on that SP pull here from this brand new product. Really hope you enjoy it and love these new additions to your collection. Acorn says, weird question. Could you get those promos graded without taking them out of the packaging? Um, I don't know. I mean, they're very easy. You just slice them up on the top. You take them out. You probably want to put it. I feel like, I don't know. That is a good question, Acorn. Definitely weird, like you said, but good question. Good question. If anybody knows... 
Let me know. Acorn says, yeah, but you don't touch them. I know, but like, that's kind of weird. I don't know. Kind of weird to me. But that does it here for these two boxes, seven deadly sins for Caleb. We do have more boxes coming up later tonight, but we are taking a little break from Weiss. Up next, we do have Adventures in the Forgotten Realm set booster box from Magic Gathering for Andy S. So let me go ahead and unsnap myself here, move this on out of the way. When I come back, switching gears to some Magic the Gathering. So hang tight, everybody. And hopefully, the internet gets all of its lag out in the next, like, 30 seconds while I'm away. All right. Be right back with some magic. Chicago said, most attractive Merlin I've ever seen in reference to the Weiss cards. All right, let me go ahead and grab this set booster. Max Robes Pierre says, Hi, Allie. I think you're awesome. Oh, well, thank you very much. And I have returned. So let me go ahead and update our queue number to five. Bo says, I think you would grade it as a pack. I've seen promo baseball packs graded by PSA. I have seen graded packs before for Pokemon. But I don't know what they do about promos. Like, would the grader open it like Timberwolf or Acorn was suggesting? I don't know. I don't know. It's a good thought question, you know, to think about. I don't know if there's actual an answer for it, but lots of interesting scenarios that you could come up with for that. But paging Andy S here, your box of adventures in the Forgotten Realms is coming up. Of course, the set boosters do have those one art card per pack. And of course, chances to get some really nice cards off the list as well. Food Chain, of course, in the list. Kozilek, some other really nice stuff. Some black cards, some tutor card that I hadn't even heard of before. We actually had someone trade it in about like two weeks or so ago. I was like, huh, this is from the list. I wonder how much it was. It was like almost $40. So there's a lot of really good cards on the list, but the list is huge. There's a lot of interesting choices for the list as well. Andy is here, so let's just go ahead and jump on into it by snapping us into the corner. Let's get started. Mark says, yes, you can PSA grade sealed promos. There's an ancient Mew one on eBay right now. Interesting. Interesting. Art is awesome and prettiest MTG opener. Oh, thank you. Appreciate the compliments, Art. And all right. Our first of three. And actually the last three we had in stock. I didn't realize we had gotten so low on the Forgotten Realms boxes. Did order another case though, so they will be back in stock uh, later this week. Randy Moss just subscribed. Thank you, Randy. Let's go ahead and get started here for Andy. See what we can find. Pack number one. A lot of really stellar art in this set as well. Starting off with a borderless green dragon. Garnia Faith. And Delver's Torch is our first foil. Yep, spoiler previews has already started for the Innistrad sets as well. Ren and Seven seems really good. And the bundles now have eight set boosters. Ah, I hadn't heard that, Acorn. Thank you for letting me know. So we are getting these switch to bundles having set boosters instead of draft boosters with the upcoming Innistrad sets.
Peter asked, how many packs do you get in this box? 30 packs per set booster box, Peter. Yeah, I love the way the basics look. Dragon Turtle, rare. Charmed Sleep Foil. Yeah, Jinkola, Ren and Seven is like a very weird crucible of worlds. I feel like it reminds me of Crucible, but not. It does cost a lot. The The actual mana cost for it, I think, is like five or so. But you should actually be able to get it out earlier than Tuner 5 with like, what, Circle of Dreams Druid and Standard and whatnot? I think Ren and Seven will be really good. Barrow in of Clan Under, Showcase Foil. Ancient Den from the list. We do have a module showcase here, Temple of the Dragon Queen. Monk class rare and cleric class foil. Acorn says they also previewed a better shock and a better doom blade. Oh, I'll have to check those out. Hadn't seen those. I saw red and seven yesterday. I saw the basics of a swamp foil. I think I saw something else, but I don't remember much. I think I, oh, I saw the packaging. That's what I saw. I saw Soren's on one of the boxes, so Soren will be back. That's nice to know. Paladin class, white showcase rare, and Circle of the Moon Druid foil, Elvish Arch Druid from Dual Dax Elves versus Inventors on the list. Andy says, I do love the artwork on the cards. Acorn says, Soren is on the Crimson Vow. That's the second one in November. All right, so I got to wait more for Soren, but it'll be worth the wait. I love the art. Soren, Soren cards just look so cool. Like, I went in Corset, was it 19 or 20 came out with the new Soren Planeswalker? We have Hive of the Eye Tyrant, rare. I, I made it so that I got a regular, a regular foil and the pre-release one just because I thought the art was super cool. Imperia's Bloodlord. Because it looks like Lucius Malfoy. That rendition of Soren looks like he belongs in the Malfoy family. Merlin is now following. Thank you, Merlin. So I'm excited to see. I'm assuming we'll get a new Soren Planeswalker for Crimson Val. Mark says, I have a new appreciation of MTG art after the mats last night. It was really cool checking out, like, the full-size art. I mean, I'm sure some of those original pieces are even larger than the playmat size. But I love being able to see new details that I hadn't seen on the, the cards themselves. I did enjoy checking out 58 of those Mystical Archives playmats yesterday. Owl Bear Showcase. Acorn says the Inquisition of Kozilek playmat was awesome. Definitely loved it a lot more in playmat form than I thought I would. Uh, Professor Onyx Chicago is in Strixhaven, which will actually be opening up a set booster box as well of that later. Cridal of Baldur's Gate showcase. Westgate Regent and Inferno of the Star Mounts is our first mythic of the box. Intrepid Outlander foil. Blat Showcase.
Mind Flayer, Brazen Dwarf Foil, and Boros Challenger from the list. Direwolf Prowler. Hand of Vecna, rare, and Potion of Healing Foil. Peter asks if I play in D&D. I've actually never played D&D before. Never had any friend groups that were into it. I do know some people now that are considering doing D&D, but I don't know if I'd have the time. Mini Disc says, been thinking about getting some magic cards for the wife and I to play at home. Wouldn't want to get a lot of stuff, something simple. Uh, you can always get the... Well, actually, they don't have Planeswalker decks, really, anymore. I mean, it's just kind of want to make a couple decks out of the new D&D set. I was going to refer just something simple for you and the wife to play. I was thinking, like, you know, usually there's, like, two Planeswalker decks that come out. And I was like, wait, they haven't done that in a while, actually. They haven't done that since... I'll say Theros? Ziggy says the arena decks. That 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 is a thing that you guys can do. Mini disc, you can actually you guys can make arena accounts, and then you guys can direct challenge each other and just play online. But because I know there's new commander decks, but commander is just kind of like a whole other entity. I wouldn't recommend that for starting out. Yeah, there's the their commander decks now that come out. Some of them are really good. Some of them are just very casual commander decks. Like, these are legitimate commander decks. And then, like, the commander decks that came out with, like, Zendikar or like... Lair of the Hydra. And Orborea Pegasus, Showcase Foil. Andy says, I've been playing D&D since high school. I feel like it's something that I could potentially really enjoy or just get super frustrated and not want anything to do with it. But I feel like I, I will I should try and join a game. Like I said, if the, the friend if the friend group does get something going, I'll, I'll try it out. Because I feel like what's the harm in trying it out? We have Zalto, Fire Giant Duke, and a foil evolving wild. Swamp, Rust Monster, Icing Death, Frost Tyrant, Mythic Number Two, Grim Wanderer Foil. Mark says, You ever think of maybe doing like deck profiles or something on the channel if you have events in store? Maybe. Maybe. I hadn't thought of it before, but I know people have asked for more magic-related content, like, aside from just openings. People have asked for, like, my general discussion and thoughts on sports as well, but I just, I don't know. I don't want to stray too far from what the channel is about, you know, which is about, you know, boxings, openings, checking out new products. But I also want to keep people happy, so I, I don't know. I don't know. Owlbear, Showcase Art Card, Knoll Hunter, Wan T. Mallison, Rare, Zorn, Rare, and Kick in the Door. Ginny wins here, showcase. Four 
Forsworn Paladin. Find the path, foil, and venerated teacher from the list. Cloister Gargoyle. Loyal Warhound. Guardian of Faith Foil Rare. It's our first Foil Rare of the box. The Tarask Art Card. Evolving Wilds Module Showcase. Orcus, Prince of Undeath, and Celestial Unicorn Foil. Silence from the list. Foil Island. Bruinor Battlehammer Showcase. Rogue Class Rare, Bar the Gate Foil. Celestial Unicorn. Sorcerer Class. Xanathar, Guild Kingpin, Mythic number three, and Aberrant Mind Sorcerer Foil. All right, crossing the two thirds threshold here in the box. Do you have our first signed art card, Gelatinous Cube? My Phil Stone. We'll go ahead and get that sleeved on up after we're finished up with this pack. We have Wish, Pixie Guide Foil, and Light Up the Stage. Hey Barry, welcome. Minus, there were Commander decks for the D&D set too. We can see the Commander cards in the Collector Boosters and the Extended Arts. Delich Art Card. Clattering Skeletons. They're like real Commander decks, though. Mini Disc. They're not like the uh, the ones on the hangers. Like the Zendikar ones and whatnot. They're like actual put-together Commander decks. Eye of Vecna. Barrowin of Clan Under. Foil. Rhyme Shield Frost Giant. Adult Gold Dragon. Fain Death Foil. Mary says, I wish you stream on Whatnot. I feel like I've heard of Whatnot before, but I'm not entirely certain what it is. What is it, Mary? I've heard people do breaks on there, but that's that's like all I've heard. I don't, I don't know. Peter, I like Scrabble. Scrabble's pretty fun. We have Red Dragon Borderless. Mind Flare, Showcase Rare. Elter Guard Ranger, Foil. That's funny, that's actually an advertisement for MTGO. Commander Cube in every format in between. I know some of my friends have been playing a lot of the uh, modern and legacy cubes they've been running. But 
It's like, I would like to try out MTGO, but just the uh, the actual interface is so horrendous to me. I don't even want to look at it. I just... Like, if MTGO looked like Arena, everyone and their mom would be playing MTGO, but and I just... I, I, I can't get into it. The actual interface and the way it goes through the phases and stuff, I just... I don't know. It, like, I have a hard enough time with, I feel like, the Pokemon interface just because it's... I, I just not. I don't know. Visually, I can't get behind it. It looks like it's stuck like 10 years ago. We have Underdark Basilisk. Just a Dirt and Rare. Jewed glass foil. I mean, Arena has its problems, especially when there's like 10,000 things on the field and then you can't see because it's all so small. But. Now, anytime I even try to watch like people playing MTGO on like YouTube, I have a hard time following what's going on because it's just, to me, it, it, it doesn't align with how I'd expect it to proceed. Gaddock Teague says MTGO is stuck like 20 plus years ago. Like, I like Arena, but I, I've seen some people play decks that generate, like, a lot of stuff, and then it's, like, the tiles shrink down, and I've seen, like, Arena lag to, like, the nth dimension. Like, it's not perfect by any means, but I wish, like, visually, you know, instead of Watsy putting their budget into making little things that people are just going to recycle, you know, for, like, oh, play MTGO. It's, like, actually just put effort into making MTGO more functional and visually, like, up with the times. Because I feel like if you're trying to convince people, like, oh, play modern. You yeah, sure? Let me try it out. Like, yeah, sign up for this, uh, this, this website. And it's, like, this is what you want me to play on? It's, like, I appreciate how it's been there for years and it, it works really well for what it does. But visually, I just, I can't, I can't watch. I can't watch it. I can't follow it, and I, I don't even want to try it. Michael C. says, plus you pay more for MTGO digital packs than you can buy real cardboard filled packs for. I know you can, like, I like that you can, like, rent decks and whatnot if you want to do, like, online tournaments. You can, instead of buying the cards online, you can just rent them. Like, that's cool. The fact that something like that exists, but it just looks... Acorn says, the arena should have modern, etc. They're trying with historic. But the thing is, is you can't bring modern to arena because then that would signify that MTGO is dead, right? But people spent for years, years. You know, people have really large collections that cost a lot of money on MTGO. Like, what do you do? Do you just port that to if arena just expands to everything? I feel like there's a weird, I don't know. I don't... And I know people talk about that before. It's like, just put just put modern legacy and stuff on Arena. But it's like, then what do you do with MTGO? Like, do you give people tickets to, like, rebuild their collection? What do you do? Because you also lose that functionality of being able to, like, rent a deck from, like, Star City and stuff. So. But Jinkola says, I, I wouldn't play Arena, though. It looks like a kid's game. It's like, I get that. It's the interface isn't for everybody. But for me, like, I if I want to play Magic, I want to have fun. I don't want to have to, like, make sure I click and look at all these things on the screen. Like, I want to actually enjoy it. Like, when I look at MTGO, the first thing that comes to my mind is like, man, that looks like a chore. Like, it's probably not. It's probably just my brain is, like, just doesn't want to deal with it. But I don't know. For me, hmm. I don't know, because I, I even, I, because I've seen some videos and, like, I, I just, I don't understand what people are doing in-game. I just, I don't know. Maybe my brain is too small. That's possible. That's possible. The Manticore Showcase. Black Staff of Waterdeep Rare, Rust Monster Foil, and Muscle Sliver from the list.
Arborea Pegasus Showcase. Gelatinous Cube. You come to a river, foil. All right, getting close to the end here. Two packs remain for Andy. Purple Worm art card. Neverwinter Dryad. Instrument of the Bards. Loth, Spider Queen, Swarming Goblins Foil, and last pack, a safe a welcome. We have a Foil Forest, Black Dragon Borderless, Dancing Sword, Ingenious Smith foil. And that finishes off this box here for Andy. Michael says also Arena doesn't provide for the trading of the MTG TCG cards. Online does, but in order to convert cardboard, you have to make complete sets with a rather small time frame for redemption. That's another thing, too. Like, I feel like that's been a discussion a lot, uh, especially at the start of Arena, is that... You know, you really, if you want to get a lot of packs and stuff, you do either have to spend money or, like, grind super hard. It is possible to be a free player, but, you know, unlike Pokemon, that every pack of Pokemon you buy, you get a digital pack of the same set uh, to add to your collection that way and encourage the game that way. You know, Magic doesn't have that. But in comparison, Magic does have that if you, once you get a play set of something, like, you're capped out from getting, you know, infinite copies of this one card. Pokemon doesn't do that, but then... You can trade cards with people, though. So, there's different. I, I see both ways. I do think Magic would really benefit. Like, yes, it hurts their profits, especially in the current times, if they did put a code card in every pack. But I feel like in the long run, it would help people really get into the digital game and buying other stuff there. So, I really don't know. But, I don't know. Is that, I would like to try other formats. Like, I feel like it'd be fun to, like, maybe... You know, just kind of see what I have in, like, my digital collection and, like, maybe play, like, a commander game. You know, stuff that I wouldn't really want to just show up one night at a commander night with a bunch of people. Like, kind of try it out on my own time. So, I know there is the, the commander light formats. Occasionally, I know there's been, like, special events, like, for singleton format for, like, standard. Like, especially when Throne was around. I don't know if that's, like, a permanent feature in Arena or not, but... I don't know. I do like how they're bringing new stuff. Like, there's Jumpstart 2 coming for Arena. That's digital. So, I don't know. I'm curious to see where Magic takes takes it. You guys heard that MMO already got cancelled, right? The, uh, the, the didn't make it out of beta. It was garbage. But, I don't think that was, that was a different company. I think took the license. I don't think that was a WotC project itself. But I'd rather they put the, uh, like, I feel like MTGO is a really good option. I just, I think there needs to be a lot of improvements visually to attract people to it. So, because I don't know of anybody that didn't already have an MTGO account that looked at MTGO and be like, I want to play that. So, I don't know. John says, enjoying watching your opening. Could you tell my friend Graham to hurry up and play a card? We're playing Commander. Yo, Graham, take your turn already. Slow playing. Slow playing in your commander games. John wants to play. Play a card, please. Acorn says, did it get canceled? It was kind of fun for a bit. Orin says, Ark developed that. Magic Legends, yeah, canceled. It's weird. I saw, like, I, I saw some videos on it and stuff when it first opened for, for beta. And a lot of people just felt like it was it was magic skinned just random just random game with just like magic themes but not actually related to magic at all so i even remember seeing the character designs and people initially when it came out it's like that doesn't the characters don't look like they're the actual related to the colors it's just like oh let's put a wizard in blue the boom blue right it's like mm -mm. kind of but yeah the, the game the game has been gonskis for a little while but 
Acorn says, it wasn't good. It was very bad, but the gameplay was okay. Yeah, but it'd be cool if there was a game. I, I know I'd heard there was, there was going to be like a, what, a magic Netflix show or something. I don't know. And it's like, it's cool that they're trying to expand the brand, but I also feel like it's, you know, solidify what you've got going on already before trying to maybe spread out too much. I don't know. Like, have more than a, like a 14-person development team for Arena. So you guys can work on doing more remastered sets. Instead of just having, like, a couple people having to do all these things. Like, I feel like expanding that stuff instead of trying to spread... I feel like Wizards is spreading themselves too thin a bit. You know, I do like set boosters. I like collector boosters. I like the commander decks. But it is weird that, like, every time a standard set comes out, it's like, oh, here's a commander deck. It makes them not feel special anymore. Yeah. I feel like they're trying to, they're throwing everything at the wall to see what sticks and nothing in particular can get too much of a focus so it all just kind of falls down. I don't think anything's really sticking too much. The Wizards is doing a bit too much. I don't know. Ziggy says they gotta make that money. I know, but if people just try it out and then they cry about it the whole time, it's like, is that really helping? I feel like that's just making people get sour. You know, with like the that that crossover walking dead secret layer you know like all the secret layers and stuff too it feels like everything it's like they don't need to put good reprints in like regular sets anymore because they can just print to demand them via secret layers it's like it's cool but it's also it's like what's the point of buying packs anymore what's the point of buying singles when it's just like i'll just wait for a secret layer i don't know it's weird i like the idea but i feel like there's too many of them they don't feel special anymore I don't know. No. I do really like set boosters, though. I like set boosters. There's just always a ton of products. A ton of products. I'm curious to see how people are going to like bundles now with... With the uh, bundles having set boosts instead of draft boosters. Because initially when set boosters released, I was one of those people like, why are they replacing draft boosters? And then it's like, I do like it, though. I like the chance to get more showcase. I like getting the art card per pack. I like the possibility of getting, you know, like up to four rares per pack. I like it. I like I like set boosters. So I, I've come around. I really do really enjoy set boosters. But I still feel like there's a lot going on. There's a lot. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into this recap here for Andy. I did bloviate a lot during this opening. Andy, I still hope you're able to enjoy it. Do you have our one signed art card of the box? I feel like just about all the Adventures in Forgotten Realms set boosters have just had one art card signed. Uh, we do have the Gelatinous Cube here by Phil Stone. And we did just have one Foil Rare. It was Guardian of Faith. And we did have two Showcase Rares, White and Mind Flayer. Two Showcase Foils, Barrow Inn of Clan Under and Arborea Pegasus. Module showcases, we did have two. Temple of the Dragon Queen and Evolving Wilds. Three borderless cards, green, red, and black dragon. Did find just four mythics here in this set booster. We had Inferno of the Star Mounts, Icing Death, Xanathar, and Lolf. A super adaptoid, welcome. Then from the list, we did get Muscle Sliver, Light Up the Stage, Silence, Venerated Teacher, Boros Challenger, Elvish Archdruid, and Ancient Den. As usual, set boost is a nice hefty pack, or a nice hefty stack of foils. And for our rares, let me go ahead and pan through all of these. But with this, I really I love the art for Gelatinous Cube. But with this panning through of the rares here, it does finish off this opening for Andy. Thank you so much, Andy, for letting me open up some magic for you here on the channel. Really hope you enjoyed the opening and love these new additions to your collection. Feels like it's just a week or two ago that you're asking, like, how to figure out how to play and check out cards and stuff. So I hope you're enjoying your magic journey and love these new additions to your collection. Do have some more set booster boxes coming up later in break number eight. Do we actually have the last two that we had in stock? I thought we had more. Did order another case, but they are currently out of stock on the site because we don't we don't have any at the moment. But we'll have two more set boosters of Adventures in the Forgotten Realms later tonight in break number eight for Sean F. But this wraps up break number five here. Again, 
Thank you so much, Andy, for letting me open these on up for you. Really hope you enjoyed it. But let me go ahead and unsnap myself. When I come back, we'll be getting into a box of Onyx Vintage Football. So that's our one football opening of the night, and that'll be for Jason M. Andy says, thank you, Al. You're welcome, Andy. Like I said, really hope you enjoyed it. But I think I will take two trips here to carry everything out of the way. Like I said, when I come back, our one football box of the night, very quick rip there with Onyx Vintage Football for Jason M. Four cards per box, two on-card autos coming up next. Hang tight, and I'll be right back. All right. All right. I have returned. Hello, everybody. Hope I didn't keep y'all waiting too much. I'm going to go ahead and update that queue number two six here. I'll grab some water. Peter says, finally, something I know football. Do have one box here of Onyx Vintage Football to check out for Jason. Last week, I believe we did find an on card Mac Jones auto, which is pretty nice, as well as a black auto number to five. So, some pretty sweet hits. Last box of Onyx Vintage. But as these boxes are very small, like you could tell, there's also very few cards per box. Two on card autographs, two base cards, and that's it. 
just four cards per box. But Jason is here. So hopefully, well, Jason was here during the end of that magic opening. Hopefully Jason is still here. Let's go ahead and jump on into break number six of the night by snapping us into the corner. Oh, it's not a dress. It's just a really long shirt. It's just a really long shirt. Not a dress, Sarah. Crisis averted. Crisis averted. I'm just wearing flip-flops. The Florida lifestyle. All right, here we go. Jason's hoping for Herbert. Justin Herbert is in this product. Haven't seen any, but would be a wonderful pull. So let's go ahead and get on into this box. There's our pack. All right, here we go. Let's see what we find. Hey, Valkyrie, welcome. Starting off with a Brevin Jordan base. Then our first auto is Trey Lance. Jason, you're getting some nice quarterbacks here. Not Herbert. We have a Trey Lance auto in green. In no, the card's just green. The ink is blue, so that's a regular. I was going to say green auto, but just green border. Tiffany says, still cute. Where did you buy it from? I've actually had this for quite a long time. I think I got it at TJ Maxx maybe four years ago. No, uh, it's not it's not new or anything. I just I was looking at my closet and I was like, I've only worn this on the channel like once or twice for some reason. But kicking off here with a Trey Lance auto. Easy. <laughs> then we do have a green auto though. This one's actually green ink. Cameron sample here. That's cool. What is the green? Green is fifty or less. The, green, the ink color determines how much of it is out there. I know Trey Lance was one of the quarterbacks we were hunting in earlier football products. Now, I haven't been able to open up football in a while like we didn't even get to open up gold standard here on the channel this time i know we were looking for lance herbert or not not herbert this year but lance lawrence and some other names from this year's draft class quarterback wise it's very cool last week mac jones this week trey lance definitely some quarterback pulls here for jason so that is blue Blue autos being to 400 or less. The blue ink. And we did have that green ink here. Cameron Sample to 50 or less. And then for our two base cards, did have Brevin Jordan and Hunter Long. And with that, that does it here. Oh, there is a bit of lag. Thank you, Acorn and Steven, for letting me know. That does it here for this box of Onyx Vintage for Jason. Sue says, surprised by those Trey Lance auto prices on eBay, 150, 100 to 150. So some pretty nice pulls. Like I said, Jason, I was right. And then, and then never, no one else in the chat reacted. I'm like, am I wrong? Is this not who I'm looking for? Yeah, Bounty Hunter says Lance, Lawrence, Jones, and Fields. I Because I know I was sleeving up. I was sleeving up collegiate uniform Trey Lance base cards. So... So yeah, apparently these vintage, even just the Onyx vintage autos, 100 to 150 on Lance. Impressive. Impressive. Thank you, Sue Ann, for looking that up for us. But that does it here for this box of Onyx vintage football. Very quick openings. And again, another rookie quarterback this week for Jason. But thank you so much, Jason, for letting me open up some more football for you here. Really hope you enjoyed it and love these new additions to your collection. I'm going to go ahead and unsnap myself there. Very quick break number six. Valkyrie asks if I'm doing any Pokemon tonight. Not tonight, but possibly in a couple weeks with Evolving Skies. Our allocations aren't as bad as usual, but I'm not sure if it's coming in waves or not. So, we'll see. We'll see. So, maybe in a couple weeks might have some new Pokemon. We do have in store, I think, a couple Marnie collections and then the new Calyrex V-Boxes. But those aren't really... Those aren't really good for the website because you have the oversized cards and whatnot. But that does it here. So Jason says, thanks everyone in the alley. Thank you, Jason, for letting me open this on up for you. But very quick break number six when I return. I'm actually going to take a quick snack break. And then when I return, we'll be opening up two more boxes of the Seven Deadly Sins. 
Those will be for Adam. I did do a personal break of a box for Adam yesterday, and he's back for two boxes live tonight. So those two boxes right there coming up next. I'm actually just going to go ahead and grab them since, since this thing here is blocking the view of the shelf. But let me move this out of the way. Like I said, we'll take a snack break, and I'll be back with more Seven Deadly Sins. Hang tight, everybody, and I'll see you shortly. I have returned. Mark says, how does Yu-Gi-Oh! Dawn of Majesty allocations look? Uh, I think we're getting two cases. Two cases from Southern. Not sure on GTS. Not sure yet. Ooh, Sarah, I see you like boots. Is Tiffany like boots too? Is that the, is that the context I need? I like boots too, but... Being in Florida, I own boots and I never wear them. I don't own like fancy boots, but I have boots. It's just, I just never wear. I never get to wear them. Valkyrie says, "Do you guys sell Digimon? We, if we can get it in, yes. We haven't gotten any of the new set yet. Not sure if it just because our our GTS order of the week didn't ship at all. Not sure if there's any Digimon in there. Not sure what's going on with that, but." We, we do have very minimal Digimon. We can't get quantity on Digimon just quite yet. Sarah says, I'm weird. I love cards, video games, and shopping. I mean, that sounds like a good mix to me. Tiffany loves shoes. Shoes are fun. I have so many shoes, but I only wear one. I have one pair of shoes that I wear, and then just a bunch of other shoes. But all right, let me go ahead and update that Q number to seven. Valkyrie says, I'm just asking because I thought that the Digimon TCG died out. 
I don't know. I don't know how it's doing, but I believe Anthony is most likely, if anything's going on with Digimon, Anthony is single-handedly keeping Digimon afloat. And I think Sarah would agree with me on that. Anthony R goes super hard on Digimon. I remember Sarah had actually sent me pictures of their house after the first release, and there's just rooms full of boxes of Digimon. So, if anybody is keeping Digimon alive, it's Anthony. <laughs> Robert says, picked up a gift edition uh, MTG D&D bundle today. Love the box art. I don't think we've actually gotten any of those in. I saw that they were on the website. I don't know if we maybe missed ordering them or anything, but... I have seen the product pictures and that it does look gorgeous. I hope you have some great pulls from that box, Robert. Sarah says, I got to raid your closet alley, putting outfits together for you. And Sarah says, oh my, OMG, yes, he does. Anthony single-handedly keeps Digimon afloat. And the new dude with the $5 super chat says, you're going overtime this week. Please tip your hostess from the newest simp with the little lizard. Thank you, Noogie. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And Sue Ann says, Allie sold the Lily King 101 this week. Nice. Nice. Nice one, Sue Ann. I hope. Hope it was very nice for you. And Anthony says, I feel judged. It's fine. That's fine. We're not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying. If any, if Digimon was on its way out, you would single-handedly keep it alive. Sarah says, I'm like, if all bills are paid, he can play. What about paying the bills with Digimon? Big brain. But all right, the queue number has been updated. Let's go ahead and jump on into these two boxes here for Adam by snapping us into the corner. All right, here we go. And again, thank you so much, Noogie, for that super chat. Really do appreciate it. All right, our first promo of box one. Well, our first promo here is SD Bon. All right, I have the handy dandy scissors. Let's get started. We have a rare Elizabeth sacrificing herself. King and Oslo, away from the bustle. The Real Deal says, what's your number one sports card to collect? If you mean like type of sports card, I, I like collecting hockey the most out of the sports, just because I, I love hockey. I do have a handful of baseball cards, mainly sent in from viewers, very gracious, like raised cards and things like that. I have a, personally, a very small Otani collection. Double R, Meliodas to the rescue. And then I actually have a handful of basketball cards, handful of football cards. I actually also have a handful of rugby cards all the way from Australia. So that's cool. But just, just hockey mainly for me for sports. Do, do, do. We have Diane, Childhood. Actually, I think early this week, I did finally finish off my day with the cup sets. I was just missing the Sergachev, and I won, I finally won an auction for under $30 on the Sergachev, and I was like, all right. So I, I have all 10 of the day with the cups now from Extended Series. Double R, Merlin, Surprise Reveal. Dane says, hi, Allie Maddie is watching you today. She loves Minecraft. Minecraft is fun. I've never played it myself, but I've actually watched other people play Minecraft. I just like games where you can build stuff. Like, Roller Coaster Tycoon was my jam when I was in elementary school because the school computers had it. It was super fun. Gother, wielder of harlots. Mm -hmm. 
Gila switching sides, rare. Sue Ann says, I only actually have a handful of sports cards. However, you have a lot of really cool sports cards, though. Mike Trout, Sketch, Dual Auto. There's some pretty sweet stuff. Double R Elaine facing a demon. Hauser switching sides. Rare Gother, True Identity. Oh man, I'm seeing some lag again. Rude. Ah. Oh. Best of luck with that, Sue Ann. This is the Trout Sketch going on eBay tomorrow. Man, that's some pretty bad lag. Steven says a little bit. That's more than a little. Ah. We were good for a while, weren't we? Or was I just too distracted pooping on MTGO during that set booster box to notice? I thought we were doing well. Darn UFC. I just That's just my default blame now. Just blame the UFC. All right, let's continue here, see how it looks. Do you have a double R, Elizabeth Druid Priestess? Gother holding his head up. I did not the real deal. A lot of people actually were asking me. I'm wondering if I should plan on going next year, just because I, I was really surprised by people asking and then being, you know, a little bit disappointed that I wasn't there. So I feel like it could be fun. So I'll I'll look into it for next year, but I, I didn't go this year. Yeah, I think the national is in New New Jersey this upcoming year. We have rare Meliodas hypnotized. Elaine guarding the spring. Icrum says, I'll look for the large crowd of Alley fans and come say hi. And then the real deal says New Jersey next year. Might be fun. Good little getaway. Could probably like do some vlog videos. Jason says there's a lot of stealing at the National. I've heard some people in the chat mentioning it that there's been a lot of theft this year at the National. Which Bossman used to do. Bossman's done a lot in his life. And I honestly wonder how he's fit everything in because Bossman's like not that old. And by not that old, I mean, I, Boss Man's not even 50. Like, that, I, it sounds worse than I'm saying. It's like I'm implying Boss Man's old. But he's done so much stuff. He has so many stories that you'd think Boss Man's like 80. But Boss Man used to do comic book conventions and set up tables and stuff. And just insane amount of theft at conventions. That's why he just doesn't want to do it anymore. Because it's just like having to, like, watch people constantly. It's like, how do you steal a comic book from, like, behind a counter when you're standing there? And it's like, well, people look away and people are very opportunist 
a lot of opportunistic people at conventions. But so he just doesn't mess with it anymore. But Bossman has a lot of stories. If you guys ever run into Bossman, just ask him. Just ask him about volleyball. Ask him about ask him about Scientologist experiences in Clearwater. <laughs> it's got some. Bossman's almost been abducted by Scientologists a few times. That's one of my favorite stories. TS just subscribed. Thank you, TS. The boss man was like on a date with some like hot chick, and she's like, "Come into, come in here." And he was walking in this weird building, and she's like, "Come down this hallway." And it was like a weird Scientology thing, and he had to like run away. He's like, "Oh, I almost could have got kidnapped." I'm like, "How did it get to that point? How do you let it get that far?" <laughs> He's got some crazy stories, but Ryan says hello. Hey, Ryan. Jason says, yeah, I watched this other channel that talks about that. One dude got arrested for stealing a lot of cards. Yeah, so I'm not surprised to hear about a lot of theft, but I wonder if it's just a lot, maybe more than usual this year, because people are antsy. You know, they're like, I haven't been to a con in a while. I need to get out all of my thieving energy at once. So, I don't know. But, Noogie says, that's how it goes. Valkyrie says, Allie, do you have any stories? I am very boring. No. Here's a cool story. I was here in this room most of the, for most of the time, but I was here yesterday for 17 hours. I came in at noon and I left at 5 a.m. That's a story. That's like the best I got where like you just feel sorry for me. Like, why do you work so much? I don't know. I have nothing else to do with my life, you know. <laughs> so... Nuki's like, not saying it happened to me, but that's the way it goes sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, I have no I have no interesting stories. But maybe one day I'll have cool stories. Oh, I have a story, but like you guys remember that time I opened Box Series Top Series 2 and it had a Lubop dual auto and a Mike Trout sketch? Like that's my story. And it's like, yeah, we know. We saw your highlight video. Shut up. Move on. Steven says, year one is full of stories. I guess. I just feel like all my stories have to do with work. So. Donnie says, at least you saw all of Loki season one. That's correct. And I managed to dodge. I managed to dodge spoilers the entire time. Proud of myself. Got it done in a timely manner. Hey, look, we have a Hawk SR foil. I like the flowers. This flower right here has texture. The ones up here have texture. These are like kind of uh, matte foiling. But those have texture. Bounty Hunter says, and you have your nugget story in Anaheim. That's true. So when I was in, I was in ninth grade. I, I went to nationals for FBLA for spreadsheet applications. Or no. Spreadsheet was the year next after. It was actually just a random... I, I My high school had certification tests for Microsoft Office, and somehow there was they checked my scores for Excel, and I was one of the top in the country, and I got invited to take a, a the, the master exam for Excel in a competition. So that's what I went for. And I didn't eat anything all day. I didn't have time to eat breakfast, and then there was an overlay in Texas, and I didn't have time to eat, and then we got to California, and then the... You know, the teacher was like, oh, we got to do all this stuff. And you guys, we got to go do this. He wanted to do touristy stuff. So, like, couldn't just hang out at the hotel. So, I didn't eat, like, all day. All day. So, first thing I did where, you know, we got to split up and walk around the, the Hollywood Walk of Fame or whatever. Is I found this giant McDonald's and I ate 40 chicken nuggets. That's a story. That's true. All right, so I'm going to amend my statement. All my stories are work or school related. I, I don't really have, I don't know if I have anything fun outside of that. And then Real Deal asks, what's my Instagram? My Instagram is actually linked in the description down below for easy access. Yeah, 40 McDonald's chicken McNuggets. I did not feel good after, no, but I was very hungry and it was very cheap. Steven says I have plenty of time for stories. I'm still a youngin. Oh, 
Hawk, passion for scraps, rare. Oh, it's a computer. It's the um the certification exam. It was the master certification, which I I have the full Microsoft suite. I have I have like three or four different individual master certifications. I have Microsoft Office as a whole for twenty. 17. I think I have 2019 Excel on its own, regular and master. I have. I only know how to use it, but I, I passed the uh, certificate. I passed all my tests that I've taken for certifications. They actually, what they, the FBLA one, iCrom, what it was is they just used the score from the certification tests. That's what it was. You just took the regular certification test and it ranked you. Terry says, hey, this is Michelle and Terry from Myrtle Beach. Thought we'd check in and you're doing a great job. Michelle said she loves your shirts. Oh, thank you, Michelle. And it's great to hear from you too. Hope you are doing well as well. We have Double Art King, Wielder of Chastifold. I did place on my exam too. That does it for our first box. I talked about Microsoft Excel throughout the whole first box here for Adam. Just one foil there. Did have Hawk Confusion SR. Noogie says Joel ate 50 nuggets once. Wow. Wow. Chavo fan, did you at least have some sort of sauce with those nuggets? I was walking along the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I was just straight up just eating nuggets out of the bag. I wasn't I wasn't doing anything. Like I, I didn't I wasn't sitting down or anything, so Beamers asked if I did V look up my rankings. No, I it was just done automatically. I don't it, it doesn't tell you when you're when you finish what your score is. It just tells you whether you passed or failed. So I don't know how they got the scores from it, but it was through the program that does the test that ranked everybody. So promo box two is SD King. It's nice to see that we're getting different promos for those who are opening up multiple boxes. It's always awkward when you open, like how we opened in the case opening, three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back SD, SD Elizabeths. Hey, Brian, welcome. We have King for a special someone. Double R, Meliodas to the rescue. Double R, Elizabeth, Druid Priestess. Peter says, I want to see Allie B eating 40 chicken nuggets on a stream. <sighs> McDonald's doesn't taste good to me anymore. Even when I get McDonald's, I'm just like, eh, I was hungry and I, my brain said, let's get McDonald's, but I didn't actually want McDonald's. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to even attempt that. I'll eat 10 nuggets and regret it now from McDonald's. Now, if that was 40 Chick-fil-A nuggets, count me in. McDonald's nuggets... Five years ago, I would have said yes. Current Allie says no. No. No chicken McNugget competitions. Go third, true identity. Oh, Steven said we're lagging pretty bad, so I'm going to take a little rest break. Get some, well, my water's almost empty, but finish off this water. Wendy's Nuggets. I do like Wendy's Nuggets. Icron says, did you have any fries? Nope, just just four ten pieces is what I ordered. Space Ghost says, I strangely relate. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Sometimes I'm just like, oh, I'm gonna get to McDonald's. I feel like McDonald's. And then I bite into it and I'm like, I don't know why. 
I thought this would taste better. I, I always remember McDonald's tasting better than it actually does. The only exception to that is hash browns and egg McMuffins are always wonderful. But, like, McNuggets, the fries, it's like, you get it, and I'm like, eh. Ah. B-Day says, good night, Allie, be good. You too, B-Day, have a great night. I don't know. I, I do love Egg McMuffins and stuff, though. Steven said, oof. I'm a, uh, oof to the McDonald's or oof to the stream? I don't know what's going on. YouTube is still giving me green for excellent connection. So. So I wonder if it's like a error on the server's part because it's showing the connection's great. Great strength. Jason asked if I like mozzarella stick. It depends. It depends. Some mozzarella sticks are just great and some are trash. Like one time I had pizza delivered on from Pizza Hut and I was like on the website. I was like, oh, Pizza Hut has mozzarella sticks. That sounds good. They were not good. But like farm fresh or whatever the frozen ones, like farm sticks or something. I don't know. Those are good. And I like the TGI Fridays frozen ones. McMuffins when they're cooked right. That's true. I've had some egg McMuffins where I'm like, eee. but that's not the average McMuffin. But yeah, there, there, there's been, that's true. It's not always. I've had some pretty rough egg McMuffins. Sarah says, OMG, oh, yes, Allie, I like the same egg McMuffins and hash browns, pies, and strawberry smoothie. Jason says, Arby's are the best. You know, I've never actually had anything from Arby's ever. I'm not a burger person, so I'm just, eh. But if Arby's has good mozzarella sticks, I might have to go find an Arby's. iCrumb says, McDonald's hash browns are great. Just tried Dunkin' and Wawa hash browns recently. Would not get either again. You know what's oddly good? Especially at like 11 o'clock at night after work? It's the Wawa chicken strips and a medium macaroni. That's that's good food. You know, people told me, like my parents be like, no, Wawa's good. They have good subs. I'm like, it's a gas station. How good could it be? My friends are like, they got good chicken nuggets. I'm like, how good could it be? It's a gas station. But then you try it, and it's like, well, this is actually good. I'm surprised. Legitimately surprised that it tasted good. Potato Chip says, we have the meats. Arby's. Yeah, I've never actually been to an Arby's. So maybe, maybe one day. Maybe one day. Shannon says, Allie, have you been buying any sealed product these days? No, I've just been buying singles. Like, this actually came in the mail today. And then... And then the other one, number to five, I found... I found another one today, and I was like, this seems super cheap. So I actually picked up both of these. I have seen the diamonds out of 23 auction for more than I bought both of the ones out of five. So... I'm almost finished off, actually, with my Black Diamond. I've been picking off singles I need. Like, I picked off the remaining singles I needed for the Day with the Cup set. I was missing Tyler Johnson and then Sergachev. I picked the, the, the last one I needed was Sergachev, so I got that uh, semi-recently. And then, so now I'm actually just down to the two one-of-one one exquisites from Black Diamond, which I just, I'm not going to find those anyways. It doesn't, those doesn't, it doesn't really count. And then the, uh, the two of those out of 23. And the can with the $15 super chat says, I'm back but tired, going to head to bed. Pull some cool stuff for me, please. You do a great job, Allie. Here's some nuggets on me. Good night, all. Hey, take care of the can. Rest up. And of course, this video will be here for you when you wake up. I hope to find you some awesome pulls from that Strixhaven box later tonight. Take care of the can, and we'll catch you next time. And thank you again, of course, for that super chat. Really appreciate it. We have Gil Thunder, Smile of Relief, Rare. Noogie says, go to a fish concert alley, you'll get to be famous. I don't know about that. I've only ever been to two concerts in person. Yeah, two concerts in person. We have Rare Elizabeth sacrificing herself. It's 
Double R Lane facing a demon. Meliodas, Ultimate Blow. Mark asks, what concerts did I go to? They're actually both in Atlanta. I saw a Ravi concert and Super M. Where I got, I, I managed to finagle myself into front row. This is a weird experience. Great though, great. I guess that's another story that I have. All right, so I guess not all my stories are work and school related. They just seem to be the majority. Oh, we're in Lag City again. It's because you guys asked for a longer stream tonight. The Lag said, sure thing, I can do that. Valkyrie says, I've never been to a concert. I hadn't been to a concert until 2019. So... In terms of world events, that's actually really recent for me. Jason says, Ravi, I've seen him. Ooh, really, Jason? Really? No, Ravi. Ravi is K-pop. K-pop rap. Yeah, different Ravi. Ravi in all caps is how he's, he does his name, yeah. But. And then Ravi was supposed to have a concert again in Atlanta, and then it got canceled, you know, last year early last year and I was going to go to that too but it, it didn't happen so it was supposed to be his world tour and I was like I'm going to go back and then it didn't happen so. Valkyrie says school related stories I'd like to hear some well the FBLA one counts I count that as school because it was for a is a field trip to nationals a field trip so ew alright YouTube says warning we're in the yellow so we're going to chill out for a little bit Rotato Chips says, I saw Green Day and Blink-182 back in 2000. And Leo says, Kiss was my first concert. Noogie says, if you find an OzFest 2001 CD, you can hear me scream. Oh, different Ravis. All different Ravis. Ah. Jason, I thought we had a connection. No. Oh, wow. Girls and Boys Toys says, Hi, Allie. Bianca Maxman and I are watching you from Baltimore tonight. We went to the Rays and Orioles game. Hey, I hope you guys are having a blast. Have a nice little vacation there. All right. I'm not seeing lag, even though YouTube's giving me the yellow, so I'm going to continue. I haven't found any foils yet here in box two for Adam. Just quite yet. We have a double R Merlin surprise reveal. Merlin superior skills. We have Gila switching sides, rare. Hendrickson, Grandmaster. Diane, wielder of Gideon. Bond, ready to kill. 
Hey, card deal, welcome. Diane, childhood, rare. Double R King, wielder of chastity fold. All right, getting down to the wire here at the end of box two. Second to last pack. Do have a foil here. SR, Elizabeth, options for disguise. This is either the most expensive SR or the second most expensive SR in the set. Waifu tax, as one may say here. Elizabeth, options for disguise. Definitely nice pull here. Second to last pack for Adam. We'll see. We can find a second foil here in this final pack. Can we get back-to-back -back foils? Let's go ahead and jump on into it. DJ said we had a little lag there. Ugh. I really hope it clears up. Really not sure what the issue is here tonight. But final pack for Adam. You have Gother, Mind Manipulator. So, did happen to find two single foil boxes here for Adam. Let's go ahead and take a look at those SRs. We haven't actually found any triple R's yet tonight. Do have Elizabeth options for disguise SR from box number two. And then the Hawk Confusion SR from box number one. Our two promos in the boxes were SD Bond and SD King. And let's go through our double R's as well. We had King, Wielder of Chastity Full, Merlin, Surprise Reveal, Elaine facing a demon. Elizabeth, the Druid Priestess, Meliodas, to the rescue, another king, Elizabeth, Druid Priestess, and it looks like we did find a box with similar collation, did we actually find exacties? Yeah, we actually did find exact collation here between both boxes on the double R's, so definitely not bad with those two Merlins, I believe Merlin is the most expensive double R as well. But we did have King, Elizabeth, Elaine, Merlin, and that Meliodas to the rescue. And two each of those here. So half a playset worth for Adam. But with that, that does finish off these two boxes here for Adam. Thank you so much for letting me open up even more Seven Deadly Sins here for you on the channel. Really hope you enjoy the opening and love these new additions to your collection. Now I did ship out your other package yesterday. So these will of course come separately. I hope everything arrives very quickly and in excellent condition. But do have a little more Seven Deadly Sins close to the end, break number 14 tonight. We do have one more box. But from here on out, do have Yu-Gi-Oh! Final Fantasy, Magic Gathering, a sprinkling of Onyx Vintage Baseball, and then that one other Weiss box. A lot of Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh! coming up next. In particular, two Adventures in the Forgotten Realms set boosters for Sean F., are the next openings here in the stream. So let me go ahead and unstack myself again. Big thanks to Adam for letting me open this on up for him. Really hope you enjoyed it and love the new additions to your collection. Very cool Elizabeth SR there in that second box. So let me go ahead and move this on out of the way and when I return, like I said, for Sean, we'll be getting into those two set boosters. Let's see, did have a pretty light mythic box earlier for Andy. Hopefully we can find some more up next here for Sean. All right, I have returned. So this should be our longest break of the night. Two set boosters, 
Sack boosters tend to just take quite some time for me in general, as I really do. If I didn't separate out the commons and uncommons, it would go by much more quickly, but I, I like having my piles, you know, the way that I feel like they should be. So let me go ahead and update that queue number. Hopefully we are past all of this lag. Hopefully we're past it. I want to be past it, so let's make it so. Spectrum. But all right, Sean, if you're here, go ahead and make some noise. Happy to be able to open up some Adventures in the Forgotten Realms for you live. I really hope you're watching, of course, since you weren't able to watch those other boxes and did have me record them instead. So let's go ahead and see what we can find here. Hoping for some nice mythic pulls. Like I said a little earlier for Andy, the box was pretty light on mythics. We only actually found four total. Still some nice cards, but we'd love to see more mythics here. So let's jump on into these two boxes by snapping us into the corner. Let's get started. And like I mentioned, these actually were, we only had two left in stock. It was, it was odd. And I was like, oh, we should have had more, but I guess they just sold in store and they were never taken off the online inventory. So I did order another case that should be here later this week, but currently it's out of stock on the website. All right. Good night, Bounty Hunter. Take care. We'll catch you next time. Sarah says it's a little laggy, but not that big of a deal. I, it's not, you know, I mean, the world's not ending with lag, but I just want everybody to have crispy, clean visual of their breaks, and it's it's just frustrating. This is like, I was trying my best to make the best experience for you all, and like, that's something I can't control, so it's like... So. Sarah says, if you're alive in the 70s, raise your hand. Not me. But all right, pack one here for Sean. Let's jump on into it. Space Ghost Dave says, good luck. Pull that Tiamat. There's like shrink wrap dust on this box. Hopefully magic's not turning into Pokemon. Pokemon shrink wrap drives me insane. Uh, you touch it and it's like, you've touched Pokemon. You must live with the knowledge you've touched Pokemon for the rest of your life because it just doesn't want to come off. I don't understand. Starting off with a mythic here, Zariel, Archduke of Avernus, and Old Gnawbone, Borderless Mythic. We are off to a great start. Bull Strength, Foil, and the MTGO token advertisement that started my giant rant earlier. We have a Swamp Foil, Null Hunter Showcase, Long Rest, that's what I'm doing post stream, Contact Other Plane Foil, Raise your hand if you're born in 1997, woo! Woo! Mimic Showcase. Adult Gold Dragon. Boots of Speed. Hey, Spicy McNuggy, welcome. We have a borderless white dragon. Vorpal sword. And green dragon foil. Sunscape battle mage from the list. Bear. <laughs> Mile High says, Ali, I was out of college in 97. Hey, look at that. Look at that, bruh. Look at it. 
do 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 box is over can i just stop can i just pack everything up in a medium flat rate and call tonight do i really need to keep opening do i yes i do all right well borderless foil tia mat is easy duh what else am i supposed to do right John said I was 1.5 when he graduated high school. See, I know you guys are always ripping to me. Be like, Al, you make me feel old. Well, you guys make me feel like a small child. <laughs> I feel like an infant. Scott says, Borderless Foil Team at and a set booster. Wow. Yeah, it, it's great. Set boosters have had some really cool stuff. Like, we actually... the. Before we finally found one in, like, our second-to-last Strixhaven Collector Booster total, we, we found a foil Demonic Tutor, the Japanese alternate art, in a set booster. And then never saw one, like, in, like, almost 20, 20 set, uh, Collector Boosters. So, set, bo set boosters can have some, like, surprising just, just bangers. Just be like, wow, I was just looking for rares, but I found a foil Borderless team at Sick. They're like, oh, sick, I found a food chain. Oh, wow, I found a $50 Kozilek. How'd that happen? Like, I like set boosters are cool. It's like a mystery bag. Goblin Javelin here. Varys, Silvery Moon Ranger, and Demolich. Gelatinous Cube, Showcase Rare. Clattering Skeletons. We have a Foil Mountain. Direwolf Prowler. Minion of the Mighty, Arcane Investigator. Riz says, older people made us feel like kiddos too. One day you could do it to others full circle. <laughs> Dibley says, I'm 31 and mentally feel like I'm 65. Hey, Marissa, welcome. We have the Zariel art card. Shashra, Death's Whisper. Tasha's Hideous Laughter and Dragon Disciple. Boulat Showcase. Forsworn Paladin and Arborea Pegasus Foil. Lurking Roper. Oh, that's a green dragon. All right. Instrument of the Bards. I was like, is that a foil gnawbone? But no, it's different. It is a foil green dragon. Borderless. No, Peter, I was born in 97. But we do have a module showcase here, Evolving Wilds. Asmodeus. No comment. 
in a Dryad Arbor. Displacer Beast. Delina, Wild Mage, Skullport Merchant. I know, Scott. It's ridiculous. Borderless Foil Team Mat and then a regular Team Mat. We have our signed art card of the box. This is Horde Robber by Anna Pavliva. Sean says, Why I'm so drunk, I'm seeing double team hats. Oh no, Sean, your eyes are deceiving you. What's going on? Oh, oh, oh. is it borderless? Is it regular? Oh, oh. Sean at home is like, What's happening? <laughs> There's too many team hats on screen. Someone help. <laughs> Steven says that's mean and Sarah just laughed. Treasure chest. You come to the Knoll camp. And Sean says, I'm not that drunk. Pixie Guide. Fighter Class. Minion of the Mighty Foil Rare. Jason said, don't make him puke. Kalane, reclusive painter showcase. Hobgoblin, bandit lord, and loathsome troll showcase foil. Celestial Unicorn. Hey, Vanessa, welcome. I'm a bit tired, but I'm having a blast here tonight as usual. True Polymorph and Zombie Ogre, Goblin Assassin. We found a ton of awesome stuff. We saw a Trey Lance auto a little earlier out of football. Uh, we just pulled double Tiamats here, including this Borderless Foil. We saw... Is yeah, somewhere between six hundred and sixteen hundred dollar Lewis Hamilton refractor out of Chrome. Had some cool stuff out of the Formula One Chrome. It's been a blast. Been a blast tonight. Not too many breaks in terms of quantity, but it's been it's been good. It's been good so far. Purple worm. Nadar, Selfless Paladin, Lair of the Hydra, Module Showcase, and you see a Guard Approach. Rhyme Shield Frost Giant. Blue Dragon Foil. Moving on. Moving on. The Tarask Art Card. A Foil Forest. Arborea Pegasus. Teleportation Circle. Cave of the Frost Dragon, and you find a Cursed Idol. And a 
a dark basilisk. Westgate Regent and Wan T Fangblade foil haunted plate mail from the list. All right, down to the last third of box one. Cridal of Baldur's Gate. Grazalax, Lithid Scholar, and a Foil Mythic, Icing Death, Frost Tyrant. We have Demolinch, Art Card. Ginny Winseer. Treasure Vault and Foil Spiked Pit Trap. Baleful Beholder. Ochre Jelly. And you find the villain's layer foil victimized from the list. Foil Swamp. Hama Pashar Showcase. Uh, we have a damaged circle of the Moon Druid. Very odd there. Wonder maybe that got caught on a sorter. Very odd marks. Very odd. Guardian of Faith, Volo, Guide to Monsters, Showcase Rare. In the Dar, Selfless Paladin, Showcase Foil Rare. All right. All righty then. Owl Bear Showcase. I have Vecna, and you see a pair of goblins foil. Blet. Zalto, Fire Giant Duke, Under Dark Basilisk Foil. I, did, I kept it inside the uh, the common pile just because it seemed like a kind of unique damage points. I'll let Sean decide what he wants to do with it. Goblin Javelinier. Fear of Annihilation, Icing Death, Frost Tyrant Mythic, and Hive of the Eye Tyrant, Foil Rare. Green Dragon, Borderless. Loyal Warhound, Spoils of the Hunt. Ranger class, Vampire Spawn. And last back here of box one. Uh, did I open 2020 Donner's Football? Uh, 2020, yes, actually had a decent amount of Donner's Football. That's where we found our first Joe Burrow auto last year. Uh, if you go on the channel and you search for 2020 Donner's Football, all those videos should pop up. Really like the canvas texture on some of the inserts. We have Oswald Fiddlebender. 
And Memnite from the list is our last card of box one. So let me move that out of the way. And let's tidy up these piles. Still one more set booster to go here for Sean. Then, of course, we'll get into our recap. But it's a very, very impressive first box. Regular old knob bone, regular Tiamat, borderless old knob bone, borderless foil Tiamat. Need I say more? Crazy pulls here from this first box. All right, where's our second? Here it is. Uh, what size did I use for the patch cards on Donruss? I was looking to see if we had any singles left, Jason. I don't remember. I, I I would think anywhere between 100 and 180 point, depending on the card thickness. I believe the low numbered patch, the numbered ones, whereas patches were 180s. But for not thick cards, it could have been 100, could have been 130. I honestly don't remember. I probably mentioned it in one of the videos we found patches. But as we, we did have one, not super recently, but in like the past maybe two months, we did sell a, a relic that we still had from last year's Donruss. I was hoping we might have had another, but it's not in the spot where it would have been. So I, I unfortunately don't know, Jason. If you have the card in hand, though, I know there's... I think you can actually Google. I think BCW has like a, a sheet... Like, I don't know if it's on their website or you might be able to pull it up and like you're just Googling and looking at photos for like top loader thickness and you can hold the card up to your computer screen and see what size it is. But top of my head, I don't know. Sorry. Nuki says, think USA got this. And then says, uh-oh. I'm assuming something happened. Let's go USA, get the gold. In I don't know what event it is tonight. What, what Olympics are y'all watching right now? Direwolf Prowler. Okay. Okay. Spike Pit Trap Foil and Noggle Heads Maze. We just started off with our third old Gnawbone here for Sean and a Borderless Mordekainen. Celestial Unicorn. Treasure Vault. Planner Ally Foil. A oh, Women's Basketball. Okay. Nabraham says, Gnawbone is just raining cash tonight. That's for sure. I wonder if we can find as many Tiamats as we can find old Gnawbones. I mean, box one had two of each. And we already found one gnaw bone here, so hopefully. Sorcerer class and Zalto Fire Giant Duke foil. I'm seeing some lag, so let me hold off for a second.
Mad Axe Break says, Hi, Ali. Just saw you're alive and just wanted to say hi. Have a great night. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing well and you have a great night as well. Pat Terrific says, D&D has so many piles. Yes, that is just magic set boosters now in a nutshell with your different showcase variants, the pile for the list cards. Uh, you have a ton of different foils, your tokens, your basics, and just all different kinds of stuff. But yeah, especially with the not one, but two types of showcase cards and the borderless in the D&D definitely makes for a lot of piles. A lot of piles. Nadar, Selfless Paladin. And you find the villain's lair. Convenient. Layer of the Hydra art card. You have a Mimic. That looks like a foil Zariel, borderless. Back-to-back -back boxes with borderless mythic foils. So we now have a Zariel and a Tiamat borderless foil down here. Module Showcase, Temple of the Dragon Queen. Guardian of Faith, Manticore, Foil. And there's another one of those weirdly dented cards. Not as severe as that one green common, but still. Come on, wizards. Lair of the Hydra, Inferno of the Star, the Star Mounts, and Underdark Basilisk. Noogie says, try saying his name, Allie. Wally. Zerzbak. Zbriak. Zerbiak. That's what I'm going with, Zerbiak. Like Scissor. And then Biak. Mark says, hello, Allie. How are you this fine evening? I am definitely a bit tired, but having a blast. Having a blast. Icrum says, I got it. Good job, me. Shout out to myself. Yeah. Volo, Guide to Monsters. Quest for the Holy Relic. Cave of the Frost Dragon. This is a pretty miscut foil. Nice. Nice miscut there. You can even see the print dots. Misprint. I love the Niv face emoji. It's so wonderful. Evolving Wilds. Rogue Class. Another miscut foil. I'm going to start a miscut pile. We actually had a decent amount of miscuts in this box. Nice. With the print dots, too. 
Acorn Acid, these are the last two boxes of the case. I They were just two boxes I found on a shelf on the bottom, bottom shelf of the shop. So I really don't know what case they came from. I was just like, I can't find any set boosters. I was running around here, so I went over to the shop, and it was hard to find over there, too. So I'm glad we had two. I was worried I'd have to message Sean and be like, we don't got set boosters. Sorry. But we found two. Exactly two. Mountain foil. Westgate Regents. A not miscut foil. Jason asks, who is Niv? Niv is my lizard who is under here somewhere. There she is. It's also Niv Face. Channel member exclusive emoji. Just Niv Face. And then you get... Ah. That's how the... Ah emoji. You can get that on screen. I love it. Part of me just wants to take a bunch of pictures of Niv and just like executive decision, you guys are just getting a bunch of Niv emojis. All right, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. We're having a Florida moment.
escaped. It escaped under the shelf. So, I'm going to be on watch. I don't like this, though. This is not fun. Not fun. This is not fun. All right, we are ready to continue here. This looks like a pack. Let's resume. Acorn, it's Florida. It's Florida. We have Grazalax, a lithid scholar. Evan Death, Dracolich. We have another mythic here. And then a, another miscut foil. Jaded Cell Sword and transmog Transmogrifying Wand. Yeah, it's just giant, uh, giant bug attack. Giant bug attack. No, I turned off. Yes, Tiffany. Yeah. No. Uh, no, it did. I turned off the camera so you guys didn't have to see me flailing about trying to get rid of this bug. They just come in under the doors at Trim Pots. Hey, we do have our signed art card here, Mind Flayer. By Darken. I said Florida moment, Sarah. There was no time. Trust me, there was no time to explain. Hive of the Eye Tyrant. And Tiger Tribe Hunter. I think... I think Sean's messing with me. Sean, you better be messing with me. I'm gonna lose my mind. Blue Max says the table did a few shakes. Yeah, because it was on the wall. It was on the wall. It was crawling up the wall. I was like, we we're getting rid of this. And I smashed it, and then it fell on the floor, and I couldn't find it. So that's why I was gone for a while, because I couldn't find it. And then I was I lifted up one of the um it was hiding under a like a little power brick, and then it ran under the shelf, and I was like. So, I have my big wad of paper towels, and I'm ready. Sean says, made you look. Island foil, Ginny Winsear. Bruh, is that a foil Tiamat back there? No, okay, okay. I was I was about to be like, excuse me? We have Sphere of Annihilation. It is a different foil mythic, though. We have Minsk, Beloved Ranger. Because that is the border used on Tiamat. We have Minsk foil mythic. It's our second foil mythic in the Folly Academy from the list. Lane, Reclusive Painter Showcase. Secret Door Foil. Spider Series says, I asked you a question. Oh, I missed it. Sorry. Do, 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 do. Is it expensive to feed Niv? Not sure if he eats fruits and vegetables or live rodents and bugs. Mix of everything, really. Um, do try to get Niv a lot of fresh meats and then mix that up with she literally likes um what's it called acorn squash so she really likes that uh, occasionally do get her i don't i'm not comfortable with live feeding so frozen thawed smaller 
smaller rat, she eats those mice too. So I'm trying to mix it up. But it's not it's not it's not as expensive as you think. Because you only need to, uh Niv's growing, so every other day is fine, but when Niv's an adult, she she eats every three days, I believe. So it's not like a human you have to feed multiple times a day, every day. And then Niv actually in the winter will go down for hibernation. Even though it's Florida, she'll still go under for a few months and then just it's like you don't have a lizard for a couple months. Acorn says, you don't have to worry about live feeding. She'll do that on her own. That's true. She will attempt to eat stuff. Spider Fury says, bring her to the streams. She can eat those bugs that come in under the door. The thing with that is, do is like, yes, I've had this thought. Just, just bring Niv and let her protect me from whatever. But also, like, those aren't, those aren't like clean, grown bugs. Those are like outside, potentially diseased, weird bugs. So it's actually not recommended to just let your lizard just eat whatever. In case it gets like parasites and other stuff, so Niv, don't eat don't eat the shop roach. I'd like you to eat it, but better just to get rid of it. Good night, Noogie, take care. There's the Minsk art card. Circle of Dreams Druid. We have a regular Zariel Borderless. Crinal of Baldur's Gate Foil and Hellkind Overlord from the list. Now Peter says very hard lag right now. Uh-oh. Hey, Metalcore, welcome. Is it passed yet? Steven says it's good now. All right, we'll continue. The trim boss has been lagging on me all night. It seems that it's coming in waves. Our upload is still doing very well, so I'm not sure what the issue is. Baleful Beholder Showcase. We have Imrith Desert Doom. And Veteran Dungeon Seer. Or Dungeoneer. That one's miscut as well, but not as severe as the others. Metalcore says he doesn't see any lag on his end. That's good, that's good. Hey Jordan, welcome. Up next, we do have a box of Final Fantasy Opus 14, Crystal Abyss. Wanty Malice and Rare, Meteor Swarm, Thieves Tools, Miscot. Lots of Miscot foils here for Sean in this box. Oh, nice. Congrats, Metalcore. I hope you get some good pulls from that. Take care, Jason. We'll catch you next time. Plains Foil, Manticore, Monk Class, Scaled Herbalist, and Undead Slayer from the list. All right, last row of the box. Delina, Wild Mage, Loathsome Troll. Adult Gold Dragon, Spare Dagger. The Dark Prince is now following. Appreciate it. Thank you so much.
Gelatinous Cube Art Card, Neverwinter Dryad, Werewolf Pack Leader, Ochre Jelly, Foil Rare, Yeah, hurry up, Anthony. Sarah needs to watch TV. Fix the TV. We have Red Dragon, Borderless. Silent Phoenix is now following. Thank you, Phoenix. Zorn. Rare. Minion of the Mighty. Showcase Rare. And Shambling Ghast. Especially this set, Metalcore, is super awesome. Love the art here. Mind Flare. Price of Loyalty, Miscut Foil. Forest Foil, Hall of Storm Giants, Dungeon Crawler, and Fodder Cannon, Chapstick Serial, that's the thing is you won't know closer to release what else is in the set, uh, but we should be expecting you know, Daisy Ridley again, Adam Driver, Harrison Ford, most likely Pedro Pascal once more. Dragon Turtle, Book of Exalted Deeds, Ginny Winsear, Showcase Foil, Good night, Lucy, take care, Bard Class and Silver Raven Foil. Steven says you can record my break Tuesday if you want. Stream got long. Orcus, Prince of Undeath. And Steadfast Paladin Foil. If you want, Steven, I can move it. I'll leave it up to you. We have Evolving Wild Module Showcase. Den of the Bugbear. Soul Knife Spy. And that does it here. Steven says, go ahead. Okay, so I will adjust that afterwards and adjust the queue in the description. Okay, break number nine will be moved to Tuesday. So then break number 10 will become break number nine. So no Final Fantasy tonight, although I am excited to open up that box this upcoming week. I did not. Thank you, Acorn, for catching that. Thank you so much. The Twitch donations don't come through. I wish Twitch donations popped up in Twitch chat so I could see them more readily. But the Trim Boss donated $20, says, Hey, Ali, I hope you get all the rest that you deserve after the stream. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. That is very kind of you, Trim Boss. Thank you so much. Yes, excited to get some good sleep after the stream tonight. But we do still have a decent amount of boxes left. But finishing up this one here, number eight for Sean F. And then also, thank you, Richie, for the follow. Do appreciate it. So let me straight up these piles, and then we'll get into a recap. Two full set boosters here for Sean. Did have some very nice pulls in these two set boosters. So give me a moment, everybody, and then we'll get into a recap. 
did find two foil mythics, two borderless foil mythics across the two boxes. A lot of borderless mythics in general. Let's start off our recap here with very simple signed art cards that have Mind Flare and Horde Robber. One per box. Then we also had a Foil Showcase Rare, Nadar, Selfless Paladin, a Module Showcase Rare, Layer of the Hydra, and two Showcase Foils, Loathsome Troll and Ginny Wins here. Did have three Showcase Non-Foil Rares, Gelatinous Cube, Volo, and Minion of the Mighty. Green Dragon Borderless. We also, I don't typically go over the foils, the, the common, uncommon, and land foils, but we did have this actually pretty sick pile here of miscut foils. Now you guys might be wondering, Allie, why would you say that's sick? Well, there are actually a lot of people that do like having misprint foils, so even though it's not to my taste, these foils here, especially having the print dots from the sheets in the top corner, to the right person does give them actually a decent amount of value, so that's pretty cool finds there. Interesting that we did find so many miscut foils, but I'll have that separated out since I did separate those miscut ones from non-miscuts. I'll keep those there. So that was pretty cool. Did find it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven miscut foils with the print dots here for Sean. Then I will go ahead and pan through our cards from the list. Congrats, Sarah. The TV is fixed. We also had four foil rares, Minion of the Mighty, Hive of the Eye Tyrant, Zalto, and Ochre Jelly. And for Borderless Mythics, we had Old Gnawbone, Mordekainen, and Zariel. We also had a Borderless Zariel foil and Borderless foil Tiamat. Two regular foil Mythics, Icing Death and Minsk. Nice pile of mythics as well. Book of Exalted Deeds, Imrith, Ebendeath, Inferno of the Star Mounts, Old Gnawbone, Icing Death, Old Gnawbone again, Regular Tiamat, Demolich, and Zariel. And with that, we we'll want to go over all of our rares because this pile is very, very large. We did see a lot of duplicate pulls as well. But with this, it does finish off these two set booster boxes here for Sean. Thank you so much, Sean, for letting me open up some more magic for you here on the channel. Really hope you enjoyed the opening and love these new additions to your collection. Definitely some really nice pulls in these two set boosters. So for being the last two we had in stock, definitely did not disappoint. Again, thank you so much for letting me open these on up for you. Really hope you enjoyed its interruptions and all and love these new additions to your collection. Now I'm going to go ahead and unsnap when I come back. Do have to adjust our queue a little bit. Steven did request that I move his box to Tuesday. So I will uh, adjust our queue. And then we'll be down from 16 breaks to 15. So I also need to take all the recycling. Of course, move these cards out of the way. And I'll be back as quickly as possible. So hang tight, everybody. You have to make several trips, make some adjustments. And then we'll get started on break number nine. All right.
All right, I returned. I also somehow smudged my glasses. All right, I've returned with clean glasses. I guess I do need to adjust our cue slightly. All right, the cue has been adjusted. Now I have to adjust it for me as well. Alrighty. So I grab these boxes here. All right, so we are about to get into the new break number nine. Do you have a box of Onyx Vintage Baseball? So just like the football we saw earlier tonight, just four cards per box, but two of them are on card autographs. And then we also have two Legendary Duelist Season 2 Blaster Boxes here. Let's go ahead and adjust our Q number to nine. These three boxes in total are for John M. So let's go ahead and jump on into its bite, snapping us into the corner. And let's actually start off with the Onyx Baseball. I actually really enjoy the design of this set. We've seen some really nice names, so I'm very curious to see what we find here for John. So all right, box one of three. Onyx Vintage Baseball. We're starting off with a Louis Rodriguez base. Then we have Aaron Sabato, red ink autograph. So red ink autos are 250 or less. So number 250 or less here on the Sabato auto. And then Zach Veen, blue ink auto for Colorado. And blue are to 275 or less here in the baseball. Out of football, it's the 400 or less. Here it's the 275. So Zach Veen and Aaron Sabato are two autos in this box. Then our last base, we do have Christian Hernandez. So let me go ahead and get these autos sleeved on up, and then we'll do a quick run through of these once more. Then move on in to those Legendary Duelist Season 2 boxes. So our two autos here, the red Sabato, and then the Veen. Blue ink. And our two base, we had Rodriguez and Hernandez. Now that does it here for the vintage baseball. Let's go ahead and see what we can find here in these Legendary Duelist Season 2 blasters from Yu-Gi-Oh! Two packs, a secret rare promo card, and also one of five different types of dice. Let's go ahead and see what we can find for John. Hey, 
look at that! We did find a Kybercore die here. So it is, it is white with silver. I thought it was white, but it's not clear like the Blue Eyes alternative. Or, yeah, Blue Eyes. Yeah, the other Blue Eyes dice. So very cool. Secret Rare Kybercore die here for John. Very nice find. Only our second of, I don't know exactly how many boxes, but we've opened several display, full displays worth of boxes here. So very cool to find that Kybercorp for John. Sick. And then our promo did have fort, uh, Photon Orbital. And let's check out these two packs. We have Cross Rose Dragon. Purple Harpy Channeler and Purple Frozen Rose. And pack two, box one. We had Red Rose Dragon, Blue Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon, and Super Express Bullet Train. Now, of course, since these two blasters are the same product, I'll do a recap at the end of the second one. So let's see. Another die, another promo, and two more packs here. We do have the Amazonas Tiger Cub. For the second die, one Kaiba Corp, one cute little tiger. Our promo is Blackwing Full Armor Master. So two different promos as well. And here we go, pack number one. Harpy's Pet Dragon. Another purple pack, we have Galaxy Knights. And the White Stone of Ancients. All right, pack two, box two. We have Cyber Eternity Dragon. And another blue pack, the Ultimate Creature of Destruction and Galaxy Knight. So no green packs here in these two boxes. Two purples, two blue packs. So let's go ahead and start off a recap with those. To find the four purple ultras, Harpy Channeler, Frozen Rose, Galaxy Knights, and the White Stone of Ancients. And then for our blue ultras, we had Galaxy Eyes, Photon Dragon, Super Express, Bullet Train, the Ultimate Creature of Destruction, and Galaxy Knight. So we had a purple and a blue Galaxy Knight. And then for our regular ultras, we have Cross Rose Dragon. Red Rose Dragon, Harpy's Pet Dragon, and Cyber Eternity Dragon. Sensing a dragon theme here. For our promos, we did have Blackwing Full Armor Master and Photon Orbital. Of course, Kybercorp Special Secret Rare Die. And with that, that finishes off these boxes here for John M. Thank you so much, John, for letting me open up even more Yu-Gi-Oh! for you and some baseball on the channel. Really hope you enjoyed the opening and love all of these new additions to your collection. Congratulations on finding this Kybercorp die. I thought it was one per display. Maybe it's one per whole master case because we have seen only two of them. We've opened up a lot of these blasters. So congrats on that pull. I hope you're very excited. And like I said, love these new additions to your collection. So this was a pretty quick break here. But we still have five more to go. So let me go ahead and unsnap myself. We'll actually be taking a very short break. And when I come back, be getting into our last set booster opening of the night with that Strixhaven School of Mages set booster box for the can. Who did leave earlier was very tired, but ENS will be able to watch the video, of course, on replay. But like I said, let me move this on out of the way, take a short break. And when I come back, let's have this setting on screen ready for us. We'll get into that Strixhaven School of Mages. Hang tight, everybody, and I'll be back as soon as possible.
All right, hello. Thank you, Trim Pots. I feel like this thing is too poofy without it. Makes it look a bit large, so I was trying to dig around for some nice accessory to wear uh, to give it a little bit more shape. I'm glad I've gotten actually a couple compliments on it tonight. Thank you, a trim plus, of course. And everyone for pointing out. Makes me more confident in my fashion choices. Let me just make sure. Just double checking, triple checking. Yep, it is a regular set booster. Want to make sure it wasn't any of the Japanese set boosters. I was pretty sure it wasn't because I, I believe the prices are different, but did want to double check, of course, before I go ahead and open it on up. Let's adjust our queue number to 10. This should be our longest remaining opening of the night. Of course, that one for Sean was the longest in general, but set boosters do tend to take quite some time. So let's just go ahead and jump right on into the Strixhaven School of Mages for Ian by snapping us into the corner. Let's get started. Kevin asks, Allie, when is more cosplay? Masterwork and Stellar will have cosplay openings. Otherwise, I'm not certain. Timmy says, had to catch back up. Awesome break, Allie. Very happy with the, the SP. Hey, very glad to hear that, Timmy. All right. So let me move that recyclable out of the way. And here we go. Let's get started. 30 packs. Pack number one. Let's see what Mystical Archives cards we will find. Hey, Joseph, welcome. Been a little while since I've opened up Strixhaven. Excited to check these cards out once more. Looks like we do have Lore Hold Commands, Gift of Estates, Leech Fanatic Foil, and Killmouth Dragon from the list. Derek says, I really love your outfit. Thank you, Derek. Yep, the lesson slot, Didi Ben. Can find up to Mythics in there. Dragon's Guard Elites and Time Warp. Mythic. Zephyr Boots Foil. Timmy says, I'm starting a Titan Cards watch party. I'm up to seven, so we should all be buying in next live. Wow. That's pretty crazy, Timmy. Sounds like a blast, though. Hope you all have a lot of fun. That sounds actually really cool. Oh, we do have a signed art card here. Revitalize. By Justin and Alexis Hernandez. Let's go ahead and get that sleeved up shortly. Dramatic Finale, Lightning Helix, and Master Symmetrist. Illuminate History. Vine Glimmer Snarl. Tezard's Gambit. And Star Pupil. Interestingly enough, we have not had any uncommon or common mystical archives just quite yet. Kevin, uh, Florida's pretty open. No, there's a lot of conventions running, especially this month. There's a big mega con, or yeah, mega con in Orlando. Uh, I think either I think last weekend was the Tampa Bay Comic Con. I know there's like some kind of TCG con coming up, or maybe that already happened. I don't know, but there's a lot of stuff going on in Tampa in the Orlando area. Ah, uh, yeah, there's no commons. That's true. There's uncommons though. Odd that we haven't found any uncommons, Didi Ben. Nathan, just subscribe. Thank you, Nathan. All right, take care, Timmy. We have Faithless Looting, Cram Session, and Gatekeeper of Malakir. 
gatekeeper, not great keeper. Gnarled Professor, Thrill of Possibility, Lash of Malice, and Deathless Knight from the list. Shimboss asks if Niv likes to ride in vehicles. If you hold her, she enjoys it. But I think she just enjoys being held in general. Hall of Oracles, Divine Gambit, Shadewing Laureate, Foil. We have Extus, Arik Overlord. And Dream Strix, Strategic Planning, Barbarian Books. Plarg, Dean of Chaos, Crackle with Power is our next mythic. Memory Lapse and Foil Claim the Firstborn. Hey Kyoji, welcome. Sedgemore Witch, Duras. And Lorehold Campus Foil, Sultari Monk from the list. Elite Spellbinder, hey, Demonic Tutor, very welcome here. Thrilling Discovery. Nice, Koji. Nice to be back on a regular schedule. Congrats. Galazeth Prismari, Borderless, and God's Willing. Didi Man says it's still about $39 on the Demonic Tutor. Very nice. Foil, fo uh, foil Swamp, excuse me. Sparring Regimen, Defiant Strike, Serpentine Curve, and Angel's Grace. Shyla, Dean of Radiance, Retriever Phoenix, and Opt. Witherbloom Command, Claim the Firstborn. Sedgemore Witch, Foil Rare. Shy 
Shine Shadow Snarl, Village Rights, Exponential Growth, Foil Rare number two of the box. Archmage Emeritus, Adventurous Impulse, and Pest Summoning. Foil Plains. Leon and Light Scribe and Stone Rain. Callous Blood Mage Foil Rare number three of the box. Basic Conjuration Rare. Clondrix Command. Whirlwind Denial and Foil Sign and Blood, rare, and Bogart Arsonists from the list. Sarah, does Anthony like to pretend he's the coach of the team? You know, telling players what they should do and stuff. Scream at the TV. That's what my dad does watching football. Belladros Witherbloom, Mythic. Biblioplex. Infuriate and Tezzeret's Gambit Foil. Multiple Choice, Cultivate, and Poet's Quill. Another Foil Rare, so four. And then the two from the Mystical Archives. Oh, nice. Didi Ben saying 1550 on the Belladose Witherbloom. That card has gone up since the last time I've seen it then. I did not, Peter. I put all my in effort into, into schoolwork. I remember, actually... Is that for those of you on Twitch wondering what happened? Uh, Peter asked if I played any sports in high school. I did not. All of my effort went to just taking classes and stuff. Anytime I had free time, be like, I have enough free time, I could be learning more stuff. And I just add another class on like Florida Virtual School. I remember at one point I was taking 15 classes at once. This is why I don't have cool stories. Because especially, especially when I was in my later teens, and even honestly currently, like being out of school feels very weird. Like I feel like I need to go back just to, just to prove something. Like I, I just, I don't know. I would tie my self-worth to like my grades. So like that's something is like I can honestly be like proud of myself where like I I did this I got my straight A's I got I took took 15 classes at once you know eight in school seven online still perfect GPA no issues it's like that's something I can be like that's proof that I tried real hard you know yes I, I glossed over the professor onyx because that's what I was talking about so that's the thing it's like if I have free time well you know what I could be making myself look good right now you know, giving myself something to actually, like, be like, wow, I did that. I feel good. Like, that's not something you can, I feel you can argue, uh, you know. Like, you can argue whether someone's pretty or not. You can argue whether someone's funny. You can argue if, like, you really actually have friends, you know. Because, you know, you can be like, oh, I'm friends with them. And the other person, you ask them in private, they're like, I don't like that person. I just tolerate them. You know, but, like, I can say that I tried my hardest and it worked out. So anytime I had, you know, I'd be like, I have too much time on my hands. Let me register for another class. So. 
I believe I took... One year, I think I took eight AP exams. Right, I took a lot of online AP classes. I took in-person AP classes. I, I just, I had, all I did was school. Just bury myself in school. Awaken the Blood Avatar is our second signed art card of the box. Flame Scroll Celebrant. Cody, Vociferous Codex, and Shock. Fury Calm Snarl, another... Foil rare. But then that's the thing too, is when I lost being in school, I feel like I had nothing to like, I had nothing going on in my life. You know what I mean? I'd be like, am I actually worthless? I might be. I can't show people that I, I, you know, I work hard. I do this. I do that, which is probably why, why was I here 17 hours yesterday? Oh, well, I could do stuff like so it's still a, like a pervasive problem in my life, but whatever. Did you get money for scholarship? No. I didn't get any. I didn't. I didn't qualify for anything. You know, my family is, you know, more more middle class, so I, I didn't qualify for any scholarships. I'm not still going to school, but I feel like I need to go back for something. I don't know what. I don't know what use it would be for me. I still occasionally, if I'm having like stressful weeks at work, I will wake up random days, panicked in the morning, being like, oh, I, I, I've been all semester, I've been missing all my classes, I'm failing everything, how did I forget I'm in school? And it's like, I'm not, I'm not, I graduated, it's done. But I still will wake up stressed, sweaty, panicked, being like, oh my god, my classes, I've forgotten about my classes. So, I don't know. It feels like an abusive relationship with school. Be like, I don't want to do it. It stresses me out. I don't have a good time. But when I'm not doing it, it's like, oh, you know, maybe I should do it again. You know, it's like, no, no, no. Stop. Stop thinking about school. Waking up in cold sweats thinking about school. When you've gra you graduated two years ago with two degrees, two 4.0s, why are you trying to go back? I don't know. It's the only thing that gives me purpose. We did find another foil rare. Chicago says Allie's a hardcore nerd. Much respect. Mark says, no offense, Allie, but you are an animal. Sue Ann says, Allie, those don't go away. I still have those nightmares. Oh, no. I'm just going to have to live with waking up, being like... And there's sometimes I... I like, I've even caught myself trying to log into, like, my USF. Just to double check, make sure I'm not registered for anything that I just haven't been showing up for all year. And it's like... Allie, you need to stop. Silver cool silencer. And eliminates. Hey, look at that. We have a Wayfarer's bottle. That's kind of cool. From the list. Biblioplex assistant. Trip boss says, did you enjoy the classes you took? Some yes, some no. I was lucky to really enjoy the subject. So even if, like, I didn't enjoy the professor, it was still, I was still having a good time. I just like learning things in general, too. And that's the thing for me is, like, yeah, I could... You know, I don't really need to go get a degree in Egyptology. I could watch a bunch of videos, read a bunch of books, and do stuff like that. But I, if I don't have to, I'm just so exhausted all the time that I won't. That I won't. I just, I can't sit there and do stuff on my own. I need the structure of school. You know, so I, you know, if I'm going to learn about something, it, it, I need it to be structured. So... Insidious Raptor says, I just had that convo with my wife tonight about the dreams where I'm late for class or I straight up missed it. All because I overslept once in college and missed a class. Yeah, I just, I'm worried. I'm, I get these dreams where I'm like, I all of a sudden realize like, oh, I was taking this class. And the thing is, it's not like it's out of nowhere, but it's I build in my head that I'm currently enrolled and I somehow forgot to attend one class. So like I've convinced myself I'm taking f six classes and I've attended five of them, have straight A's, and I'm tanking my GPA by just forgetting to go to the sixth class. And I wake up, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I've been missing this class. And I'm like, wait, I'm not taking any of those other classes either. What's going on? And it, I... It's been happening a lot recently. But... 
It comes and goes. Usually it's like once every three months or so, but I feel like I've been having it like every three weeks recently. So hopefully it just passes and it's just, then it'll just stop. Michael says, I'm still figuring out how I graduated high school without ever going to my English class throughout my senior year. Chicago says, Allie, you're too young for dementia. So Ann says, Allie, you'd probably enjoy doing a library sciences degree or courses. And actually, that's one of the things I looked into. I was like, I, I enjoy, that seems like it'd be fun. You know, the classification of stuff and figuring out how to do research and assisting people and just stuff like, you know, like you, you read library sciences, you're like, what is that? But it's, you know, the, it, it's different. And I actually really enjoyed it. Then I was like, I don't think that's necessarily employable, but it would be a fun thing to, fun thing to look into. The library science is actually really cool. Michael says, sorry to say they will become less frequent, but they will never stop. They're like the Terminator. Yeah. Eventually I hope that it just becomes like maybe a once a year thing. But, yeah, it's been happening a lot recently. Maybe I got triggered by, like, the box says School of Mages. I'm like, ah, school, no. But another reason, honestly, it was super weird. Like, I know I mentioned it. I was here from noon yesterday to 5 a.m. And then I didn't I didn't get much sleep. I had to wake up and go to the post office because, you know, boss man's sick. So I'm, I'm in charge of all the post office runs and things like that. And then I had stuff to do before I came into work. So I, I didn't get much sleep. So when that bug was on the wall, I turned the camera off. And I was like, oh, I'm going to get this bug. I'm going to get it. I muted it just in case, like, you know, if it fights back. And, and then I, I, I yelled a little bit. I said some cuss words and was like, good, it's all muted. And then when it fell and I couldn't find it, I honestly started wondering, like, am I so tired that I imagined this bug? Because while I was here, I like, last night too, I, I did see another one. I, I got rid of another one. So I'm like, am I just hallucinating, like, based on, like, last night's memory of being here and seeing a bug? Like, what's going on? How did it disappear? Where did it go? It was just hiding under something, but I was like, it was over there. It should have fallen behind the table. I was like, did it fall under the computer? Is it going to run out on the mat? Is it going to be disgusting? Am I going to have to replace every single card here for Sean? I was like, oh my goodness, what's happening? And then it, it, and I was like starting to wonder if like, I actually did convince myself that this thing existed when it never existed. And then I picked it, I picked up, like I said, the little power brick and it ran this way and it ran towards me. And instead of like grabbing my paper towel and squishing it, I just, I panicked. I was like, ah, and then it ran under the shelf and I was like, no, I'm not going to be comfortable all night. I'm going to be stressing out about this bug. I was trying to find it with the flashlight. It, it just, it's gone. It's gone, Skeed. I don't know where it is. I'm ready though. I'm ready. Yes, Beamers. It was really bugging me. It really was. Oh, Kyoji, you got, what'd you order on TCG player? We have Necroblossom Snarl, Dark Ritual, and Arrogant Poet Foil. Swat says, dedicated crowd, you're very likable from the little I've watched. Hey, thank you, Swat. And then Jincola asked a little earlier, best subject, math. Math, that's what I ended up actually switching to. I started off as a geology major because I really didn't like the subject. I really enjoy it. I really like it. I really like learning about it. But as I learned throughout like my first year, I was like, I enjoy it, I like it, but I'm not like gung-ho like everybody else is for like field work. I'm like, ew, camping, I don't really want to do that. And I was seeing how like everybody else in the major was like, that's what they wanted. I'm like, I really don't want to do field work. So I was like, well, in terms of what I have to do as a career, I was like, maybe this isn't for me. I really enjoy the subject, like learning it, like doing it in the, you know, in, in the, uh, in the lab and whatnot. I was good. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Still love collecting rocks, picking up rock books, watching random videos and stuff, and just learning a lot. And But I was like, I don't think that, I don't think that this is what I want to do. So that's the thing. Sometimes it's weird. It's like, I've heard that before. It's like, you'll have your heart set on something and you go to college and you start doing it. And you're like, N -n nah, this doesn't jive with me. And I was like, ah, nah, I'll be fine. And I was like, it was a weird experience. But I had the presence of mind to be able to switch. It, it didn't bother me too much to switch because I was like, I was like, I know myself. I don't want to do the field work. So then I just, you know, it's unfortunate that I don't get to take these cool classes anymore. There are so many classes I want to take that'd be super fun. But I was like, don't want to, 
don't want to do it. So that's something I figured, you know, still learning my own time. It's really cool. There's actually a really cool museum a little bit north of Atlanta. I think it's the Natural Science Museum of Georgia. They have a ton of really sick rocks. It's dope. There's actually, I went, I convinced my mom one year too. They had like a rock convention at the museum. That was fun. Yeah, Jinkola, I can't, I don't, I don't want to go somewhere without running water. Like, I'm fine being out in the field, sweaty all day, but I want to be able to use a toilet and I want to be able to take a shower. Like, I have friends that try to convince me to go camping. I'm like, I will not poop in the woods. Like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. It's like, we can go to a national park, we can look around, but I want to drive to back to a hotel at the end of the evening. I don't want to camp. I don't want to sleep outside. I don't want to be sweaty for multiple days. I need the luxury of running water. So I was like, field work's not for me. And not nothing will change that. And I was like, that's unfortunate. But I am refuse to camp. So that's what I learned. I probably should have figured that out sooner. But you know what? I still got to take a lot of cool geology classes. And as I just said, oh, one year I took AP, eight AP classes at once. I had so many credits that it didn't even set me back. I had so many credits that I could just do whatever with because I had all these extra spaces that I literally was able to stick in a whole entire second degree. And it was fine. All right, we are in lag city right now, but. No, Chicago, no, I don't, I, not me, not for me, not for me. We have Jad Z, Oracle, and Magma Opus, two mythics back to, three mythics back to back, Primal Command. Sick. Yeah, you know, I'd rather sit here at 1 a.m. and open up a pack of magic and get three mythics in a row than camp. Which degree is more prestigious? You know, being a being a scientist, being a geologist, or, or being being a pack opener on the internet. It's like, sorry, I prefer to open up three mythics back to back at 1 a.m. than not taking a shower for a week. Like Yes, the Telus Museum. Yes, thank you, Mark. Oh, that was the last pack. What a way to go out. That was a good pack. All right. That was an interesting discussion we had throughout this box. I, I didn't even realize we were that close to being at the end. But all right, that does it here for this box for the can. <laughs> thank you so much, the can, for letting me open this on up for you. Really hope you enjoyed the opening bots before, of course, we finish off this break. We do have to straighten up all of our piles and get on into our recap. So, as with the usual Strixhaven set booster, we did get a ton of foil rares. One, two, three, four, five, six regular foil rares. Culling Ritual, Fury Calm Snarl, Poet's Quill, Callous Blood Mage, Exponential Growth, and Sedgemore Witch. Then we also had two foil rares from the Mystical Archives, Tezzeret's Gambit, and Sign in Blood for a total of eight foil rares in the box. Also had one Borderless Mythic, Galazeth Prismari. Time Warp, Primal Command, and Demonic Tutor. And for other Mythics, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, for a total of 10, 11, 11 Mythics in this box. Eight foil rares, 11 total mythics. Definitely pretty crazy. And I'll put that Professor Onyx on top because she's beautiful. Even though, as you guys said, you just glossed over Liliana. I did. I was talking about talking about stress dreams of school. And then, of course, from the list, we did find Wayfarer's Bobble, Bogart Arsonists, Angel's Grace, Sultari Monk, Deathless Knight, Gatekeeper of Malakir, and Killmouth Dragon. Also, they foil claim the Firstborn. And two of those art cards with signatures. As a Strixhaven did have a lot of boxes with two, does seem like 99% of the Adventures in the Forgotten Realms boxes only have one. I don't know if we've seen a box with two just quite yet. Haven't opened up a ton of set boosters though, but it does seem like the odds are against you to find two in the AFR boxes, but Strixhaven's still pretty good on those. But with that, this does finish off this set booster of Strixhaven. School of Mages, 
For some reason, I was like, can I figure out how to say that in French in the next five seconds? And my brain said no. So I was like, all right, we're just going to go with a school of mages. But that does it here with a set booster for Ian. Again, like I said, thank you so much for letting me open the sun up for you. Really hope you enjoyed it, even though the topic of conversation was very, very loosely related to the subject at hand. It wasn't magic related at all, but it was a school. You know, there's there's different colleges here. You know, Prismari and stuff like that. You know, degrees, colleges. Somewhat related, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. But... Up next is our final magic opening of the night. Let me go ahead and unsnap ourselves here. Do we have a Zendikar Rising Collector Booster for Robert? Now the past, this week and then the two weeks prior, back to back to back, we've been opening on up Zendikar Rising Collector Boosters. And I am loving it, you guys. Love checking out the set. Love finding the Expedition Foils. Now, I keep saying we're going to pull the Cavender Souls, but I haven't done it. So we'll see if we can do that up next for Robert. Let me go ahead and take care of moving this on out of the way. When I come back, we'll get into that final magic of the night. A trip boss says, does the Ace Turn game only have five episodes? Because it seems to be moving by quickly. Uh, it should, to my knowledge, have five episodes. Games that have six episodes, usually the sixth is either a bonus or a DLC. But... The game is progressing pretty quickly, pretty quickly for me, uh, a trim pause. Because, um, the, tr the, the first case seemed about the usual length, but I'm used to in the game doing the investigating and the trial. And of course, with episode two, you only had the investigation. And then I'm already on part three of the trial, but not sure what's going to go. Now, the Ace Attorney game. A Great Ace Attorney Chronicles does have game one and game two. So there's a, yeah, yeah, because it's advertised as 10 cases. So there is the second game as well. So it was two for one. So even though it's moving more quickly, there is the second game as well. The trim pause. So yes, it has five, but also there's the other game that has another five. But anyways, let me go ahead and move this on out of the way. And I'll be back with some Zendikar Rising. Kyoji asks if that's fish. These? I think they're little roses, but I looked in the monitor and I was like, oh, do I am I wearing a shirt with koi fish? That's a good question. But no, this is uh these are roses. Unless you're talking about something else. If so, let me know. I'm gonna move this out of the way and I'll check your comments when I get back. I am about to lose my mind. Why are you on the wall again?
You guys, I'm gonna lose it. All right, let me turn this camera back on. S Scott says, I mean, I'm here for it. She should keep the video and audio going. No, 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 no. Scott, it was this big. We live in Florida. Roaches are this big. And it was on the ceiling. And the stupid ceiling is panels. So what I had to do is I had to get the other chair. Because I tried to stand on this earlier and almost fell and busted my ass. And so I had to get the other chair that doesn't have wheels. Get up there. Take a mando tin. Circle around till it fell in the tin, carried the tin until it's running around making a bunch of noise, and then I ran outside and I yeeted it. During a break I took earlier, I was watching the uh, the video of the guy that won uh, gold for India, of the, the spear throw or whatever, javelin, I don't know what it's actually called, and someone said a gold melon yeet. So I ran outside, I yelled yeet, and I... I'm having a moment. Oh, the bug. I, I grabbed, I just, but I watched it. I heard, I saw it fly out. So, <laughs> Beamer says some customers just never want to leave the store. Valkyrie says, why haven't you bought roach? I just, this doesn't ha it happens occasionally. Cause like I said, they come in from the door if it rains a lot. So you gotta keep your eye out. But like usually, cause the, the bathroom is right by the door. And usually sometimes if I go late night to the bathroom, there's one that like crawled in there. Uh, but I don't know what it is, man. I don't... So if you're in Pinellas Park, you heard a random chick yell, yeet, that was me. That was me. Stemmer says, is a restaurant a restaurant next door? Uh, there's a donut shop, not in the plaza, but uh, separated in the parking lot. The thing is, though, is that the there's been, there's a lot of sitting water in the parking lot from when it rains. It doesn't have good drainage. Like, there's actually, it's It's weird. Like, Bossman has been talking to the guy who owns the building to, like, repave the back. Because there's actually algae growing in the parking lot in some, like, parts where the water doesn't leave. It's gross. So, and the thing is, is the building is really old, too. So the doors... I'm gonna just tell Bossman get, like, a new door. You know, the new fresh door jam so they can't come under. So, it's just... Chicago asked if it fly. No. If it was a flying roach. The stemmer says her sea level. The parking lot. It's, the parking lot. The parking lot does. Anytime it rains, it just. Like, even the shop actually is flooded once in the back because the water. Just the water. Just. Yeah, Sarah's a roach. It was like. You know, Florida size, Florida special. That's why I was... Steven says, a new door will expensive. You know what's more expensive? Me quitting. That would be more expensive. That would be more expensive. Silent Sound Guy says, he's selling it. He's a flap thingy for just such a purpose. Ooh. Acorn says, get a draft stopper. It'll keep bugs out. With the fans, it's never only one good luck. No, it's it's not it's not the German ones. It's just the palmetto. It's like a it was like a, a maybe inch and a half palmetto. They just just everywhere. Malgrie says, what if it flew on your head? Then. Uh, I'd probably go home and just take a shower and you guys would see a, post, a comment in the stream like a couple hours later from the trove saying, sorry, I left. Stream's canceled. Like. Uh, 
I'm more awake now. That's a positive. It's a positive. <laughs> Marzi says I shot put the roach. Yeah. Kevin says Allie needs danger pay. Does this qualify for workman's comp? Emotional trauma? Anyways, let me finish taking the recycling. Let me get a fresh cold bottle of water. Also, I think I just... Alright, I just... I, I saw it pop up and then I just... My brain deleted it. But thank you, Michael, for that $10 super chat. Says Allie for whenever you get to eat breakfast. Thanks for the live pack wrapping. Snap the jacket nib face. Thank you, Michael. Really do appreciate it. And then Chicago at the $2 super chat says, here's for a can of Raid. Kill the roach. It's honestly been something I'm like, I should pick up just so I don't have to like worry about it. I just go grab it. I spray it. I watch it die and I take care of it later. But <laughs> Peter says, let's go camping. No, no camp, no camp. Bubba says, Allie winning gold in floor Olympics and roachy heat. Hey, Federico, welcome. Trimpaw says, how big are the mosquitoes? There's my muscles. Um, there, There's sometimes like super tiny ones, but I feel like most of them are about like maybe a centimeter. It does make a big mess. Yeah, that's the thing too, is we have carpet. Why? I don't know. Though the roach spray isn't necessarily the best, but I just don't want to deal with it. I just don't want to deal with it. Jugs with the heart. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, let me take care of this recycling. Calm down for like 30 seconds and I'll be back with those Endicar Rising. This is much more peaceful. Michael said, just remember the roach is more afraid of you than you are of it. It's good. It should be. It should be. Don't come into my domain and ruin my night. Scott says, you should have a boot around just to smash bugs, not boots, just a single big army boot. The thing is, though, is there's the, uh, it's, uh, tiles on the ceiling, so I couldn't even squish it on the ceilings because there's a chance I'd break the panel. Or it would just run away, and I'd just be with my hand in the ceiling. So. Uh, look, proof I'm not wearing makeup. Ta-da. Yeah, there's a little suite up here now. Jukes. Oren says, this may well be the most interesting stream I've watched in quite some time. Bugs and collector cards. My night is complete. Trimpaw says, I hope the roach thing won't keep you awake tonight. I am refusing to entertain the idea. I am refusing to even entertain the idea that they're separate. That had to be the same one. Because I looked, I've, 
If you notice, sometimes it takes a while for me to come back. It's because I'm on the floor at the flashlight looking underneath. It, it must have... I don't even know. I don't know. But... It looked like the same one, so... Double bicep. Alright, good night, Riz. Take care. Jincola says, lizards can catch bugs, yeah. Like, we don't have, like, we used to have sometimes, you know, it just happens, Florida, like, you know, the bugs in the garage. There's now this, like, one gecko that lives in the garage in my house. They just don't have bugs anymore because he just eats everything. No, Frederico, it's odd. I, I've, I've had people actually... You know, like, I, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. But what it is, is when I'm here doing this, I'm just doing this for, like, eight hours at a time once a week. And it's giving me muscles. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, it's like a house gecko, but it, it's actually, like, a full-grown adult. He's, he's, like, about this big. He's like, you know, see you little tiny lizards you might find in your house? Maybe that's also a Florida thing. They're cute. I named them all Paco. We're up to like 19, Paco number 19, like over the years. I don't know why I name it Paco, but his name is Paco. Um, and there's a big one in the garage. And then Gecko. If you guys are wondering on YouTube why I keep flaxing, it's because on Twitch is asking for muscles. Where are my glasses? There they are. <laughs> Jingola asks if the lizard gives me deals on car insurance. Unfortunately not. I'd like it to talk to me. I'd like it to talk to me. It's not one of the it's not one of those geckos though. The the Geico gecko is a giant day gecko. I actually want to own one of them, but if they don't like you, they'll just drop their skin. So they're kind of you know, like, if you touch it and it's like, I don't like that, it'll just literally just shed its own skin. It'll just flake its skin off on you. So I'm like, yeah, no. But it, it's like, it's... It's like skin tone slash see-through colored gecko. It's like, it's a type of house gecko. But... Chicago says, is Anthony still here? Can you send Allie a shirt with a roach on it? Anthony, I will literally never speak to you ever again if you do that. But all right. Peter says, the roach is extending the stream, so I like the roach. All right, despite the roach, we're literally right now moving on to the next box. All right, updating the queue to 11. Flexing on the roach, that makes sense too. Juke says, I heard Noogie got called a simp. Noogie left a comment saying he was a simp, so I don't know if he got called before and he embraced it. Anugi proclaimed himself as a simp. That's on him. <laughs> and all right. Break number 11 here for Roberts. Let's see if I can finally get that Cavern of Souls by snapping us into the corner. Let's get started. Marzi says, what do I have left? Uh, we do have an Onyx Vintage Baseball, one Seven Deadly Sins, two Yu-Gi-Oh! Blasters, and a King's Court. Spider says, this has been the longest ever between breaks since all the bugs fault. Longest in recent time? Most likely not longest after all, because I remember when I first started streaming, I used to be able to get my friend to drop off food, and I know I've, like, actually sat in here and sat here and eaten checkers on stream because they're open late for quite some time, but has been has been a while. But all right, first of the two box topper packs, these are the non-foil expeditions. Do have Flooded Strand, not bad at all. Not bad at all, Flooded Strand. That was the last, last flex. That's it, that's it, I'm done. No more flaxen. Flaxen, that was one last one for the roach. And all right. We do have Ancient Tomb. Not bad, not bad. Looking for cavern, but I want to find a foil cavern. Definitely not complaining about Ancient Tomb. Flooded Strand and Ancient Tomb, two nice hits there for those box toppers. 
And here we go. Pack one. Let's see what we can find for Robert. Sarah, what? Sarah. Sarah, I'm so happy to see you come back, but now I don't know how I'm feeling about it. Trying to have Anthony send me a Garbage Pail Kids Roach t-shirt? My heart is broken. Throne of McKindy, Extended Arts. Charix, The Raging Isle, Foil Rare. Craig Crown Pathway, Borderless. Kaza, Royal Chaser, Extended Art, Foil Rare. And our token. Yeah, scratch that, Sarah. Scratch it. Don't even don't even let that thought enter your mind ever again. Mall of the Skyclaves. Foil, Nisa, Planeswalker, Mythic. Felidar Retreat. Showcase Rare. Not gonna say no to a foil verdant. Nice. Nice pull, nice pull. Foil, Verdant, Catacombs. Scott says, Ali, what's the difference between Borderless and Extended Art? The Extended Art is only on the sides, whereas the Borderless cards, it is technically the full. Uh, like, easy way to tell, top of the text has image, whereas the Extended Arts do not. Hagramalling, Cargan Intimidator, Bright Climb Pathway, Borderless, Thieving Skydiver, and our token. You're welcome, Scott. No Priest of Oblivion. Archon of Myria, Needle Verge Pathway Borderless, lots of pathways here, Tazri, Beacon of Unity, Extended Art Foil Mythic, the thought has been deleted. The thought of the Roach t-shirt has been deleted. Verizal, the Split Current. Swarm Shambler. Nahiri, Borderless. Legion Angel. Extended Art, Foil Rare. Aura, Skyclave, Herophant, just to bother Steven. Nice, congrats, Heather, got rid of that mosquito. Kazendu Mammoth. And Myriad Construct, Foil Extended Art. Kyle Doesn't Know Stuff is now following. Thank you, Kyle Doesn't Know Stuff. I did say it had to be scratched from all of eternity. That way, there's no way Anthony can watch this back and even see what you said. Because deleted comments don't show up on the chat replay. There's no way. There's no way. Ancient Green Warden, Extended Art Mythic, Leyline Tyrant, Needle Verge Pathway, Zarasan, the trickster. All right, on to the second half of the box. Sarah, I may or may not be exhausted. 
and may or may not remember that. But you do have a very fair point. And you're right. But I'm not undeleting it. Hey, Nick, thank you so much for the compliment. Appreciate those kind words. Wayward Guide Beast Extended Arts. Skew Swarm. Tabarax Hopes Demise. Kyle says, love your YouTube. Excited to buy some stuff from you soon. Thank you for all the dope content. Hey, thank you so much, Kyle. I really appreciate those words. Really appreciate it. Trimpa says, will this be the shortest stream? I believe last week's was the shortest stream, somewhere around four hours, maybe slightly below five hours. I think last week does hold the record. Crag Crown Pathway. Hey, Omnath. Hello, Omnath. Welcome. And Omdu Inversion. Jugs, just 16 tonight. All right, take care, Heather. Cargan Intimidator. Kaza Royal Chaser. River Glide Pathway. Lotus Cobra Foil Showcase Rare. All right, second to last pack here. Only one foil expedition so far. Skyclave Apparition. Felidar Retreat. Lotus Cobra. And Crack Plate Balath. All right, last chance here. Or will we first have our first one foil, one foil expedition box on camera? Have seen a box in the store before, just have one foil. Most boxes do have two. So let's see what we find here. For Robert, fingers crossed. Nimble Trap Finder. You have Phylath World Sculptor. And Shatter Skull Smashing Extended Art Foil Mythic. So just one. Just one. Just one foil expedition. But hey, definitely not a bad one at all to get here with Verdant Catacombs. And we did have very nice non-foil. So I won't I won't deny. I'm a bit disappointed. By a bit, I mean a lot, that we we're only able to find one foil here expedition. But we did get three really nice cards, though. Verdict Catacombs Foil, Ancient Tomb, and Flooded Strand. Did also get some other nice things. We did find two Extended Art Foil Mythics, Tazri, Beacon of Unity, and Shatter Skull Smashing. One non-foil in the form of that Ancient Green Warden. Nyssa and Leyline Tyrant regular foils. And one borderless mythic Nahiri showcase mythic Omnath. Also did find a very large amount of pathways. A crag crown, a bright, bright climb, two needle verge, and a river glide borderless pathway. Unfortunately, no foils there. Lots of nice cards nonetheless. A lotus cobra foil showcase rare. Then, we had Felidar Retreat, Kazandu Mammoth, Scute Swarm, Lotus Cobra, and Phylath for our Showcase Rares. We also found a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 Extended Art Foil Rares, Crag Plate, Ondo Inversion, Tabarax, Zarathan, Myriad Construct, Legion Angel, Thieving Skydiver, and Kaza. And with that... And let's look at our non-foil non -foil extended arts. Let's look at those two. All right, we'll pan through all of these. Hey, Audel, take care. Thank you for joining us tonight. Hope you had a wonderful time. But that does it here for this box for Robert. Thank you so much, Robert, for letting me open up more magic for you here on the channel. Really hope you enjoyed the opening and love.
these new additions to your collection. Mini Discs says, love the arts on River, uh, River Glide Pathway. All the pathways are nice. All the pathways are nice. But the water, the, the island ones are very nice in particular. But would have loved to find more than just the one. But Verdant's Ancient Tomb and Flooded Strand, all really nice expedition lands. But that does it here for break number 11. Again, thank you so much, Roberts. Hope you really enjoyed the opening. That was our last magic opening of the night. Do have Yu-Gi-Oh, White Shorts, and also up next, very, very fast opening for Christopher M. of Onyx Vintage Baseball. So hang tight, everybody, and I'll be back with our last sports opening, and then we're getting into some more TCGs. Accidental yeeting. Accidental yeeting of the box. But all right. We go ahead and adjust our cue number. Super speedy break here. Number 12. Hey, Ryan is here. Hey, Ryan. Welcome. Back to Lag City. Wonderful. Why are we lagging? But anyways, break number 12, our final sports opening of the night. Do have this box of Onyx Vintage Baseball. Did, of course, see one of these earlier, as well as a football Onyx box. Two autographs, which are, of course, on card, and two base cards. That's it here in these boxes. I've seen some really nice names out of baseball. Rushman, Pawson, Kierstad. So let's go ahead and see what we have here for Christopher. Bye. Snapping us into the corner. Well, let's get started. All righty. Here we go. Just one pack. Let's see what's inside. We're starting off with a Julio Rodriguez base here for the Mariners. Do have a blue auto here. Very impressive looking signature. Looks very fancy. Juan Carlos here for the Royals. Blue ink sold to 275 or less. And we do have another blue ink here, Eddie Yeen. Remember some of you guys, we saw one of these I believe last week or so. So we were wondering if that was some sort of inscription. I do believe it's just the last name. I know some people were asking if it's numbering. Maybe it's a, a number, but it doesn't appear to be a numbering of the card. But Eddie Yeen, blue ink, is our second autograph. Like I said, to 275 or less on those. Christian Hernandez is our final base card. So I do need to actually open up a new pack of top loaders. Get the sleeve on up, and of course, we'll run through it one more time here for Christopher. Two on card autos, both blue ink signatures. We'll check them out momentarily. So, our first auto of the box was Juan Carlos here for Kansas City. Like I said, really like the stylistic design here of the autograph. Blue ink signature, two, 275 or less. Born in 1999, so a little younger than I. And then we had Eddie Yeen for Pittsburgh, born in 2001. All right, so even more young than I. With two blue ink signatures, and of course our two base cards, can't forget about those. We had Christian Hernandez and Julio Rodriguez. And with that, does finish off this final sports opening of the night, Onyx Vintage Baseball for Christopher.
Well, thankfully, we did make it through the opening, and then just the recap had some lag, but I do apologize to that, Christopher. No, it's not the most fun experience to see some lag. But I hope you did enjoy the opening and love these new additions to your collection. Always very fun to open up these Onyx boxes, and I hope you all have been enjoying it as well. But, like I said, last sports opening of the night here with this Onyx Vintage. Thank you so much, Christopher, for letting me open it up for you. Really hope you enjoyed it and love these new cards. Now, we will be getting into our final box of Seven Deadly Sins. We do have that second box for Shanti. Coming up next when I return. Was originally break number 14, and then we did have a delayed break earlier, moved to Tuesday. So, break number 13 of 15 coming up next, that final Seven Deadly Sins. So hang tight, everybody, and I'll be back shortly. All right, hello everybody, I'm back. Go ahead and update the queue number. Those of you on Twitch, how is the video looking now? The YouTube delay looks good for me, but I wanna make sure when we start, we're all crispy clear. Since we've been having these weird bouts with lag tonight. Oh, I just saw when I was drinking, there's a little delay. Huh. Jukes has only got her Stanley Cup, Noogie got his box, and now I need my World Series. All right. Steven says a little laggy, but it's sporadic, and Jugas and Trimpa says it's good. So in general, I think we are good to go. So let's go ahead and jump on into this 13th break tonight for Sean by snapping us into the corner. Let's get started. Scorecard says stay hydrated. There's definitely something to continuously work on. Definitely great being hydrated. Noticing the more I force myself to make sure I'm staying hydrated as well, my skin is clearer as well. So definitely all kinds of stuff. The body works in weird ways, but it is what it is. Ryan says, quite a humane cue tonight. Hey, Al, you'd think so. Only 16 turned 15 breaks, and it's still been six hours. Uh, I was here for 17 hours yesterday, so I was when the stream started, we were at like eight. I was like, cool. In and out real quick. And then lag started, so. Valkyrie says, I wonder why people don't like Shrek 2. It's better than the first. I must admit, I don't remember anything about Shrek 2. I must admit, I don't remember anything about it. So that might be a reason why. Like, of course, I remember a ton about the original Shrek. I do know that I remember enjoying Shrek 2, Shrek 3, not, mu not so much. And then there was a Chris. I know there's a Shrek 4, right? And a, a Christmas special. I've seen the Christmas special. I don't think I ever saw Shrek 4. But I don't remember much about Shrek 2. Our promo of the box here is SD Diane. Don't remember if that was the same promo Sean got earlier tonight or not. But here we go. Pack number one. Let's get started. Very sorry to hear that, Sue Ann. Tiffany says they are both good in their own way. In terms of Shrek 1 and Shrek 2. Starting off with an SR here, pack 1. Jericho, hungry for revenge. I like the hair here on Jericho, the purple. Valkyrie says there's no Shrek 4. They are making it now. I thought they were working on Shrek 5. Are you, sir are you certain, Valkyrie? I swear... I swear I had Shrek 4 on DVD. Shrek 4. Yeah, Shrek Forever After was from 2010. They're working on they're they're working on Shrek 5. I don't think it's ever gonna exist, but Ryan says he hasn't seen any of the Shreks. What? Trim Boss says how hot has it been in Florida over here? It's been an average of 70 during the days. 
I think it's been like 95 for a while. I feel like every time I look at the little thing on my car, it's like, oh, it's 92, 93, 94 outside. I'm like, I'm melting. Melting. We have Elizabeth sacrificing herself. Jeffrey says, OMG, I think I need some of these Seven Deadly Sins cards in my life. They are very cool. Shrimp Paw says, too hot for me. Oh, it's it's horrible. I was outside a decent amount today, too. I was like, Bleh. got so overheated. Peter says, we don't need a Shrek 5. They don't need to do Shrek 5. They needed to stop after the third. Double R, Gil Thunder, Magic Words. Ryan says, huh, Allie, of all people to scoff at someone not watching movies. Yeah, but it's Shrek. You haven't even seen Shrek 1? Like, you don't need to see the other ones. That's fine. But you haven't even seen Shrek 1? I've seen Shrek 1, Ryan. That's saying something. Double R. Hendrickson, no longer human. Valkyrie says, we don't need Shrek 5, but I'll watch it anyways. Diane Childhood. Hauser switching sides. Tiffany says, at least watch the original Ryan. Well, you gotta at least watch Shrek 1. Double R Bun for a special someone. I'd say it's worth it, Ryan. You gotta watch Shrek 1. Cultural significance. Just think of how many more memes you'll understand after having seen Shrek. Merlin joining the party. Rare. You have rare Gila switching sides. Peter says, what's the last movie you went and watched in the theater? I feel like somebody asked this recently, and I think the last movie I saw in the theater was Spies in Disguise. Is the movie where it's like Tom Holland, I think, and Will Smith, and then... It, they're CIA agents, and one of them's a scientist, and then uh, Will Smith accidentally gets turned into a, a pigeon. And he has to save the world as a pigeon. I don't know what I expected, but I expected better from it. It wasn't horrible. I liked it until probably about 75% of the way through, and then I was like... <sighs> it, was, it wasn't horrible, though, but like... I wouldn't recommend you go watch it. Mr. Jeff says you have a great voice. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. No, you did not, Anthony. You did not. Anthony, you did not hear such a thing. Elizabeth breaking the spell. Who let the cat out of the bag? Anthony wasn't supposed to hear about this. Double R Diane, cheerful.
When was the last movie you saw in theaters, Ryan? King and Oslo, away from the bustle. Meliodas, hypnotized. You have a second foil here, Forbidden Power. Lots of texture on this card. Of course, we have the smooth foiling here, and then that's full texture here. So two foils in this box for Sean. Nice to see. Always happy to pull a two-foil box. Cody says, my God, I'm on a Seven Deadly sin, uh, Sins binge right now. Yes, this product actually just came out on Friday. Brand new set from Bushy Road in the Y Schwartz TCG line. It is actually an English edition original, so English edition exclusive. We now have two foils, so a few packs remaining. Won't be finding an SP or anything like that, unfortunately, but nice to see a two foil box here for Sean. Let's go ahead and finish up these packs, and of course, in our recap, we'll look at those, the promo, and all of our double R's once more. Roy Story is now following. Thank you, Roy. Diane twirling her hair. <laughs> Anthony's being, his mind is being directly spoken to. He says, Allie, garbage pill kids, roach, t shirt. No. <laughs> no. Please don't, Anthony. Please don't. Congrats, Kyoji. Hope you have a restful rest of your night. Meliodas, important things, double R. Uh, we did not, Acorn. We never ordered the sticker products, but we probably, just because it's football, wouldn't have gotten allocated any anyways. But we, we don't we don't carry the sticker stuff. Like, we don't carry the hockey stickers or the soccer stickers. Merlin, superior skills. Second to last pack here for Sean. I, I don't really, Peter. I mean, it's a cute movie. I like the animation style. I just, I feel like it really fell apart towards the end. Like, I, I didn't have, like I'm saying, I didn't have, like, big expectations for it. Like, it's a kid's movie. Obviously, it's going to save the world. They're all going to be friends and stuff like that. But I just, I don't know. It really fell flat for me. And, like, I had very low standards. I just thought it was cute. I wanted to go see it because it looked cute. I went on a date, you know. I was like, oh, this is by those guys. It looks cute. Yeah. Koji says, oh, look, another white set. I'm going to buy cards from them. He uses magic tokens. And all right, last pack here for Sean. We do have Rare Gother holding his head up, literally. Ugh, holding his own head. And that wraps up this box here for Sean. Thank you so much, Sean, for letting me open up some more Seven Deadly Sins for you here on the channel. Really hope you enjoyed the opening and love these new additions to your collection. Of course, let's start our recap off with our first Triple R of the night. Did have Forbidden Power. And we also had an SR in pack number one, a Jericho, Hungry for Revenge. So two foils in this box also had the one per box promo of the different five different types did have SD Diane. And for all of our double R's, we did have Meliodas, important things. Diane, cheerful. Bon, for a special someone. Hendrickson, no longer human. And Gil Thunder, magic words. And with that, 
that actually finishes up our last Weiss opening of the night. Again, thank you so much, Sean, for letting me open up another box of this for you here. Really hope you enjoy the opening and love all of these new additions from tonight. All these new additions to your collections. But, like I said, that does it for Weiss. Let me go ahead and unstep myself here. Do have, up next, two boxes of Legendary Duelist Season 2 from Yu-Gi-Oh! for Moses. And then we'll be finishing off our opening tonight with a King's Court booster for Mako T. So... Some chances to find some really nice blue eyes cards coming up. And then, of course, see if we can find one of those secret Pharaoh's rares or even an Ultra. Would be happy with either of those for Mako. But fingers crossed for secret. Those are the more expensive ones. But, yeah, some Yu-Gi-Oh! to close out our breaks tonight. So let me get started. I'm moving this all on out of the way. And I will be back. Trump Boss says the Yu-Gi-Oh! Blaster boxes seem to be selling very good lately. It seems like they come in like phases. I think probably from here on out, there it'll probably be more consistent. I was actually looking on TCG Player. TCG Low is like actually twenty dollars now on these. Uh, retail was the fourteen ninety nine. We still have we, we still have so much of this. I'm not adjusting the price. Maybe once we get to the last case, I might. But there's actually a promo in here that pays for the whole box. Like, the Blue Eyes, what is it, Abyss Dragon or something? It's like 18 bucks. So, you already plus $3 in a box if you pull the one promo. You know, the alternatives are, you know, pretty pretty decent as well. A lot of decent valued Ultras, and you're getting three Ultras per pack. So, and de definitely not not a bad $15 gamble if you like Yu-Gi-Oh. Even if you don't play it. For me, I just like Blue Eyes. Be like, might get a cool, cool die, cool promo, cool Blue Eyes cards. Get some cards that are in green text. Green's cool, you know. So, Coffin Sealer says, Ali, is Maximum Gold coming back? Yes, Maximum Gold 2 El Dorado, I think, is coming out later this year. We do have some on order, although I don't think we've gotten solid numbers just quite yet. But that's coming, the Hidden Arsenal set. Uh, next Friday, actually, Dawn of Majesty releases. That's a standard booster box for Yu-Gi-Oh! Whereas the Maximum Gold and the, the Hidden Arsenal stuff are, like, specialty, like, different products. But BC asks, what does a box of Sailor Moon go for? I haven't seen any Sailor Moon cards before, so I wouldn't be able to help you with that. Like, I would think there's probably some company out there that's made Sailor Moon cards, but I wouldn't know about prices or anything like that. Hey, nice. Tiffany says, first time women won gold in indoor volleyball. Congrats, USA, Team USA, for that win. And Charspace says, that, so the Shatterstar foiling doesn't count as a hit. Like, it is an R in Vanguard. Yeah, the Shatter Style Foiling, that was, I believe, used for both the Rares and the Double Rs. So you do get either one of those per pack. Um, that still, it still counts as a hit, but the actual, you know, the chases of the box of the SPs, which we didn't find there, but we found actually one tonight. We found a Meliodas SP earlier. Um, and then the SRs and the Triple Rs. Those are the rarer foils. But yeah, the Shatter Style-esque, the Shatter Style-esque Foiling, that is what was used in the set for the Rare. It's not always that type of Foiling. But some Y sets do have that type of foiling for just the regular rares and double rares. Orin says, any more Modern Horizon 2 set boosters coming? We are unable to get more set boosters at the moment. We are actually able to order a couple more cases of draft boosters, so we got to restock on those. I don't think I added any to the website, but we do have a couple cases of draft boosters. But I was looking to see if Southern restocked any other Modern Horizon stuff when I went and I placed the order for the Forgotten Realms set boosters because we ran out. And they, they just have draft boosters in stock. No more set or collector boosters available on those at the moment. So, not now, but I am looking every so often to see if new, well not new, but restocked Modern Horizons 2 pops up from Southern. Uh, Decoy says, any big pulls tonight? Yes, we did find a purple refractor card number one, Lewis Hamilton, out of three ninety nine dollars from Formula One Chrome. Uh, has sold on auction anywhere between $600 and $1,600. So that's a very nice pull. Uh, we did find a $200 and, like, I think $20 SP earlier, the Meliodas SP, in a box for Caleb. We also found a Trey Lance Auto out of Onyx Vintage. We found a Demonic Tutor in the Strixhaven 
set boosters, so regular arts, not Japanese alternate art or anything like that. But we had some really cool stuff tonight. Really cool stuff. I have opened up some of the Heroclix Yu-Gi-Oh packs just for fun. Just got like the little little figures. I, I I think the coolest one I found was a guy of the Dragon Knight. Ryan, I don't like mustard, so I guess you can say I like all of them equally. Zero. Zero like for mustards. All right, Kyoji, rest up, take care. Enjoy your dinner. Ooh, you gotta, you gotta get up early tomorrow, too. Ooh. Take care, Kyoji, go get some rest. Appreciate you dropping by. But all right, let's go ahead and update the Q number to 14. I also do want to check. Moses, I believe, did leave a message requesting that I sign a card. I want to make sure. Oh, we sold two boxes. We're, start, we're starting off next stream with two boxes of Formula 1 Chrome again. Whoop, whoop. That'll be fun for Edward K. next week. Moses B. here. Allie, can you please sign one of the cards of your choose, choice for me? Would appreciate it and thank you. All right, will do. Let me grab my box of markers. Unfortunately, Decoy Mantis, we still haven't heard anything. So the way it stands with GTS, we've told our rep, if there's any Dragon Ball available, we want it. Nothing. We didn't even get Digimon in. I'm not sure if it's because we had a package that was supposed to ship and arrive on Friday. That did not happen. I don't know if there's Digimon in there or if we were unable to get any of the new Digimon. But yeah, Decoy Mantis, I do ask, because we've had recently had a lot more people ask about Dragon Ball. So I was like, I was like, boss man, yo, what's, what's up with the Dragon Ball? Call, ask, and it's still, it's just, we, there's none available to us at the moment. But. No, I like my hot dogs just with ketchup. That's it. And the only hot dogs I like, I don't like hot dogs grilled. They need to be boiled. I like Hebrew National. I don't like the, I don't like Nathan's. I just, I don't know. I like Hebrew National with just ketchup and bread. That's how you make a hot dog for me. Very basic, simple. I like it. But I did not update the Q numbers. So let me go ahead and do that right now to 14. Got my box of markers ready. Hopefully we can find a green blue eyes this time. And I can sign in green. Would love to do so. No chili and cheese. No. 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 Corn dogs. Corn dogs are hot dogs surrounded by bread, right? Do they have anything to do with cornbread? Cornbread. I've had cornbread in my life twice. And I'm pretty sure it's a coincidence that I just got sick after. But it just happens to be both times I ate, I ate cornbread, I got sick. And I was like, I wouldn't say I'm allergic to cornbread, but it, I'll just say it doesn't agree with me. I don't. My mom was like, oh, that was probably you just happened to get sick last time. Try it again. I'm like, I don't know. She's like, try it again. I tried again. Got sick. I was like, So my brain wants to auto say no with shrimp pasta, corn dogs, but there's not actually cornbread on corn dogs, right? I don't know. Anthony says, I was only half listening. You aren't getting Digimon or just getting it late. I don't know, Anthony, because it comes from GTS and GTS was supposed to ship out another two cases of seven deadly sins and I don't know if there's supposed to be anything else in the package. So I don't know if... We got, we didn't get any Digimon. If it was late, if it's missing, I don't know. Probably should hear more info on Monday. Hopefully a big box will just show up and there'll be Digimon in it, but I don't know. Because the problem is, is that GTS doesn't have a place where you can check your orders online. Like, you can order some stuff on the website, but you, most items on the GTS website says call your rep to order. So Bossman just, you know, every Monday calls the guy, you know, he sends the message, updates all the pre-orders and whatnot, gets some numbers on occasion. And, like, that's it. It's mostly done over the phone. I remember when we first reconnected with GTS, Bossman's like, oh, would you like me to give him your number so you can talk to him? I'm like, no. You got to do something. I'm not. So then I'm also kind of out of the loop on GTS stuff. Usually it's not a big deal because we get places, we get stuff from all places. But when it's stuff like that where it only comes from GTS, I have no idea. So I'm hoping that they probably just were like, oh, no, we forgot their Digimon and are just shipping it late with the Digimon. But I don't know. Steven said it's a cornmeal similar to cornbread. And a trip boss says, kind of like cornbread. Yeah, I'm a pass on corn dogs then. 
Ryan says the breading on corn dogs would be in the cornbread family, but more of a cousin. I do like corn chips, though. I like Fritos. I just... Cornbread, I don't know. I think it's just psychosomatic. I don't think there's actually anything wrong with me eating cornbread, but, like, it makes me sick. I don't know. Hey, Heart of the Cards, how are you tonight? Yeah, you're actually joining us. We're, we're finishing off our last two breaks of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Convenience. Get to watch some Yu-Gi-Oh! Decoy Mantis says, Taco Bell tonight. No, I'm just tired. I'm gonna just go home and take a shower and nap. I don't know. I was here for 17 hours yesterday. I, I showed up at noon and I left at 5 a.m. Anyways. Q is updated. Have the markers to sign a card. Two blasters are ready to go. Let's jump on into these two Legendary Duelist Season 2 boxes for Moses by snapping us into the corner. And let's get started. Trip is wild too long. Yep. Yeah, the thing is, is there was it the recordings yesterday just took so long. I didn't expect it to take so long, but I mean, yeah, two and a half hours of Seven Deadly Sins, an hour of Playmat, half an hour of Final Fantasy, the one box, tons of mail, because like I said, Boss Man um, has been out sick all week, hasn't been able to take the mail, so I gotta do the mail and I gotta take it and all stuff like that. And, you know, just keeping up with that. And then I had to record for my personal channel. I've been doing that playthrough of the great Ace Attorney Chronicles. And I got bamboozled into doing two parts. I meant to do one part, and then it auto-saved. It didn't let me know that I was going from part one to part two. So I did two parts, and that was almost a three-hour video. And it took, like, three hours to export. So then I was just here at 2 a.m., just twiddling my thumbs. I took care of all my Patreon stuff, and I was like, all right. I need this to finish exporting so I can upload it and leave. So that's what that was last night. So I wasn't working the whole time. I was doing stuff. Some of it was work-related. Some of it was my stuff-related, but... The fact that I was here, I was letting y'all know, hustling, hustling. And then you guys wonder, why, Allie, why are you exhausted all the time? I was like, I don't know. Maybe because I, I run myself into the ground, something like that. We do have Harpy Lady here for our first die and our promo. Hey, that's the first time we've seen it. I was actually talking about, this is the card that pays for the whole box. This is more expensive than the box. Blue Eyes Abyss Dragon. This is the first time I've seen it in person. We pulled a lot of Photon Orbitals. Pulled a lot of the Black Wing promo. But this is the first time we've actually pulled a Blue Eyes Abyss Dragon. So very nice pull here for Moses. Moses already winning on box number one. And all right, two packs. Let's get started. I've been hearing a lot of positive words about the Suicide Squad movie. I'm just not particularly interested in it, but I've seen a lot of people saying, "Are we? Uh, are we? Are we glitching out? Are we okay now?" Be quicker, says. Wait, that giant box or a couple of cards in the die? Uh, yeah, that's that's the thing. Is it's a blaster product, so it's just the two packs, the promo, and the die. It, it's it's only fifteen dollars, but it is a lot of packaging. It's a lot of packaging for just such little stuff. But all right, resuming. We have Galaxy Knight. Hey, Blue Eyes White Dragon Blue Ultra. Blue on blue, I like it. And Cyber Dragon Noxter. All right, pack two. We have Sage with Eyes of Blue, Harpy's Pet Dragon Green, and Cyber Eternity Dragon Green Ultra. Alrighty, so box one done. Let's go ahead and open up box two. Of course, same product, so I'll do a recap at the end. Be crazy if we could pull another Abyss Dragon. Our die of the box is an Amazonist Baby Tiger. Little tiger cub. Cute. Cute. And then our promo is Bingo Machine. Hey, more blue eyes supports. This is another really nice promo, Bingo Machine. I think Bingo Machine's like, what, 10 bucks? 
Well, very nice promos here out of both boxes for Moses. Let's go ahead and crack on into these two packs. And I'm saying the prices because I actually looked it up the other day. I was like, I really haven't looked at the set in a while. Let me check values so I can feel more knowledgeable. So I'm like, I know this stuff, huh? But all right, here we go. Let's see what we find. Do you have Blackwing, Samoon, the Poison Wind? A purple Blackwing, Samoon, the Poison Wind. And Harpy's Pet Dragon. And last pack here for Moses. We have Blue Rose Dragon. A purple white rose dragon. Interesting. Two purple packs in one box. And Harpy Oracle, which does look really good in purple because of the purple tights that was put onto the art. And now that does it here for these two boxes. Now, of course, Moses did request that I sign a card. And now earlier in the week, I did sign one of the Ultras for Steven that I knew he'd be okay with me defacing a $4 card, but not certain here. Although I do have my eye on... Where is it? Made it with Eyes of Blue. Really enjoyed playing this card. I even played it recently on Duel Links. I was like, we're jamming Made in my deck. I don't know if it's still good, but I like it. And I, I just could never really do anything with it. That's just because I only have good cards. But love playing with Maiden in my Blue Eyes deck. So I'm going to go ahead and sign this one here. And a nice blue ink for Moses. And then, of course, we'll do our recap. This is the one I think I use for whoopers. My whooper blue. That one is a nice signature, but the ink is not as bright as I hoped. Let me find another maiden, and I'll use a different blue. Can we get a play set of signed maidens? Ah, just the two maidens here. All right. All right, I'll use the dark blue. All right, that one much better. All right, so sorry about that first little bump in the road there, Moses, but now you do own two alley authentic defaced maiden with eyes of blue in appropriately colored blue ink. So there are those. And then for the actual important cards here in the recap, did have two very nice promos, Blue Eyes Abyss Dragon and Bingo Machine Go. Very nice cards. We did have four regular Ultras, Galaxy Knight, Sage with Eyes of Blue, Black Wings, Samoon the Poison Wind, and Blue Rose Dragon. Also had one blue pack with a blue blue eyes and a Cyber Dragon Noxter. One green pack, Harpy's Pet Dragon and Cyber Eternity Dragon. And for the purples, did have back-to-back -back purple packs in box number two. We had another Samoon, Harpy's Pet Dragon, White Rose Dragon, and Harpy Oracle. And with that, that does finish off these two blaster boxes for Moses. Again, thank you so much, Moses, for letting me open these on up for you. I really hope you enjoyed the opening and loved these new additions to your collection. Now, just one more Yu-Gi-Oh! opening to go tonight, and then that will be all... Finishing off with a box of King's Court for a Trimpos, Mr. Mako. So that's coming up next. Very excited to see if we can find one of those secret Pharaoh's Rares. We did see an Ultra and a personal break from the first case that we had. Haven't seen any yet. Didn't actually pull a Trimpos, a Collector Rare in the last box of King's Court that we opened. But we'll see if we can find one of those Pharaoh's Rares with the Hieroglyphics. All right. Found my other shoe. It went missing somehow. But let me move this on out of the way, and I'll be back with our final box of the night. Coffin Sealer says, lol, thank you, Allie. Hey, is that you? Is this you, Coffin Sealer? Thank you so much for letting me open this on up for you. I didn't realize you were here in chat. I really hope you enjoyed it. All right. Be right back.
Yuke says, Niv face, Nivzy. No, Niv, don't eat the king's court. No, no, Niv, don't eat the king's court. But all right. Let me go ahead and update our queue number to 15. 15th and final opening of the night. Do have this here box of King's Court. Now, King's Court has some pretty cool cards, including that, was it, Lightning, Lightning Storm, I want to say. But you know what? I haven't looked at actually King's Court in a while. Let's see. I've recently refreshed my memory on the Legendary Duelist. Let's check out some King's Court singles. Be Quicker is now following. Thank you, Be Quicker. All right. Got some Secret Pharaoh's Rares. As low as $403, Slight for the Sky Dragon. Ooh, we can get a Collector Rare Rota. That would be sick. Collector Rare Lightning Storm is about $100. And then, of course, the three Ultra versions of those gods. We can get a Collector Rare Utopia. That's cool. Rescue Rabbit. Cute. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and get started here. Oh, trip over trip boss. And Vic, this is Niv's doing an amazing job balancing the box on her. And Niv is so fantastic. What can I say? I have a great lizard child. So talented. So talented. Well, let's go ahead and get to this final box of the night here for Mako. Bye. Snapping us into the corner. Let's get started. One foil in every pack. Three ultras per box. Hopefully, you can find one of those Pharaoh's Rares of the Secret Variety. Ultras are acceptable as well. And a nice Collector Rare would be very, very welcome. So let's get started here. Pack one. Starting off with a World Legacy Gore Dragon. Score card says, good luck, Mako. Exceeds Hyper Cannon. Chao Fang, Phantom of the Yang Zing. Scrap Twin Dragon. Good night, Sue Ann. Take care. Number 49, Fortune Tune. Tendangle Dolls. Super. There's no Ultras just quite yet here in this box. Do have Joker Straight Ultra. Our first of the box. So to make this as Tendangle is just a fun name to say. A very odd choice for an archetype. I both enjoy it, but also feel like it's super weird. Sly Demon says, in Yu-Gi-Oh, do you get a collector rare out of every box? I believe the odds are one every other box. Sometimes we open up boxes where there's a bunch all together, and then there'll be like a drought of collector rares. But I believe it's supposed to be every other box on the collectors. Thunder Speed Summon. Crystal Girl, super. We have Arcana Triumph Joker. 
for ultra number two. Why is this upside down? Suspicious. Crystal Girl again. I'm gonna leave that pack till the end. Why is it upside down? Heart of the card says yes, it works out to be about every other box. As I'm saying, Steven, sus pack. Icrum says numbered autograph pack. Exceeds Hyper Cannon. It's just a pack full of all the god cards. World Legacy Guard Dragon. Magnet Induction. Scrap Twin Dragon. Crystal Girl. I believe that's our third Crystal Girl in this box. Infinite Crystal Girls. We have number F0, Utopic Draco Future. For Ultra, number three. Chow Fang, Phantom of the Yang Zing. Juan says, it was a pleasure watching you pop packs tonight. Ally, you have the luck, I swear. Looking forward to seeing everyone again next Saturday. It was a pleasure. Thank you all. Good night. Hey, thank you so much, Juan, for watching. And I hope we do catch you next week. Take care. And then Sweezel is now following. Thank you, Sweezel. Number 49, Fortune Tune. I just love this little bird. He's so cute. On the Fortune Tune. Uh, so Victor asked, are we going to get an NBI select in? I believe we got a whole single box and it did sell in store. The select came out not this past Friday, but the Friday before, I think. Unfortunately, we just get very poor allocations on stuff. So... If we get in any more, it's possible. I might list some on the websites. Like, if we get in quantity, but I highly doubt that that will happen, unfortunately. Joker's Wild. Super. Yeah, one whole box from four different distributors. We were able to get one. So... We have Tindangle Dolls. All right, getting close to the end here. We have Rose Princess. All right, last pack on the left side, then we'll go back and check out that upside down pack. Hey, Ryan, welcome. We have Court of Cards. And the last pack of Destiny here for Mako. I feel like it's trying to say something to me. We'll see what it has to say. Last pack of the box. Last pack of the stream as well. Slow roll in it. Unexpected die. Constellar Ptolemy. Number seven. Queen's Knight. Dowsing Fusion, Zolga the Prophet, Cloud Castle. Ah, the pack just wanted to let me know that there is a Hyper Galaxy within. Unfortunately, no Collector Rare or Pharaoh's Rare here. I was really hoping for some last pack magic, especially because it was upside down. That was super weird, but 
We'll go ahead and move this box on out of the way. And of course, we'll do that recap here for a trim boss. Enchanter says, hope you're feeling better after lower deck. Thank you so much. Definitely feeling a lot better. A lot of people did leave a lot of kind words. Those, it feels weird. It's like, what, almost three, four weeks ago now? Almost a whole month away. What? I appreciate everybody's support with that. But let's take a look at our ultras here. It did have number F0, Utopic Draco Future, Arcana Triumph Joker, and Joker Straight. And of course, got to go through and pan over all of our supers. Acorn says, Night Alley, sorry you had so many lag and bug issues. Get some rest. See you next time. Hey, thank you, Acorn. Take care. We'll catch you next time. Meanwhile, YouTube chat's just talking about mayo, salad dressing, ranch, and homemade cinnamon toast. I really don't know what's going on over there, to be honest. Sinvicta says, Good night, Allie. Have a good morning. Talk to you next week. Yeah, take care, Sinvicta. Like I said, we'll try and find out what's going on with those missing two cases of Seven Deadly Sins at the moment. Let you know what's up with that. But yes, before we wrap up our stream, of course, I have to give big thanks to a trim boss for letting me open up another box of King's Court for him. Like I said, do apologize I wasn't able to get a Collector Rare or a Pharaoh's Rare for you, but I hope you still enjoyed the opening and love these new additions to your collection. Now, let me go ahead and unsnap myself here. Chapstick says the upper the bug was an Upper Deck Spy. I like it. I like it. But yes, with that final break here for Mako, that does finish off our stream tonight. Juke says that was fun. See you next time. I hope you all enjoyed it. Definitely longer than I expected. Nearly seven hours. 15 breaks took us seven hours. That's a bit ridiculous on my part. But I hope you all enjoyed it throughout. Definitely saw some really cool stuff in the Formula One, the Seven Deadly Sins, and of course, in that one Onyx Vintage Football. One football tonight. We did find a Trey Lance Auto, so that was pretty sick. I always love checking out those Onyx boxes. Move quickly, and you see some really cool on-card stuff. So I do like those. But overall, had a blast tonight. Love opening up Yu-Gi-Oh! here. Love opening up Magic. You know, we did have those little interruptions, but overall, definitely had a lot of fun. So I hope you guys did as well. Sarah says, food and Yu-Gi-Oh! is amazing. Steven says, I blame the lag. Bubba says, night alley, get good sleeps. We'll try. We'll try my best. I'm curious what time. I want to set an alarm to get up, come in, you know, record my new, the Great Ace Attorney Alley plays for Monday, and then, you know, get that started and go home and rest. And part of me is just like, YOLO, if I sleep till four o'clock in the afternoon, so what? Heart of the Cards is great stream. Thank you, Heart of the Cards. Appreciate it. Sarah's so like, is the stream over? We were in the middle of a conversation here. <laughs> Ryan says, reopen the queue. We have more food discussion. Now you guys can continue next week. Give you something to look forward to. Timothy says, awesome stream. Thank you, Allie. Good night, everyone. Good night, Timothy. Take care. But yes, that does it for me here tonight. Thank you all for watching. Before you head on out, if you're on YouTube and you did enjoy the, enjoy the stream, don't forget to go on ahead and hit that like button if you've yet to do so already. But more importantly, I hope you all had a blast. So yeah, I know, just 15 breaks in total. But I had a great time, so I hope you did as well. But good night to everyone here in chat. Steven, Sarah, Scorecard, Tiffany, Brandon, Char Space, Ryan, Timothy, Doku, Michael, Coffin Sealer, BC, Iggy, Valkyrie, Heart of the Cards, Bubba, Jugs, Sinvicta, Enchanter, Acorn, of course, a Trimpa, Sly Demon. And if any names I did miss, I do apologize. But yes, that does it for me here. Valkyrie says, great stream, Allie. Really funnily, really funny, especially the bug. Have a great day tomorrow. Timothy says, almost 27K. Oh, really? I'll have to check. We were hovering at like 26 and a half for quite some time. Sarah says, night. Tiffany says, good night. Scorecard says, take care, everyone. Brandon says, yes, I did. Bye. Good night. Thank you, Brandon. Glad you enjoyed it. Ryan says, be well, everyone. Take care. But yes, that's it for me tonight. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Take care. And I'll be back again, of course, on Monday with some new videos. And obviously next Saturday night with more personal breaks. As I mentioned a little earlier in the stream, all of you may not have caught it, but we'll be kicking off again next week with two more boxes of Formula One Chrome for Edward K. So that should be very exciting. But thank you so much for watching, everyone. Take care. Like I said, catch y'all on Monday. Bye. All right. Hello, Twitch chat. Now we get to...
watch me calculate how far behind YouTube is. I'm guessing about 20 to 30 seconds. You guys enjoy our fancy time? Yeah, I'm still doing a lot of this on uh, YouTube right now. It's been, what, 20 seconds? All right.